Well, good morning and welcome to what appears to be a very rainy Brands Hatch Sunday morning. We've got lots of racing action on the circuit for you today. So let's head down into the British Truck Racing Paddock to see who we can find shortly before this first race. Well, good morning, as promised. Here we are down in the assembly area with Steve Powell from uh, Division One. Now, uh, Steve, not the greatest of mornings to be having at your local circuit. No, a little bit of pressure, I think, in these conditions. All the sponsors here up in the boxes and managed to put it on pole for today. So, uh, looking forward to it, but a bit apprehensive for sure. Any work to be done to the truck last night, or will we pretty much wash it and put it away? No, touch wood. Probably the first time this season we've washed it and put it away. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to say too much about that because we've got three races today, but the team have worked really hard this season, and hopefully we can go out with a blaze of glory today. So. Not, not too much on the blaze, more of the glory. Yeah, definitely the glory, yeah, let's yeah. see. So we've got pole this race, third in the next race, and to see what happens with these conditions, and hopefully we can all keep it on the track and let's get the race done away for the fans, no red flags, and let's get it done. I know it's a little bit early, perhaps, but with three races left of this season, have we got any ideas for next season? No, more or the same. We're going to get the new engine in. This one's probably a little bit tired now. It's done three seasons, so we're committed as a team for another two seasons. Uh, the sponsors are coming on board, so really looking forward. We've used this as a test season, we've had some results, we've had some fun, and uh, bring it on next year. Fantastic news to hear, Steve. Well, you go and get your racing boots on, and we'll see you on the circuit shortly. Thank you, Brian. No worries. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Right, let's go and have a quick look if we can find any other Demont drivers just before the race starts, even though they're probably hiding under umbrellas just like me. So I said to her, I like it wet, but this is just ridiculous, you know. Anyway, oh, hi, good morning. So welcome back to the assembly area. I'm here with Brad Smith, and we're going racing today, even though it's a little bit wet, isn't it, Brad? Yeah, certainly. It's very, very wet out there. Very slippery. Uh, you just got to try and keep it on the black stuff. I mean, uh, are you used to driving in these kind of conditions? Are you one of the drivers that prefer the wet, in fact? I don't mind either way, but this is like the first uh, meeting of this, this season. It's been wet, really. Well, I didn't hear a thing of that, so I'm just going to say good luck in this. <laughs> it's all very, uh, very uh, difficult to deal with this morning. The camera's getting soaked, the trucks are getting soaked, and now you're getting soaked as well. So I'll leave you to it, Brad. Good luck for the race. Uh, hopefully, we'll hand you another trophy and have a better conversation with you later on. All right. That went terribly, but I hope you heard something interesting at home, ladies and gentlemen. I'll shut this door now and we'll go some racing, shall we? Yes, let's go. Well, thanks very much indeed to uh, Pointy. Good morning, race fans, and welcome to what is an extremely wet Brands Hatch Circuit here in Kent, the home of motorsport in the southeast of England. Uh, unfortunately for us, the forecasters got it absolutely spot on for today. Yes, uh, heavy rain was indeed forecast, and that's exactly what we have got. Dave Goddard here taking you through the action today. It is the 6th of November. It is Bonfire Weekend. Fireworks, racing, and much more here at Brands Hatch here today. We'll be taking you through a total of eight motor races here today, car and truck racing action. It is the final day of the British Truck Racing Championship, supported by Minis Young and Old. And also we have got the Pickup Truck Racing Championship as well. There's an illustration of just uh, how tough the weather is here today. An unfortunate spectator there losing her umbrella. And there you can see just how wet it is down in the paddock at the moment. Now, we're waiting to uh, see things get underway. Yesterday, a champion was crowned. Well, two champions were crowned. Flying Ryan Smith in Division 1 of the British Truck Racing Championship, taking the title for the incredible seventh year in succession. He's looking to match Stuart Oliver's uh, record of 10 titles. The uh, contest for second place in the championship is still on here today, though. And Division 2 as well for the slightly less powerful trucks. I think it's uh, between, by my calculations, Luke Garrett, Brad Smith and Jock Borthwick in uh, Division 2. Luke Garrett just four points ahead of Brad Smith in their points chart. Jock Borthwick basically needs to win all three races today and get fastest lap in them, though, to uh, continue to stand a chance of taking the title north of the border back to Scotland. We will also see two classes of minis, the uh, modern BMW minis, the Mini Challenge Trophy class, sponsored by Quave. Nelson King won their first race yesterday, and with that victory, wrapped up the title. There's still two races to go 
for them today. We've also got the Mini 7 Racing Club, the Classic Minis, in their Winter Championship. Jeff Smith was a double winner in the Miglia class yesterday. Back in, in the uh, less powerful 7 category, it was um, a win in race 1 for Conor O'Brien. He failed to start race 2 and it was Darren Thomas who took the win there. Full grids and minis, they had a cracking second race yesterday, the Mini 7s, including uh, this year's Mini Miglia champion Rupert Dietz, spinning at one point, coming through clearways towards the end of the lap and fighting his way back up to uh, take second place just behind Jeff Smith flag. We also have the pickup truck racing championship here today. Looking at the points chart there, it was George Turicki who was leading coming into this weekend, but he's not racing this weekend, so the title will go to either Rhys Jones, Dale Gent or Mark Willis. Rhys Jones is currently in the lead after qualifying because points are awarded on the qualifying sessions for the pickup trucks. They took place yesterday. Now, at the moment, we are uh, just awaiting to see what the weather is going to do. Obviously, you can see there is an absolute deluge coming down at the moment, unfortunately. And uh, we have a delay to the start of the action. We saw this at Donington last time out here on VARC TV as well. Qualifying was rained off for the uh, Brick Car Championship, the Brick Car Trophy last time out. More fans struggling a bit with their umbrellas. It's very windy here at Brands Hatch as well. Track action has yet to get underway. Now, we were scheduled to see the uh, British Truck Racing Championship out for the first race of the day. We'll wait to see if um, the order is going to be changed, though. I have uh, heard that possibly the Mini Challenge is going to come out first instead. It may be just a bit too wet for the trucks at the moment. Last thing you want is uh, a five-ton, 1,000-horsepower truck aquaplaning off out of control. If the truck racing does get underway soon, I predict it's going to be a busy day for uh, trackside recovery today with their big recovery vehicles that we saw yesterday. But uh, plenty to keep the fans entertained here at Brands Hatch on this bonfire weekend. All the fun of the fair alongside the uh, circus. You certainly wouldn't get me on any of those fairground rides, except maybe the Dodgem cars. Everybody likes to play a bit of banger racing, don't they? You can see at bottom left of your screen there the uh, mini challenge cars in the assembly area as we said their championship has been won by nelson king number 95 for graves motorsport he won the first race yesterday group of marshals uh, hardy against the conditions as always the orange family thanks to them for their volunteer services we uh, could not go racing without them down there with the safety car and the course car in pit lane just on the left of your screen there you can see uh, the vehicles brought in by trackside recovery the daf and the uh, Enormous Mick Gould owned uh, Peterbilt that we uh, told you a bit about if you were watching our coverage yesterday. That huge four axle Peterbilt truck. You might see that on track here today. Another group of marshals are sheltering under the bridge coming uh, off the Grand Prix loop there with the telehandler. You can see the rain coming down. It is treacherous out there at the moment. where I live in the Midlands it seems to have not stopped raining for about three weeks constantly and it uh, seems to be the same in the uh, southeast of England at the moment just had confirmation of the points in the pickup truck championship Reese Jones is now ahead of George Sirikki by 14 points 81 points off the championship uh, lead is Dale Gents and then Mark Willis further behind. Alan Cooper, I think, is now out of contention despite uh, a good effort in qualifying yesterday. We'll uh, update you on the, that and the truck points as the meeting goes on. But just awaiting at the moment to see what time we will get underway with our first sessions of the day. We'll bring you more news as and when we have it. Uh, 
playground. Because they freaking that home of the web of forty year olds with activity get involved in climbing range and swings of the football back again to the match and the rest of the week. We'll keep you busy, we'll keep you updated as to what's going on with the past and track activity because clearly the moment you have those exploratory laps any further cars will have to get so I would imagine that our conversation is going on the race control regarding the conditions of the suit being able to all the straight lines each. A warm welcome once again if you have just joined us here on BARC TV here from Brands Hatch for the final weekend of the season, the final day of the season for the British Truck Racing Championship. Heavy rain has currently led to a delay in the start of the action here at Brands Hatch. And we are awaiting news on what's uh, going to happen at the moment. The marshals out on there posts waiting for the action to get underway a big thank you again to all of them to the recovery crews the medical staff everybody else here brand touch from the barc four classes of racing we should see eight uh, races on our coverage today of course at the end of the program we will have um, the uh, annual brand touch firework display as well we will bring you the firework display at the uh, end of the program after racing is completed Biggest firework displays in the southeast this year is promised. In terms of other championships, I mentioned the pickups. It's uh, Reese Jones who leads their points by 14 points ahead of the absent this weekend, George Tariki. Dale Gents is uh, some 95 points off the championship lead, and Mark Willis 191 points off. That's by my uh, calculations heading into today's two races anyway after qualifying yesterday. Uh, maths isn't my strong point though, unfortunately, so uh, we'll wait to see if that's official when the uh, championship positions are released. Can you spot our camera operator through the rain there? They're well protected, protected against the rain, well the camera is at least. So thank you to our camera operators this weekend as well. There's another of them up on top of the uh, main building on the Sir Jack Ravenstrait. Give us a wave. <laughs> I would not like to be up there in these high winds, certainly. guests in the hospitality suite just below I'm sure that our cameraman would rather be in there there's another of them just about see them through the uh, through the rain up there good to see many spectators not just umbrellas they brought with them they brought their tents with them as well as rain shelters they're a hardy lot these uh, car and truck racing fans
to put Druid's hairpin, I think. The uh, highest part of the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. Of course, the full Grand Prix loop not being used. The course car is on track. You can see just how wet it is. That river running across uh, the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend causing concerns, I think. Until you're actually at Brands Hatch and you walk the circuit. It's difficult to realise just how steep that section of circuit is. It's like a roller coaster heading through the plunge down Paddock Hill Bend and then back up again through Halewood Rise into Druid's Hairpin. This is Druid's. 180 degree right hand up. Very easy to run wide there towards the gravel trap. Then it's down Graham Hill. Dropping down to the left hander at Graham Hill Bend, named after the two times world champion from the 1960s, father of Damon Hill of course, been reprofiled many times over the years that corner, a tricky one, then along the Cooper Straits, it's not very straight, it curves slightly to the left, behind uh, the paddock and race control, then into the left at Surtees, named after the legendary John Surtees CBE, this is Surtees corner, then into McLaren, flick through to the right, then uh, into clearways, and then Clark Kerr, which uh, takes the cars onto the Brabham Street. The MW course car just uh, making a sighting lap. And then the uh, clerk of the course will report uh, on uh, what the conditions are. hopefully be able to bring you an update shortly on what is happening with this event whether we can go racing anytime soon various clerks of the course set this weekend David Cartwright's for the trucks Luke Cordell and uh, Josh Bennett's for the minis Josh Bennett for pickup trucks as well Mark Holm for the legends cars Dorothy Awota and uh, Stacey Lorde our group of clerks of the course this weekend so thanks to them for their services senior clerk of the course Trevor Williams will be the one to uh, make the decisions though on uh, overall matters so he'll be looking closely at the conditions right now. I can see lights on on the uh, mini challenge cars uh, in the assembly area on the left of the picture. Maybe they're just keeping warmed up down there. No news as yet on uh, any amendments to timetable or so on. First race was due off at 10.20 for the trucks, but at the pre at present it does appear to be just too wet. There's the safety car making its way round. Blake Edwards, the driver of the uh, safety car this weekend, the Kia. That's Blake Edwards, not Lake Edwards. Although the the safety car observer this weekend, appropriately, is called Sam Waters. Blake Edwards, the former Welsh uh, sports and saloon car champion, the uh, series based down at Pembroke. I remember uh, going to Pembrey for a truck weekend once when uh, parts of the surrounding area were, were flooded, including the entrance road to the circuit. So uh, the Marshalls got that weekend underway, and I'm sure they'll get this weekend underway soon enough as well. Second day of racing here at Brands Hatch. We saw some cracking racing uh, yesterday. It was slip and slide in the Mini 7 Racing Club Winter Championship with Jeff Smith, the XBTCC driver, taking two wins. 
the more powerful Mini Miglia as we see towards the front of the field. The Mini 7s further back. So uh, Darren Thomas and Conor O'Brien who took the wins there. Michael Winkworth was on top in the scholarship class. Still awaiting news on what's going to happen. Now, just listening to Mark Werrell on the circuit uh, PA system in the background, it looks as though the Mini Challenge race is coming out first. So they've swapped around, the Minis will go first, followed by the trucks, the uh, qualifying session, the one qualifying session that was going to take place this morning, uh, it looks like that is not going to take place now. We're just waiting to see what comes out onto circuit first. Well there's the answer, the Minis are on the grid and we are going to get ready to go racing then. So. It's the second race of the weekend for the Quaif Mini Challenge Trophy category. They opened their weekend yesterday and the championship was wrapped up by Nelson King who takes pole position as a result with um, his 10th win of the season. This uh, grid based on the results of yesterday's race. So let's have a look at the lineup there. Nelson King on pole with uh, number 17, Nicky Taylor alongside him. On the second row, it's 21, Nathan Edwards and 12, Alex Solly. Tom Ovenden, the local man in 24, alongside number 20, Charlie Mann on row three. In the fourth row, 23, Lee Pierce. And 486 this year's rookie champion, the Irishman Jack Byrne on row four. The fifth row, Joe Wiggin, number 41, and Matt Hammond, 78, who dropped back down the order after running wide at clearways in yesterday's race into the gravel. Row six, 86, Ollie Meadows and 27, Alfie Glenny. On the seventh row, 81 of Luca Marinoni Osborne and 62, Alex Keynes. Row eight, 32, Frankie Taylor and number 10, Tyler Lidsey. Ninth row, 38, Morgan Root, the ex-rallycrosser, and number 46, Paul Manning. Then on row 10, 98, John Sargent and 7-11 of Clark Wells. Mike Paul, number four, and 44, Sam Baker on row 11. The 12th row, 60 of Brendan Fitzgerald and 99, Ben Jenkins. Row 13, 96, Jordan Kerridge and 1, 2, 3 of Andy Cobb. 14th throw James Parker in number 13, number 7, Mick Fitzgerald. Row 15, 88, Barry Holmes and number 3, Sophie Wright. And the two drivers that failed to finish yesterday's race, 34, John McLadrigan pulled into the pits midway through. And Lauren Taylor starts from the back. She went into the gravel at Clearways yesterday. Looks like we are going to start under the safety car. So it looks like it will be a rolling start to our first race of the day. This will be a 15 minute race. Yes, the countdown has already started. So we start under the safety car here at Brand Touch. Uh, the last meeting at Donington for these cars there, one of their races uh, was in incredibly wet conditions. The Quaife Mini Challenge Trophy category, identical 1600cc BMW Mini Coopers. And this really the training ground for the touring car stars of tomorrow. Nelson King, the former X30 karting series champion, secured the title yesterday with win number 10 of the season. For the winners this year, uh, including Matt Hammond, had a couple of wins last time out at Donington Park. Tom Ovenden, number 24, has had a couple of wins. Came to this weekend third in the points. Nicky Taylor, teammates to Nelson King at Graves Motorsport, has yet to win. Fine birthday present it was Nelson King's win yesterday for team boss Peter Graves celebrating his birthday in the week. Splash their way round. This is going to be difficult. Many of these drivers only young guns. Looks like everybody's there except possibly John McGladrigan. I don't think the um, number 34 car was there. He broke down in yesterday's race, unfortunately, so it looks like John McGladrigan's a non-starter. Safety car is still out there at the moment. The driver is just getting acclimatised to these conditions. It's going to be very tricky indeed for them. We know the BMW Mini Coopers work well in the wet. Saw that at Donington Park last time out. 
the various subclasses. So we mentioned the rookie class. That's been won by Jack Byrne, number 486. There's the Graduates Cup for drivers in their second year in the championship. Nelson King has won that. And the Directors Cup, which is for the senior drivers, drivers aged 35 and over. And that's been won by Matt Hammond for this year, the 2017 Mini Challenge Trophy champion. He's the uh, slightly less powerful cousins of the uh, John Cooper Works category that uh, is a regular support and certain class in the British Touring Car Championship built. We have seen these cars out a couple of times this year on the BTCC uh, package. Very much the training ground for saloon car superstars of the future. Safety car continuing to lead them round. Once the clerk of the course is satisfied, then Blake Edwards will pull the Kia safety car into the pits and we will go racing. Nelson King at the front. Ahead of Nicky Taylor, the two Graves motorsport cars. Nicky Taylor desperate for his first win in the series. Nathan Edwards had, uh, I think, his best result of the season so far in third yesterday for Accelerate Motorsports. We've seen them in British touring cars, of course, over the last few years. Alex Solly set pole in yesterday's race, but got shuffled back in the closing stages. Was fighting for the lead. It's Junior Saloon Carman. He's also with Graves Motorsport. As Accelerate Motorsports have uh, five drivers out there. Graves have six. could well be Jack Byrne, the rookie champion. Fifth in the points overall, the young Irishman. Joe Wiggin has had a win this year. He's uh, back in ninth place. Struggled in qualifying yesterday. Started quite a way down the order. There is the blue and yellow number 41 car. Just ahead of Matt Hammond. Running wide at clearways. Dropped him back into tenth place yesterday. Now is the safety car coming in. It is. We're about to go racing here at Brands Hatch in the monsoon. Here we go, we're underway. Ten minutes of racing to go. Nelson King has the lead, chased by Nicky Taylor into Paddock Hill Bend. They pulled slightly clear of Nathan Edwards in third place. Taylor gets a tighter line as they come through Paddock Hill Bend. They cross the river, heading across the circuit there. Driver having a look up the inside. It's brave to attack in these early stages. The tyres will still be fairly cold. That's Lee Pierce having an attack on the uh, back of Charlie Mann, and he goes through and drew it up into sixth position but it's Nelson King who leads the way looking for his second win of the weekend he's 11th of the season he has dominated this season taking a hat trick in the opening weekend of the year at Pembrey in Wales and on he never looked back if he looks back here all he'll see is spray Nicky Taylor's on his tail Nathan Edwards third and uh, off goes Alex Solly he goes over the grass on the inside of Surtees there has he survived that? Yes, he has, but Tom Ovenden, the ex-rally crosser, has got ahead of him. He'll be using his uh, experience of wet conditions of rough surfaces here, I think, to move up. There's Ovenden, the white and red car. He's got ahead of Lee Pierce. Solly's down to six with that grassy moment, just ahead of Charlie Mann. Next in the order, it is Jack Byrne. Over the line they go, up towards Paddock Hill Bend. You can see from our class uh, code there, some of the drivers competing in two of the classes. Look at the standing water as they head up Halewood Rise there into Druids. Jack Byrne coming through on the inside. Charlie Mann is dropping back in the number 20. One win for him this season. That was at Snetterton. Joe Wiggin behind them. He had a win last time out at Donington. And Alex Solly's off again. The ex-junior saloon car racer onto the grass on the run down Graham Hill. He saved it. Joe Wiggin's going to go through the Pantera Carpentry. Sponsored car goes by him. Alex Solly is all over the place in that number 12 Graves Motorsport car. Jack Burns sliding about. There's no grip out there at all. There's barely any visibility either. This is uh, near impossible conditions, but the drivers determined to put on a show for this big crowd here today. It is a sellout here at Brands Hatch for this bonfire weekend. Here comes the 23 of Lee Pierce. Last three years, he's won the 1300 Stock Car World Championship on the short ovals. Raced at Honda Civics on the circuits before moving to uh, the minis as well. Nelson King still leads from uh, Nicky Taylor by half a second. He's got the fastest lap of the race as well. Nelson King at 1 minute 3 points. 6, 7, 6. 
Down the hill of them, and coming under fire now from Tias. Lee Tias going well in the 23. Jack Byrne behind him, the rookie champion. Charlie Mann is down to seventh. Then Joe Wiggin, Alex Solly dropped to ninth with that grassy moments. Last time through at Graham Hill. And Matt Hammond rounding out the top ten. Is everybody still going? We'll take a quick look at the timing screen. Yes, so the 31 cars have started. John McGladrick and the only non-starter, Jack Byrne, goes rally crossing at Surtees. Has he survived that? Yes, he has. Behind him, Charlie Mann. You can see the rivers of uh, rain running across the road at several points on the circuit. But somehow the drivers keeping it on the straight and narrow. Reed Gap has come down. Nicky Taylor wants his first win. Staying with Nelson King, the championship lead. Not really a champion. He secured it yesterday with that victory. And one win last year, Nicky Taylor, on the way to seventh in the championship. That was with Accelerate Motorsport. He switched to Graves Motorsport this year. Matt Hammond has got ahead of Alex Solly. That's for ninth place. Matt Hammond, the 2017 champion. Behind them, the green car, that's Alfie Glenny. Began his career karting at Buckmore Park, just down the road from uh, Rantach. He then moved into the Fiesta Junior Championship on the uh, circuits. His father, Andy Glenny, an ex-motorcycle racer. And behind him, that's uh, Alex Keynes, number 62. He's running well. Frankie Taylor, a bit slow on the inside there. Around the outside of him goes... Um, I think it was the number 46 of Paul Manning. There's action all the way down the pack. Side by side there, that's Taylor, the 32, the multicolored car, previous race winner in the uh, Junior Saloon Car Championship. Something flew off Taylor's car there. He's got Tyler Lindsay, the ex Renault Clio racer, on the inside. He's going through and tucked in behind them. I think that's the 38, possibly, of Morgan Roos. Alex Solly's slowing down. I wonder if he's got damage from where he went up onto the grass earlier on because Ollie Meadows, one of the uh, leading rookie contenders this year, going for the outside. Behind them is Luca Marinoni Osborne. Great name, that is. And Alex Solly's lost another place. Just over five minutes of the race to go. Nelson King has increased his lead to 1.38 seconds with a new fastest lap, 103.670. In these near impossible conditions here at Brands Hatch. Nathan Edwards is still third, a further two seconds back car going across the curve there on the inside of Surtees that's probably the slipperiest bit of the circuit or maybe it's clear ways because Paul Manning goes flying wide there over the standing water Tom Ovenden is still fourth it's Lee Pierce fifth Jack Byrne is sixth he leads the rookie class the director's cup is being led by Lee Pierce Charlie Mann seventh then Joe Wiggin Hammond and Glennie now rounding up the top ten there's what happened to Alex Solly big fishtail there he got a rear wheel onto that painted green tarmac you could see there on the outside of paddock bed but that's him side somebody else going off into the gravel in the background didn't quite see who that was i think that might have been tyler lindsay because he's dropped down the timing screen wait to see if his car is still in the gravel at paddock bed or whether he's been able to dig himself out and keep going solly fighting back he's down to 13 as a result of that moment Nicky Taylor's dropped back as well. So something's happened to Nicky Taylor. It's been a bit of a sort out among the leaders there. He's behind Lee Pierce as Paul Manning goes grass tracking. He's all over the place, Paul Manning. So Lee Pierce is up to third. It's Nathan Edwards got through to second. So uh, Frankie Taylor has had a moment somewhere and Paul Manning ends up in the gravel at Clearways. Well, he was, said he was all over the place and he's finally ended up in the gravel. He's hit the tyre wall. Now, three and a half minutes to go. Is that going to be a safety car? We'll see again what happened to Paul Manning. Well, he was out of control coming into Surtees there. He went straight on across the grass. Tries to recover it. Gets sideways again. He's going too quickly coming into Clearways. Off over the gravel. Up towards the tyre wall on the outside. And what? End of race for Paul Manning in car 46. Race continues on. This is the fight for second place with uh, Nicky Taylor having lost two places. He lost about four seconds on that last lap. There's yellow flags at clearways because of the stranded car of Paul Manning, so no passing there. And that's allowed Nelson King to clear off into the lead. He's over four seconds clear now. See what the gap is. It was four and a quarter seconds over Nathan Edwards. It's four and a half seconds now. Lee Pierce in third. Taylor fourth. 
of Undenfu. Ten laps completed, two and a half minutes of this race to go. And there is our race leader, Nelson King, heading for win number 11, surely now this year. He's coming up to lap Sophie Wright in the uh, number three, one of our newcomers this year. For the A. Reeve Motorsport team, the 20-year-old. Her first season of motor racing this year. Had quite a big shunt, if I remember rightly, in the opening weekend of the year at uh, Pembrey. She's bounced back in style. Nelson King continues to lead the way. Here's a battle further back, the number 99 car. Where's that in the order? That's the uh, car of Ben Jenkins so towards the rear of the field. Yellow flag still out in Surtees because of the stranded cars further round. That's for 22nd place, the battle we saw there. This is the battle for second place. 90 seconds left on the clock, so we're coming towards the end of our first race of the day for the Quaif Mini Challenge Trophy. They'll have a partially reversed grid for their final race of the season later on as uh, Lauren Taylor goes a lap down. Ended up in the gravel in yesterday's race, but looking to finish this one as uh, wide goes Nathan Edwards. Was there contact there with Lee Pierce and Druids? We only caught the tail end of that, but Pierce is through to second. Here comes Nikki Taylor in the 17. In the alarm company car, I think Nathan Edwards was a bit alarmed there as he went out wide. Didn't see if there was any contact there. But through to second is Lee Pierce, looking for his best results of the season. Nathan Edwards nearly goes over the kerb onto the mud on the inside. Going round to start the final lap this time. There's still yellow flags out at clearways, so no passing there because of the stranded Paul Manning car on the outside. Manning driving for Manpower Motorsports, and that car's going to need a bit of manpower to get it out of the gravel. Up towards Paddock Bend, what will be the final time? Nicky Taylor wants a podium here. He's having a go at Nathan Edwards. Tom Oven done a little way behind them, and it's Nelson King out in front. Even a rainstorm can't stop Nelson. He's lapped Barry Holmes, number 88. Edwards up the inside, laps Lauren Taylor in the Halford sponsored car. Can Nicky Taylor get through into third place is the only question uh, left, really. It's going to be an 11th win of the season, a second of the weekend for Nelson King. It's a partially reverse grid for the race later on, so we'll see whether. Nelson can come through if the grid draw is kind to him. VPS is going to take second place, but it's going to be a win for number 95, Nelson King. Here he comes up towards the flag. The champion is going to take his second win of the weekend by a clear margin. There's the chequered flag. Nelson King wins it. Lee Pierce will get his best finish of the season in second. And it's side by side across the line. A photo finish for third. I think Nicky Taylor just about got that. Go to the timing screen. Taylor's done it by 0.014 of a second. 14 thousandths of a second. My goodness. Doesn't get much closer than that. Nicky Taylor steals the podium. We saw the 98 car of Jonathan Sargent on the grass there through Surtees. So a fair bit of a sort out further back in the order. Nathan Edwards has taken fourth. Fifth is Tom Ovenden. Jack Byrne wins the rookie class yet again in sixth place. Lee Pierce in second wins the Director's Cup. Uh, Charlie Mann, Joe Wiggin, Matt Hammond and Alex Keynes round out to the top ten. Alex Solly drops all the way down to 13th. He was all over the place in that one. Only a couple of retirements from that race. We saw Tyler Lindsay end up in the gravel. It was Tyler at uh, Paddock Bend and Paul Manning in the gravel at Clearways. So Nelson King takes another win emphasising his status as the king of the Mini Challenge Trophy this season. Lee Pierce, a brilliant second place. Confirm the uh, full provisional results in a moment. 13 laps completed by our race winner. Lee Pierce also got the fastest lap, but he finished over four seconds behind Nelson King. Pierce wins the Director's Cup in second, and Nicky Taylor beats Nathan Edwards in a photo finish by 0 0.014 of a second for third. Tom Oven, the next ahead of rookie winner Jack Byrne, then Charlie Mann, Joe Wiggin, Matt Hammond and Alex Keynes completing the top ten. Alfie Glennie was 11th ahead of Ollie Meadows, Alex Solly will be disappointed with 13th ahead of Luca Marinoni-Osborne and Morgan Roots completing the top 15. 
Behind them, we had uh, the number 32 of Frankie Taylor, 16th. Clark Wells was 17th, ahead of Mike Paul in number four. Then we had the 44 of Sam Baker, 60 of Brendan Fitzgerald, then James Parker in number 30. John Sargent recovering from a bit of an off on the final lap to finish out of Ben Jenkins. Then Mike Fitzgerald ahead of Jordan Kerridge in the 96 car. Andy Cobb was next ahead of Barry Holmes, Lauren Taylor and Sophie Wright was the final finisher. A couple of cars ending up in the gravel we can see there on the run of Halewood Rise. That's Tyler Lindsay's number 10 car and Paul Manning we saw go off as well. So they'll be recovered by uh, the trackside recovery team here this weekend. Next up we should see the British Truck Racing Championship on track. A couple of highlights from that one. That was Frankie Taylor going across the grass so that's why he dropped back. Alex Solly, he'll be entering the British Drift Championship with sliding like that next season. In the background we see uh, Tyler Lindsay going barrelling off into the gravel. This was Paul Manning's demise, cutting across the grass at Surtees, tried too hard in his efforts to recover, over the gravel on the outside of Clearways and walloped straight into the barrier. Thankfully uh, not too much damage there, hopefully we'll see that car back out for race three. This was at uh, oh, this was at Graham Hill Bend in the closing stages. A bit of contact between Nathan Edwards and uh, Nicky Taylor. Well, there's Tyler Lidsey's car being recovered. Trackside recovery. I've got the Ford Ranger pickup and the flatbed lorry there. They won't have their heavy artillery out for this one, of course. The big uh, truck towing vehicles. Meanwhile, we're going to head down into um, Park Ferme, where hopefully our intrepid uh, pit reporter Ewan Dunlop has kept himself dry enough to uh, interview some of the drivers. They've actually got our first race of the way underway and completed without too much damage as well, which is uh, not what we were expecting down here in Park Fermi. But let's speak to a few of our drivers. Uh, Nelson King has gone for a little walk, so we're going to jump in with Nick. Nicky. I keep this really, really short. It's another podium for you. You've got it by a few thousandths of a second right at the end there. Yeah, I don't know if I'll keep it, to be fair, but if I do, I do. And at the end of the day, I, I tried to be tried to be clean when, uh, with Nathan, but it was last lap, so I was going to go for it. And at the end of the day, I, I did make contact going down into Graham Hill, but I made contact and then let him back through. So um, um, I saw you have a very quick chat with him. What did you say? Uh, I just said, sorry if I made any contact, but I didn't mean to. But at the end of the day, it racing happens and bumping... I didn't mean to, and I tried to be as clean as possible out there, but it happened, and at the end of the day, I need the points of the championship, so I'm <laughs> going to go for it, but, but oh well, here's what it is. Like and you say, racing's racing, and it's another podium for you. How work conditions, just tell us quickly. Uh, bloody wet. Literally, <laughs> I, got in, I got into Graham Hill, uh, not Graham Hill, sorry, Paddock Hill and Clearways, and literally the car just wants to like lose yeah, yeah. the rear end every single lap. Okay. So, I was going to go to what Nelson done on set of change, but we, we thought we'd, we'd keep to what it was last ye oh, yesterday, sorry, because it was, it was fast, but... Uh. I've got to say, it was incredibly brave, the opening few laps, how close you were to Nelson. What is it like being in that spray? What can you see? Uh, pretty much nothing. Literally, the only <laughs> thing I think I could so see was Nelson's rain light, but at the end of the day, I, kinda, I have faith in Nelson going around the right line, so I was kind of just copying what he done, and the end of the day it was fun while it lasted and then I had a moment because the car just uh, went loose in the rear and I hit a uh, massive puddle but it is what it is and at the end of the day I got third even if I get demoted I still get better um, reverse grid or whatever so it it's, don't mind me mate right rest of my time cool, cheers. cheers buddy uh, let's have a chat with Lee Pierce here Lee it was a matter of sort of keeping your nose clean there wasn't it yeah um, from the start of the race I thought we'd take it easy at the beginning uh, mid race I thought there's that now or never pretty much so we we made a couple of good moves and managed to yeah put it in second and stay there so i'm happy with that and uh, fourth podium of the year how do you just summarize your season with one race to go uh, i've had a few ups and downs really um we haven't had any of these wet conditions really apart from Donington this year which they sort of pay into my favor I'm, we're quite good in the wet so um yeah i'm quite happy with the season uh, apart from the few faults that we've had through the year um yeah it'd be nice to finish on the podium um how did the car cope yeah, pretty well, hold up pretty well. We've done a bit of grass tracking halfway through that. Um, <laughs> but we, the window wipers and the screen wash sort of helps out that part of it. But um, yeah, other than that, yeah, it's my conditions. I like this. Um, one more race to go. Do you make any changes to the setup? Uh, if conditions stay the same? No, I don't think we will. We're just going to give the car a, a slight check over and, and, and go from there. And hopefully we can make it one, one step further. Lee Wilder, mate. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, buddy. Uh, right, first up next is our first truck race of the day. First of three. This will be slippy and slidey. Um, enjoy, Dave, over to you. 
I certainly will enjoy. Yes, thanks very much, Ewan. Here come the big rigs. Five tons, 1,000 horsepower, 100 miles an hour. The British Truck Racing Championship, the biggest beasts on the circuits. It will be a slightly uh, different starting procedure, we can tell you, for this one. Uh, the pace truck will uh, take the trucks round in two by two formation for the first lap. Then the pace truck will pull off, but then the race will start under yellow flags and the trucks will go round in single file for a couple of laps before racing gets underway with the green flag. So it's effectively a safety car start, similar to what we saw with the minis, but uh, the pace truck won't stay out for every lap. Slightly different, but uh, a similar sort of procedure. The grid is based on the result of race one from yesterday, but with the top eight positions reversed. So the first race from yesterday, has uh, decided the grid for this one, but the top eight positions in each division have been flipped around. That's why Ryan Smith, the double winner yesterday, the new champion, starts from eighth place. We'll have a look at the grid in a moment. Good to see Bradley Smith is back out there, the 46 truck there. He picks up a fair bit of damage in the two races yesterday. I think we've got, yes, our full complement of Division 1 trucks out there. The Division 1 title, as I just said, has already been won by Ryan Smith after his two wins yesterday. Division 2, starting behind Division 1, is still very much open. There's only four points between number 42, Luke Garrett, and the 16 of Brad Smith. And yes, we have got a Brad Smith and a Bradley Smith out there. Good to see our grid girls from HGV Direct keeping as dry as they can down there as they await the trucks to come up onto the grid have a look at the grid in a second there's the pace truck the uh, TR TRP uh, truck parts DAF and it is number three the local man Stephen Powell we heard from him earlier in his MAN who takes pole position alongside him will be number 81 Mark Taylor's MAN second row number 12 of Michael Oliver and 86 Tom O'Rourke another pair of German built MANs at row three it's number 18 John Newell MAN and 68 Craig Reed in his Iveco the only one of the Reed brothers racing this weekend Simon is absent unfortunately due to work commitments on row four we've got two drivers now with 17 titles between them 10 times British champion Stuart Oliver in the Volvo VNL one time European champion too and number one Ryan Smith confirmed yesterday as British champion for the seventh consecutive year Row five behind them is Ricky Collett with his MAN, number 95. And number 41, good to see Simon Cole back out this weekend with his MAN. Row six, number 69, David Jenkins finished uh, down the order in race one yesterday. Had to uh, take the restart from the pit lane after he ended up in the tyre wall exiting Druids. And alongside him, 46, Bradley Smith. He got uh, a bit uh, battered and bruised, his truck, in uh, yesterday's two races. He's back out, starting ahead of number 92, Simon Faulkner with his Iveco. Then there's a gap, and we've got the Division 2 trucks. John Powell starts alongside Craig Evans at the front of the grid. Then we've got one of the title contenders, number 16, Brad Smith, alongside 14, John Bowler in their DAFs. Adam Bint with his Volvo Whites, number 5, alongside 32, Jock Borthwick, and number 42, Luke Garrett. The championship leader starts from the back. Well, in yesterday's race one, Luke Garrett literally pipped Jock Borthwick right on the finish line to take the win in Division 2. That could be crucial towards the championship, but then Luke had a bit of a disaster in race two. He ran wide, coming out of clearways with a couple of laps to go, and encountered the spun truck of Bradley Smith. Wallop straight in, it certainly was, straight into the side of Bradley Smith, which gave Jock Borthwick the class win. So the point situation in Division Two sees uh, Luke Garrett having lost that class win. He's now just four points ahead of Brad Smith in the cream-coloured number 16 DAF. And uh, 47 points off the championship lead is Jock Borthwick with 48 points available. So basically, Borthwick needs Luke Garrett and Brad Smith to not score in any of today's three races. And Jock needs to win all three and take fastest lap because it's 15 points for a win, 14 for second, 13 for third, and so on downwards, plus a bonus point for the fastest lap in each division. We'll try and update you on the points as the day goes on. Although, as I've already said, maths isn't my strong point, so we'll uh, try our best. Stephen Powell in uh, pole position then. Lives just down the road from Brands Hatch at the wheel of his uh, MAN, the 2020 Division 2 champion. Alongside number 81, Mark Taylor, started off in the sport as a sponsor of Ryan Smith with the family company Taylor's Haulage before taking up the sport himself. On the second row, Michael Oliver in the GT Tyres MAN, son of Stewart in uh, number 7. He missed the second race yesterday with some problems, so good to see he's back out. And alongside him is number 86, 
Tom O'Rourke. They've replaced all the panels pretty much on that uh, MAN overnight, the MV Commercials team. After he got very knocked about yesterday, he ended up spinning coming out of, out of uh, Clark Curve at the end of, uh, towards the end of race two and ended up hitting the pit wall. John Newell on row three. He could still take second in the championship. He's only nine points behind Stuart Oliver with David Jenkins down to fourth after a disappointing day yesterday. There are all 20 trucks out there. Watch for Luke Garrett coming through from the back in the orange MAN in Division 2. So Division 2 is uh, probably going to be the main focus today. Their championship battle between Garrett, Brad Smith and Borthwick. So the pace truck will lead them round two by two for the first lap. They then will do a couple of laps under yellow flag single file just to get used to the conditions. Just to keep things uh, safe and sensible, although in race one, ahead of race one yesterday, Ricky Collins in number 95 managed to spin on his way to the grid. So let's hope he keeps things uh, straight and narrow this time. Here's Division 2. John Powell, number 6. He had uh, a tough day yesterday. He was struggling with the daft. Craig Evans, 5th in the Division 2 points. So two more modern MANs, the one to watch there, but they've got to uh, fight their way through from the back of the Division 2 pack. And there's Simon Cole, number 41, the pink and white MAN. He used to race the Mercedes-Benz, the Mercedes-Beast, as it was known, in Division 2. Stephen Powell, just one win this season. That was at Cruxton in Hampshire in the summer. Summer seems to be a distant memory now. It was his first win in Division 1 and he celebrated like he'd won the championship. There's Brad Smith. Can he catch Luke Garrett? He's only four points off him. Garrett and Borthwick, the two quickest trucks in Division 2. Now, the pace truck is in pit lane. And the race possibly not starting just yet. Yes, the yellow lights are on. So, effectively, this is a safety car start. Go through the river at the bottom of, Paddock, bottom of Paddock Hill Bend. Stephen Powell is the race leader. We do a couple, we'll do a couple of laps under yellow before the pack is unleashed and we go racing. keeping it steady, getting used to the conditions, Division 2 keeping the gap, liking the eyes on the grill of John Powell's uh, DAF there, I haven't noticed them before. John Bowler in the Union flag liveried uh, DAF, the hand-painted truck. So the first lap is completed, they'll do uh, I think one more lap before the green lights go on and we're underway. The battle is still on between uh, three drivers for second in the Division 1 points. Stuart Oliver is nine points ahead of John Newell and ten ahead of David Jenkins. David Jenkins had a bit of a disaster yesterday. Started by a crash in race one. He got forced wide coming out of Druids and hit the tyre wall. Had to restart from the pit lane along with Bradley Smith. Fair play to Bradley Smith and his team. That truck was rather smashed up at the end of yesterday's race after he went off at clearways and was collected by Luke Garrett. They've rebuilt the front of that truck pretty much. I know Craig Reed was uh, undergoing some uh, running repairs to his gearbox overnight as well. The only Reed truck sporty Vico here this weekend. That's why Simon Cole came in. He was initially entered as a reserve because you can only have a maximum of 20 trucks on track at once at Brands Hatch for safety reasons. But with Simon Reed having to withdraw with work commitments, Simon Cole came in to replace him. Pace is increasing then, and we go green. We are underway with our first of three truck races today here at Brands Hatch. Stephen Powell leads them off. 
into Paddock Hill Bend they go they're fairly well uh, spaced apart Ryan Smith up onto the tail of Stuart Oliver starting from eight this time and there goes the first one into the gravel that's Michael Oliver run wide but he digs himself out and keeps going Ricky Collett's run a bit wide there as well Tom O'Rourke up the inside on Michael Oliver the 18 of uh, John Newell tucked in behind Michael Oliver's fighting back that is quick that MAN he's recovered very quickly from that uh, little moment gets ahead of Tom O'Rourke splashes his way through Graham Hill Bend and swims off to chase the leaders John Newell having a go as well here's Division 2 getting underway there's John Bowler the Rochdale HGV DAF Jock Borthwick already having a go and Michael Oliver's off again so is John Newell it's truck rally cross at Surtees where's John Newell going to rejoin he did that in the first race yesterday as well I think Tom O'Rourke was off there as well at the start of yesterday's first race they've all survived that I think oh Ryan Smith sideways is he going to spin there coming uh, onto the straights well, there go the leaders over the line Stephen Powell and Mark Taylor I think Ryan Smith has spun I just caught a glimpse of there coming out of Clark Curve let's see if he comes through uh, over the line at the end of lap three well he's come through but he's lost a couple of places he saved the spin but he's down to 10th place in Division 1 Stephen Powell the local man leads Mark Taylor in second place looking for what I think will be his first win of the year there's Ryan Smith he did save it he's got ahead there of David Jenkins Ricky Collick goes wild in the 95 it is so so treacherous out there meanwhile John Powell the number six is leading division two off goes John Bowler through the gravel and where where is Garrett where's Luke Garrett he hasn't come through now this could be significant in the division two battle John Jock Borthwick they're still going where's Luke Garrett he hasn't come through at the end of lap three We'll try and pick up where the orange uh, MAN has gone. I can't see him at clearways there. We'll try and pick that up as we continue. Powell leads it from Taylor. Oliver. Tom O'Rourke in fourth place. And Craig Reed rounding out the top five in the Avico. There's Garrett. I've just caught a glimpse of him. He's spun into the tyre wall coming into Graham Hill Bend that's where Michael Oliver went off yesterday so Luke Garrett has spun off coming into Graham Hill Bend there he is he can't get going he's bogged down in the grass disaster for Luke Garrett if he doesn't score here now where's Brad Smith the number 16 in Division 2 he's in uh, third in the class at the moment that will be 13 points it's all going wrong for Luke Garrett Borthwick is fifth in the class he needs a win and fastest lap John Powell is leading Division 2 in this one. They've got past uh, one of the Division 1 trucks there, Simon Faulkner. Brad Smith, is he up to second in Division 2 now? It looks like, yes, he is. He's got ahead of Craig Evans. So Brad Smith is second. There's Luke Garrett trying to get going again. He shattered one of the uh, polystyrene marker boards there. Now, Brad Smith trying to get into the lead of the category he wants to get Simon Faulkner out of his way here so he can challenge John Powell this is the last thing he needs a slow division one truck in his way in the meantime Stephen Powell still leads overall by half a second ahead of Mark Taylor and Michael Oliver Ryan Smith is now up into eighth place behind Stuart Oliver Brad Smith going wide and Simon Faulkner sideways ahead of him coming out of clearways here's the division one battle Tom O'Rourke up the inside he's going to try and take third away from Michael Oliver these two have been battling each other all weekend and excuse me says Tom O'Rourke how about no says Michael Oliver keeps his foot down and keeps third place John Newell's coming up behind them and he could snatch second in the championship if things go his way Craig Reid behind him then it's uh, Stuart Oliver and look at the state at the front of Ryan Smith's truck he's clearly hit somebody the front bumper dragging alongside him and round goes John Newell oh that was lucky lucky he wasn't collected by Stuart Oliver and Craig Reid there heart-stopping moment for John Newell that would have been very nasty if he'd been T-boned Ryan Smith continuing but I think he's wounded David Jenkins having a go at him you always know that uh, Ryan and David have had a big rivalry over the years Stephen Powell is still leading there's mayhem behind him let's see what happened there to John Newell he bounced off Tom O'Rourke I think he's heading for the barriers that could have been so much worse 
Look at the way he comes back across on the break. Stuart Oliver and Craig Reed. How did they miss him? That was a scary moment there. That could have been a major pilot. Newell, I think, has continued. So Stephen Powell leads ahead of Taylor. Michael Oliver, Tom O'Rourke, Stuart Oliver's now fifth. Ryan Smith in what's left of the number one truck is sixth. Luke Garrett's got going again. But he'll be at least one lap down. He's showing his three laps down on the timing screen. There's Craig Reed. And he's dropped back to sixth as a result of having to slam the brakes on to avoid John Newell. Meantime, here's Division 2. And Jock Borthwick has got ahead of Brad Smith. And he's going for the lead. He really needs Brad Smith and Luke Garrett to fail to score. And I don't think this is going to happen. So even if he wins here... I think this is going to be the end of his championship hopes. The conditions, if anything, are getting worse out there. Bradley Smith side by side with Adam Bint in the Volvo. It's officially called a Volvo White, but uh, it seems a bit of a misnomer, doesn't it, with um, the truck painted black and orange. Second place is uh, Jock Borthwick. Craig Evans going well in third. He's had a consistent season. And Brad Smith, Adam Bint, John Bowler... John Newell's in the gravel. John Newell's in the gravel at Clearways. So he's out of the race. Maybe he lost his steering as a result of that impact with the barriers. And now here comes Jock Borthwick breezing round the outside of John Powell. Takes the lead in Division 2. And I'm wondering if we may see a stoppage because of John Newell's truck stranded in the gravel at Clearways. Depends how close it is to the edge of the circuit. So Borthwick leads Division 2. Wait to see who's put up the fastest lap in the uh, Division 2 field as well. Let's check the timing screen. It is Borthwick, I think. Yes, he's done the fastest lap as well, so he'll get 16 points if he can stay out in front. Here's the battle in uh, Division 1. Your leader is still Stephen Powell. Something going flying off uh, one of the trucks there. I think it was off Tom O'Rourke's truck. It might have been... No, it was off Ryan Smith's. The uh, front bumper's come off, look. Smith powering up the outside, side by side with Tom O'Rourke. This is for fourth place. It was Ryan Smith, bit of his front bumper that went flying there. Couldn't quite see because of the spray initially. And now Mark Taylor's attacking for the lead. Powell a little wide. Well, talk of a little wide. Three trucks go wide there. O'Rourke, Smith and somebody else all going through the gravel out of Paddock Bend. Stuart Oliver was the other one. This is chaos. Still Mark Taylor unable to get ahead of Stephen Powell. He wants a win on his local circus and all his family will be here this weekend. As we said, they live literally just down the road from Brands Hatch in West Kingsdown. And Craig Reed now attacking Ryan Smith. Ryan won't mind too much. He's already won the championship. He can't be caught in the points now. Michael Oliver chasing Mark Taylor. Now David Jenkins has come. Where's he come from? Up in the fourth place. Tom O'Rourke in fifth, and behind him we've got Ryan Smith. There's John Newell's truck stranded in the gravel. Just under four minutes of this race to go. Look at them sliding as they come out of Clearways and Clark Curve there. Just, there's no grip there at all. How these drivers are keeping things safely on the tarmac, I do not know. That shows their skill and determination. Fair play to all these truck racers. Brad Smith has uh, come under pressure from John Bowler. John Powell's lost out to Adam Bintz as well. David Jenkins, steam pouring off his water-cooled brakes. Chasing after the leading pack. Ryan Smith's got back ahead of him into fifth. So Jenkins has gone from fourth down to sixth. He's gone wide somewhere. It must have been a padder going race over the mud left by John Newell earlier on Craig Reed having a go at Jenkins Stuart Oliver's behind them and a gap back here's Division 2 Division 2 being led by Jock Borthwick ahead of Adam Bint, John Powell and Brad Smith Craig Evans behind now Brad Smith will have seen that um, Luke Garrett has hit problems he's, I think he's still running yeah he's two laps down Luke Garrett well out of sync with the rest of the pack. Tom O'Rourke's going well. He's just got ahead of Michael Oliver around the outside. Mark Taylor is now under fire. Look at the way O'Rourke is going here. He wants a victory. 
He leans on Mark Taylor. They make contact. Slick tight. Mark Taylor's going to spin out. He hits the side of Michael Oliver. Oh, chaos. And Ryan Smith's caught up as well. There's trucks going everywhere. Look at Michael Oliver. Round and round and round. He goes. Ryan Smith's been hit. Ryan Smith's been hit by Stuart Oliver. That's surely going to be a race stoppage. There's trucks all over the place. David Jenkins is involved as well. Oh, my goodness. The track's almost blocked. That's going to be a red flag, surely. Yeah, red flags are out. Race stopped. And that, well, two minutes left on the clock. That'll be a result declared. We'll try and work out what happened there. Mark Taylor was forced wide. He fought, became back across. He cannoned into Michael Oliver, then spins back across the track. Ryan Smith will go into him as well. And I think uh, we'll try and see in the background there. Did, did Stuart Oliver come piling in as well? Yeah, Jenkins goes into Taylor. Smith comes across, and he's smashed in two by Stuart Oliver. That is a big accident. There's broken trucks everywhere on Halewood Rise. Let's hope everyone is okay. Well, that all started when uh, Mark, when uh, Tom O'Rourke tried to get through on the inside for second on Mark Taylor. Taylor got onto the uh, dirt and the kerb on the outside and spun. Still moving. That's a lot of damage to his truck. He, was collect he collected Michael Oliver as he came back across. Let's see it again. There, Taylor is leaned on by Tom O'Rourke. He hits that painted tarmac on the outside. There's no grip there. He cannons into Michael Oliver. They spin back across. Ryan Smith slams the brakes on, but he can't avoid the back of Mark Taylor. David Jenkins is going to hit Smith. Wallop. And then Stuart Oliver with nowhere to go on the inside. Smashed into Ryan Smith. There's a lot of very damaged trucks there. Let's just hope uh, everybody's okay. There were some seriously big hits in there. I'm reminded of a pile-up that took place in the mid-2000s in the British Touring Car Championship. It started in the same uh, circumstances. Look at, look at that. Even the windscreen has come loose in uh, Mark Taylor's truck. I've not seen a pile-up like that in a long time touring car pile-up um, I mentioned was uh, started in identical circumstances. Matt Jackson uh, in the BMW hit the uh, painted tarmac on the outside and spun back into the pack and collected pretty much everybody else. That was the uh, pilot where Matt Neal's Honda got jacked up flat out by an Alfa Romeo. Now we hope everyone's okay. Michael Oliver I can see on the right there is out of his truck. I think I can see Ryan Smith and Stuart Oliver out of their trucks as well. So it appears everybody is okay. But we're going to need, we can see parked up there on the right of your screen, the uh, heavy recovery uh, services from Trackside Recovery. The Peterbilts and the DAF are in attendance. And this is going to take some time to clear up. The results, I would imagine, will be declared because there are only two minutes left. So I'm going to take uh, just a moment to work out uh, if the result is going to be declared, what the provisional points situation is. See it again here. This was from earlier in the race, just a few highlights here. Michael Oliver ran wide at the start through the gravel. Stephen Powell managed to hold the lead all the way as Michael Oliver did a bit more rally crossing. John Newell went even further off. It was a pretty disastrous race for John Newell, but at least he avoided the pilot because he was already in the gravel at Clearways. That was after this scary incident as John Newell spun into the barrier, straight back across the pack. How Craig Reed missed him there, I don't know. And then John Newell tried to rejoin but ended up in the gravel and then this big incident heading up Halewood Rise. Mark Taylor, contact with O'Rourke, cannoned into Michael Oliver. That took Ryan Smith out as well. Smith was hit by David Jenkins and Stuart Oliver with nowhere to go straight into Ryan Smith on the inside. See it again. Taylor into Oliver. Ryan Smith tried to pull up to avoid them. He was collected by Jenkins. Michael Oliver spinning round and round and then Smith was hit by Stuart Oliver. Okay, uh, trackside recovery. I said it might be a busy day for them. We're going to see uh, how to recover A race truck. The big Peterbilt there from Mick Gould Recovery, based in uh, Flimwell in Sussex. 
and we've got the LJ Transports uh, DAF as well. The LJ Transports uh, DAF. It's the uh, three-axle machine. They're based um, across the south of England. LJ Transportation. They have uh, five depots and around 150 vehicles. They've got their big DAF here this weekend, powered by a 13-litre, 530-horsepower diesel engine. Gross train weights, that's uh, the vehicle and whatever it's towing, is up to 80 tonnes. For the uh, Peterbilt in the background, it's 100 tonnes, so they can undertake the heaviest recovery work. That's a huge Peterbilt, was custom-built in America for Mick Gould commercials, based in Sussex. They've got a fleet of a few American vehicles, and some older trucks as well, a couple of old Fodens as well. Check out their Facebook page for more info on their vehicles. See the incident again from another angle. Taylor Force wide. He hits that painted tarmac on the outside, which spins him round. Michael Oliver hits him. And Ryan Smith did no option but to slam the brakes on, but he's going to be hit by David Jenkins, who's tried to pull up as well. Ryan Smith got the truck stopped, but in from stage left will come Jenkins. Bang! Looks bigger impact from that angle. And then we see Stuart Oliver as well. He smashes into Ryan Smith. And it's a good job, I would say, there that... Um, Oliver hit the side of uh, the back the back of um, Ryan Smith's truck and didn't impact the cab because that could have been very nasty indeed thankfully it appears everyone is okay trackside recoveries other vehicles there the Mitsubishi Fuso flatbed and uh, the Ford Ranger in attendance the medical cars as a, as a precaution as well well the drivers were trying their hardest there but what a, a sad way for that race to end we believe that the race will be declared. So I'm just going to take a moment to work out uh, what the points will be. In fact, I'm going to hold on that because the trucks that were not running at the time of the red flag may not be classified in the results. So we'll hold on points and uh, wait for the official results to be published later on. But I don't think that race is going to restart because there were only two minutes left on the clock. Don't think I'd want to be on uh, a fairground ride like that in this weather. Well, it wouldn't get me on, wouldn't get me on a fairground ride like that anyway. I'm not a daredevil, except when it comes to things like the dodgems. Well, being driven round a circuit as a passenger in a race car is uh, better than any roller coaster in my eyes. And now you can see the uh, LJ Transportation DAF has hooked up uh, what's left of Michael Oliver's truck. I fear that could be the end of his weekend. Let's say a quick hello to uh, Chip Howland and his family, wife Becca and their two children who are watching on. Chip Howland, uh, a long-time short oval racer, specialises in racing Reliant Robins, would you believe? Maybe we'll see him behind the wheel of a race truck someday, who knows? Rob Priest uh, watching on says one very expensive truck crash yes um, I think uh, the main uh, impact taken by the driver's wallets there unfortunately thankfully it appears there's been uh, no injuries which is the main thing see the Red Dragon uh, monster truck waiting to take some passengers out for a ride there Regular feature of truck weekends here at Brands Hatch over the years. Now, what's happening here? We've got the pickup trucks coming out onto circuit. So once the track is clear, we're going to see the first pickup truck 
race of the weekend. Of course, quite a bit of clearing up to do. I actually appreciate a fair bit of clearing up to do first of all before we get the pickup trucks underway but uh, we will shortly see our next race out. We also had a message come in from the Wright brothers. Nothing to do with aircraft, but uh, they race in uh, mini stocks on the short ovals. We've said best of luck to Charlie Wright, making his uh, national mini stocks debut at Skegness later this month. So good luck there. Now, the pickup truck championship lining up on the grid for the first of two races in their season finale. Certainly not like um, the pickup you might see your local tradesmen driving around in. These are very highly specialised two litre race engine space frame machines. We've gone, haven't forgotten John Newell either. His truck uh, buried axle deep in the gravel at Clearways. The marshals are waiting a recovery vehicle. So there's going to be uh, a break in the action here while we uh, await our marshalling and recovery teams to do their job. We have, I think, four trucks to clear off circuits and then the teams will get underway with repairs ahead of the next truck race, which is due off a couple of races before the lunch break. So obviously there will be a delay here. We'll be back underway as soon as we're able. See there, Michael Oliver's truck being towed away. Race trucks always towed from the rear. Much easier to lift the back end of the truck rather than under the cab. Front can be a problem because you've got the uh, low bumper and the low mounted radiator, so there's risk of damage there. Also, the handbrake is on the rear axle of a race truck, so no need to fill with air to release the brakes to move it. Big thank you once again to Steve Bewers, the head of Trackside Recovery, for some background info on our recovery vehicles this weekend. He says that Brands Hatch is a tricky uh, circuit to recover trucks on because of its uh, steep gradients. There's the Red Dragon. Ford Ranger bodywork on the monster truck chassis. I wonder what license you need to drive one of those. The body roll there, better than any, ro any roller coaster, surely. Now, I think our intrepid pit reporter for truck racing, uh, the one and only Pointy, he is down uh, either in the pit lane or park ferme, and he's got some info for us. Pointy, over to you. then well um i certainly don't need my umbrella but we might need a few stretches and certainly a lot of tow trucks what on earth just happened then uh i hope that everybody's okay of course uh, the teams are on the circuit as we speak clearing up the mess collecting the drivers and whatever's left of their trucks still not really any clearer to exactly who is injured and who is damaged the most uh, all we do know is that, of course Michael Oliver is going to be a little bit dizzy right about now so waiting for the final results to come through I believe 
as usually is uh, traditional with these uh, kind of happenings, will revert back to the lap previous to the red flag stoppage and they will be the results, which as far as I know means that Michael Oliver, although not finishing the race and now probably getting driven back by an ambulance, has in fact gone home with a third place for that race. Anyway, someone we do know was in first place was our friend from over the border. It's your both with those gentlemen. How the devil are we? I'm fantastic, thank you. So, uh, I mean, you obviously came out of that relatively unscathed. Yeah, no any problems. Off the back of the grid and just picked the way and picked the way and just done enough to get over the line, eh? There was some serious driving going on out there. I mean, conditions were absolutely appalling when they started the race. We went for two yellow flags, no overtaking until you were past the green flag. Did you, did you feel that it took a little while for the rest of the pack to sign to get into the groove? It probably did, to be honest, Pointy, because... Obviously, the, the guys on pole and single files got a fair gap. Then there's still quite a bit of standing water, so you're needing to try and find where there is water or where there's less water. And it, and it did, it took a few laps, but from a point of view, I was at the back, so it maybe helped because I had time to, to, to see where the grip was and the water was and, and pick away. So at the front, the pressure's on at the back. You just got the scratch for the grip. Wow, fa fantastic result for you. Um, obviously, you know, the huge, huge incident in Division 1. How, when, when these things happen, obviously they, they leave a gap between the starting of Division 1 and the starting of Division 2, so there's a slight time delay at the beginning of the race. How does that affect you guys further back on the circuit, you know, when you obviously just come round a corner and see a pile of trucks in the middle of the track? You know, what, what goes through your mind? I know, you've not got a lot of time to think about it, but you're obviously just watching for the flags to give you some kind of indication. But you're that engrossed also what you're doing, watching temperatures, brake temperatures, brake pressures. You know, you've got a lot going on in a there lot, and yeah. flags and then you're geez, there's trucks everywhere. So you've always got it in the back of your mind, but at the same time, you've just got to get on with it. Just get on, on with it. Get on with it. Just get on with it. Well, spoken like a true professional, Jock Borthwick, hopefully keeping that first place trophy for that race. I think you were in first long enough for it to stick. I think so, yeah. yeah, a, yeah. Few, a few laps. A few laps, a few laps. A few laps. Adam, Adam was going well, to be honest. And I didn't want to overdo it and end up in the gravel, but I was just gauging like many behind others, me. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, no, good. Adam got the fastest lap, but good, good, good clean race, eh? Well, for, for Division 2 at least. <laughs> for Division 2. Luke Garrett two. went off quite early on, and he, he sat there on the rev limiter, wheel spinning, trying to get it back on the track. I mean... I suppose we should thank him that he managed to get back on the track for, for the continuation of the race, but maybe if he'd have caused a red flag earlier on, we wouldn't have had the incident in Division 1 that we did. Well, there's that, but hey, that's how it is. Eh? And, and I mean, yeah, just look caught the grass, I think, and then it just put him across the track and it just zero grip. So he done very well to get it back on. And, I was pleased to see him getting back on and getting a finish. You know? Yeah, indeed. The point, points are points. Um, how's it looking now in Division 2 points-wise? Are you any... Because, I mean, it's so touch and go all weekend nearer this time of the season yeah. that it's like you've got the, the extra a lap point for uh, fastest lap, sorry. Yeah. You know, the, the, there was about 10 points in it between first and fourth in Division 2. I've no look pointy, to be honest, because I would rather no no, really. I just go and race and race and race. But I, I think, well, I lost quite a lot of points at Penbury with my flange we've had a few problems so I think I'm well out of contention to be honest like I do so I'm I don't not know look, I'm not looking well not with division looking. two anything could happen this is the thing with that so right well thanks very much for talking to us Jock I've got a little gift for you go on yeah I've got a trophy for you a trophy dare I ask yeah dare, do, yeah. do we want to see this ladies and gentlemen yeah. out there what on earth oh I was out hunting <laughs> Is this? And it was the last one of the season. Did and you I catch, it? catch it? Oh, you. and you and managed to. I bagged to... it and I bagged it. <laughs> oh my God! Look at this. You got me a haggis. I tell you, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this for breakfast tomorrow. Yeah. I'm gonna say a little prayer the for legs it. Are a you took the, have you took the legs off already? No, they're, they're, they're a delicacy. You still got the legs on. Look at this. Yeah. Photo. There we go. Furniture shop. Yeah. <laughs> Well, honestly, come now, come here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jock. Thank you to Jock's team. Truly are lovely, lovely people. I've said this about Jock many a time on camera. They're just such great guys to be around. Everyone always seems to start congregating around Jock's tent at the night time. I'm not sure whether that's him or the whiskey. <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Thank you so much. Terribly kind. They're so lovely, that is. Thank you, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Get the rest of the team in there as well, Dan. 
Honestly, well, what, what do I? What do you say about that? I've got a. That's a Simon Howie Scottish butcher. Look at that, proper haggis for all the way from Scotland. I would think as well. I don't know what to do myself now. Right, uh, it looks like all the other trucks are making their way out of Park Fermé now. If we have a little pan around, loads of spectators here today as well. Um, it's a full sold out event, as you might have heard already from the commentary and the fireworks, of course, happening later on. And of course, as I've mentioned several times this week, and because we're doing trophies at some point, I've made it stop raining for now, because uh, that's just the way we roll. So I'm going to head back into the tent now to see, uh, I feel we've got Stuart Oliver's truck in from the track already, and whilst we're waiting for the rest of the trucks to come back from recovery, uh, let's have a look down on the circuit now to see how they're getting on with clearing the circuit. I'm not sure we're going to be seeing the champion out again today. A lot of damage, they can see damage to the air tanks. That was where he was impacted by Stuart Oliver. Seven times champion uh, he may be, it says on the windscreen, but um, I'm not sure we're going to be seeing that truck out again today. But uh, The team will try their hardest, I'm sure, as that huge Peterbilt tows the champion back to the paddock. There's Michael Oliver being towed off by the DAF as well. Michael's truck doesn't look quite as bad. It's all down to the skills of the teams, and we don't know what damage Stuart, uh, his father's truck, has got on the front end as well. We haven't seen that yet. The pickup truck's in position on the grid. They had their qualifying sessions yesterday for the two races. Each uh, half of the session sets the grid for a race, but then the top six in each qualifying session are reversed, so it's a slightly different lineup for the pickups. 200 points available for a race win in the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. Bit of a NASCAR style point system. And there's also five bonus points for the fastest lap as well. So there's effectively 410 more points uh, maximum available for the Pickup Truck drivers. Rhys Jones leads the championship ahead of the absent George Tariki. There's work going on down here as well. That's where John Newell hit the barriers on Cooper Strait. They're being straightened using the telehandler. Well, if you missed anything during that race, and uh, there was so much going on there, you may well have done. We'll have a look back at some highlights of that first truck race of the day. First to run wide through paddock, first of many, was Michael Oliver through the gravel. So you get onto that green painted tarmac, there's just, there's just no grip there whatsoever. You just send you sliding, sliding all over the place. Stephen Powell led all the way. And Michael Oliver did a bit more grass tracking, followed, quite literally, by John Newell. And Newell was involved in what could have been a major incident. He bounced off Tom O'Rourke into the barriers on the Cooper Strait, then back across the track. Somehow everybody missed him. Ryan Smith, by that stage, had already shredded his front bodywork. And then this big incident heading up Halewood Hill. Mark Taylor taken sideways in contact with Tom O'Rourke. He went smashing into the cab of Michael Oliver. Ryan Smith tried to pull up to avoid them. He had nowhere to go. Neither did David Jenkins went into the back of Smith and then Stuart Oliver tried to squeeze through on the inside, but Ryan Smith truck slid across in front of him. Taylor was first to go round. He smashed heavily into Michael Oliver. Ryan Smith, you see him trying to pull up. He doesn't know where, which side to go with trucks spinning in front of him. And David Jenkins wallop into the back of him and then another impact from Stuart Oliver. A scary incident there heading up Halewood Rise. Could have damaged the front of the uh, cab of Michael Oliver's truck. He went spinning around and around on the grass. Then everybody else just went piling in behind. Somehow Craig Reed got through there on the outside.
what I think we're seeing there is um, the truck of Ryan Smith is up on one winch on the Peterbilt and at the same time it's pulling John Newell out of the gravel versatile vehicle Mick, Mick Gould's big Peterbilt we have had the results confirmed of uh, that race race three of the weekend for the trucks it's just come through to us from the timekeepers we'll take you through the results Stephen Powell declared the winner after nine laps 0.6 of a second clear of Mark Taylor in second and the trucks that were not running when the red flag was thrown don't count in the results so Michael Oliver Ryan Smith Stuart Oliver and John Newell all non-finishers so Powell the winner ahead of Taylor David Jenkins third fourth was Tom O'Rourke Craig Reed fifth Ricky Collett in sixth seventh Simon Cole and eighth Bradley Smith 46 in division two the winner in ninth overall was Jock Borthwick Adam Bint was second uh, John Powell third fourth was Craig Evans Brad Smith only fifth sixth for John Bowler then Simon Fault on the final division one finisher and Luke Garrett after his off at Graham Hill Bend two laps down in seventh in division two right quick bit of mathematics what has that done to the points well of the contenders for second in the championship Stuart Oliver got one point because he got the fastest lap in division one David Jenkins third he gets 13 points no score for John Newell obviously no score for Ryan Smith that means that David Jenkins is back to second in the championship he's two points ahead of Stuart Oliver and ten points further back is John Newell but still uh, very much alive for second in division one but division two Brad Smith only fifth in division two he scores 11 points Luke Garrett got nine Jock Borthwick scored 15 because it was Adam Bintz who got the fastest lap in Division 2. So the points now. Luke Garrett leads Brad Smith with two races to go by two points. And all the Division 2 trucks uh, are still uh, pretty healthy. Luke Garrett, yes, he hit the tyre wall but continued in that... Um, race three so he's two points ahead of Brad Smith Jock Borthwick I don't think can now win the title because he was relying on Brad Smith and Luke Garrett not scoring yeah he's 41 points down in third place and there's only 32 points maximum available from two races so Jock Borthwick's championship challenge sadly is over six points behind him is John Powell and then Craig Evans so it's between Luke Garrett and Brad Smith for the Division 2 title over the next two races for the trucks. As the track continues to be cleared. Pickups will wait patiently on the grid. With Rhys Jones looking the favourite for the title. Local man from Hearn Bay in Kent. George Tariki second in the points but uh, I don't think he will stay there because he's absent this weekend. The grid reads like this. As we said, the top six fastest times reversed from qualifying. So it is Tom Hutchins, number 29, who takes his first ever pole position for the uh, pickup truck racing championship. Alongside him, number 93, former champion Michael Smith. Second row, number 65, Mark Willis and 83, Dale Gent. They're both in contention for the championship. Third row, number 30, Matt Simpson, the ex-British touring car racer, and 72, Alan Cooper, who was quickest in qualifying yesterday, got the 20 bonus points. The fourth row, number 40, the points leader, Rhys Jones, and number eight from Ireland, David O'Regan. Row five, father and son, Paul and Dean Tompkins in 12 and 21. Row six, number two, Jamie Liptrot, alongside 51, Gavin Pike. Row seven, number three, Jeff Simpson, father of Matt, and number 39, Danny Hunt. The 8th row, 37, good effort by Neil Tressler, lined up alongside 41 Aaron Thompson, it's Renault Clio racer among other things. Row 9 is Pat Keeley, number 56, recovered from a rollover at Snetterton earlier this year. And number 52 alongside him, good to see James Goldstraw back out. And the final truck on the grid should be number 13, Richard Ailing at the back. So they've got 19 pickup trucks out there. 
should have at least. I'm not sure Richard Ailing is there. I can't see his green truck at the back of the grid there, so he may be a non-starter. Just looking at how many laps uh, Richard Ailing did in qualifying yesterday. Yeah, he was out there in both sessions, so he may have had issues with the truck. Hopefully we'll see him out there at some point during the two races. This should be a 17-lap race, according to the timing screen. It's not done on uh, timing, this race. It is a 17-lap race. So it's number 29, Tom Hutchins. Began his racing career in saloon car events for the Honda Civic, who is on pole, alongside the former champion, number 93, Michael Smith, the man from the northeast. And our title contenders are all in the top seven places. The points leader, number 40, Rhys Jones, in the bright pink truck on row four. Another ex-saloon car racer here at Brands Hatch on his local circuit. He's 14 points ahead of George Tarricchi, who isn't out this weekend. Dale Gent is third in the points, but he's 95 points off the points lead. Number 83, Dale Earngent, as we now call him, because uh, races in the Dale Earnhardt tribute at uh, livery. And alongside him is the uh, one of the most experienced men on the grid, number 65, Mark Willis. Well, the trucks are moving off then. Fair play to our marshals and recovery teams. They've got the circuit cleared nice and quickly there. Gavin Pike requiring a push start in the number 51. Ironically, that truck sponsored by a recovery company, Crouch Recovery. I hope he doesn't need recovery here. Gavin Pike, the ex-two-litre hot rod racer on the short ovals. Most of these drivers are ex-short oval men. Up through the world of uh, the likes of hot rod racing, or in one or two cases, banger racing. Paul Tompkins, number 12, is an ex-world banger racing champion. There's a bit of a split in the field here because of Gavin Pike having to be pushed off the grid. So he could be down to 17 trucks. Has he got it going there? Wait to see if he comes in a Druids. No, he hasn't. So there he is. That's a shame. Gavin Pike, who I think put in his uh, best qualifying effort of the season there. Will uh, not take the start. It's due to line up in uh, 12th place. So it'll be a 17 lap race then. Tom Hutchins on pole. Michael Smith alongside him. Championship contenders on the second row and on the inside of row four. Is the pace car going to come in this time? No, it's not. So we'll do a couple of laps because uh, they qualified in drier conditions yesterday. And also to let this gap in the field catch up. Good to see Mark Willis and Jamie Liptrot both back out. They suffered fires on their trucks at Truxton in the summer. There's Matt Simpson on the inside of row three. Watch for him. He was quick in qualifying yesterday. Matt, uh, Alan Cooper, number 72, the ex-Brisker F2 racer. Snatch pole right at the end of the uh, first half of the session for race one. Letting the rest of the field catch up here. There's Neil Tressler we saw in the background, the number 37, the Leicestershire-based driver. The only team in pickups with an all-female pit crew, the Tressler family. The number three of Jeff Simpson I saw there. I think Jeff Simpson, not in the uh, family white uh, Simpson race exhaust colours there. I think he's in Roger Dormer's old truck, the yellow and red. OK, 17 laps will be the distance then. I think the lights have gone out atop the uh, pace car, so we'll be going racing this time. And the pickups always very spectacular and very, very close around Brands Hatch. This is going to be a cracker. Two races to decide the title. George Tariki has dominated over the last couple of seasons. Well, 2019-2021, the series wasn't held in 2020 because of the pandemic. But uh, it looks like we will see a new champion this year. Rhys Jones, the current points leader, seventh on the grid. Waiting for the lights to go out. Tom Hutchins in his first ever pole position. Michael Smith alongside as we go. Pick up truck racing here at Brands Hatch. Down towards the first corner. Dale Gents going for broke around the outside into Paddock Bend. But it is Tom Hutchins who will hold the lead on the inside ahead of Michael Smith. Watch for Gents up the outside using his uh, hot rod and lightning rod racing knowledge from the short ovals. There's a bit of contact on the inside between Hutchins and Smith. Smith had to lift off there. He's dropped back into the pack. He's under fire from Matt Simpson. Mark Willis has also got through. 
and Alan Cooper got hung out to dry around the outside there. Smith almost spins. Dale Gents going for the lead. He's just just the perfection around the first lap. Look at Dale Gents on the inside. Mark Willis sliding in third place, but Tom Hutchins has held his lead. 29 holds the lead, then it's three wide along the Cooper Strait. Is that wise in these conditions? Paul Tompkins on the outside, the number 12. Reese Jones was in the middle, Michael Smith in there as well. Paul Tompkins, the big winner out of that, is up into fifth place behind Matt Simpson, the ex-British touring car racer. David O'Regan battling it out with Alan Cooper, who goes sideways. Not Cooper, the quickest man in qualifying, but he's struggling so far in this one. Out in front it is Tom Hutchins from Dale Gents. Third is Mark Willis, then Simpson, Tompkins, Jones. Michael Smith has dropped back. Danny Hunt battling it out with Dean Tompkins, son of Paul in the 21. Himself an occasional banger racer. And Aaron Thompson up behind them. We saw him come close to the Brick Car Trophy title last season with his dad Steve in a Clio. Dale Gent to the inside into Druids. He's going for the lead in the black truck. Tom Hutchins on the wider line. Can he get the move done before Graham Hill Bend where Hutchins will be on the inside? I don't think he's quite going to do it. Hutchins will hold the tighter line there on the inside. Matt Simpson's up into third ahead of Mark Willis, but Gent leads. Gent got the move done just about there and has got the lead away. Great driving by Dale Gent in the 83. Don't forget it's 200 points for a race win. You get five bonus points for the fastest lap as well. Mark Willis and uh, Tom Hutchins bounce off each other. Hutchins down to fourth because Matt Simpson's come through into second. Willis is third. Next in the order is Paul Tompkins, then Reese Jones, Alan Cooper in the black and, green, black and green number 72. Across the stripe they go for the second time. Dale Gent trying to clear out in front. Here comes Tompkins on the inside. Tom Hutchins is going backwards. Polman drops another place. Cooper takes Jones. That's the last thing that Reese Jones wants. Looking for the title. Oh, the lead has gone wide. He's hit the gravel. He saved it. He keeps it going, Dale Gent. He could lose the lead to Matt Simpson. On his comeback in pickup racing this year, he has lost the lead. Matt Simpson has taken it up into Druids. It's all happening in his first of two races today for the pickup truck racing championships. Place swapping going on all the time. Tom Hutchins lost another place to Michael Smith, the man who started alongside him on the front row. They're about seventh and eighth now. That shows the uh, reverse grid has been flipped around almost. 41 is Aaron Thompson. It's only his second meeting in the pickups. Dale Gent, look how sideways he is through Surtees. Reese Jones sideways as well, and Michael Smith. They're sliding all over the place. Well, they slide around Brands Hatch at the best of times in the dry. As Mark Willis muscles his way into second place past Dale Gent. I can hardly keep up with this. 17 lap race. We've only done three so far. Matt Simpson leads. Took a uh, step back from racing over the last year or two to concentrate on his son's karting exploits. Now back behind the wheel of a pickup, and it's turning out beautifully for him here at Brands Hatch. Mark Willis, the veteran campaigner. Up there in second, ahead of Dale Gents. Fourth is Paul Tompkins, and it's Reese Jones, Alan Cooper. Behind them is Michael Smith. Then we've got Tom Hutchins, Aaron Thompson, and Dean Tompkins rounds out the top ten. Another place lost for the 29 of Hutchins, and Aaron Thompson comes through. Matt Simpson's done the fastest lap, 1 minute 3.596 last time through. He leads the race. Start to string out just a little around the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. Paul Tompkins wide through Surtees. Alan Cooper sliding his way around. Well, he was very proficient on shale tracks in his days in the Formula 2 stock cars as Dale Gent up on the outside there at Clearways trying to hold off Paul Tompkins. See how slippery it is, how the cars are squirrelling around there, the uh, trucks rather, as uh, Reese Jones tries to make a move on Paul Tompkins. He wants to make his way towards the front to try and... Hang on to his points lead. He took the points lead in qualifying. He's 14 ahead of George Tariki with the bonus points awarded to the top 10 in the qualifying sessions. He got uh, a total of 11 points from qualifying. No, check that. It was more than that. 22 points. My apologies. I said mathematics wasn't my strong point. Trying to close in on Paul Tompkins here in the number 12. Three drivers could still win the title. There's Mark Willis and Dale Gent. Willis in second place, Gent third. So Reese Jones needs to push here. Try and get past Paul Tompkins, get up with the podium runs. There's Aaron Thompson, the newcomer, going well. His dad Steve raced similar machines to this, raced in the uh, Eurocar series for space frame Ford Mondeo lookalikes. Built by the same man behind the pickups, Sonny Howard. 
very popular racing back in the late 1990s the Euro cars likes of Kevin Clark who we now see in the Brick Car Endurance the British Endurance Championship in his BMW about the great Barry Lee was a Euro car champion many more star names besides Steve Thompson was a Euro car regular even Mike Jordan of British touring car fame appeared in them Jeff Simpson of course made his graduation from the short ovals his son Matt's following him Matt now leads this race by 0.4 of a second fastest lap for Aaron Thompson in the 41 102.903 the first to dip below 63 seconds as Dale Gent side by side with Paul Tompkins trying to go around the outside at clearways he's already tried this once does it work I think it is going to work yes it does so there's grip there on the outside of clearways Reese Jones says I'll have a bit of this as well he nearly clips the back of Dale Gents behind them here come Cooper and Michael Smith starting to close up at the front of the field just a little now the lead gap is 0.4 of a second Matt Simpson ahead of Mark Willis Paul Tompkins up into third position it's Gents Ooh, Cooper got a whip there you see it again got a wheel onto the curve on the painted uh, tarmac there nearly spun it he's lost out to Michael Smith behind them is Aaron Thompson he's still got the fastest lap of the race behind them Dean Tompkins has got ahead of Tom Hutchins behind them it's Danny Hunt David O'Regan the Irishman has dropped down to 12th Jeff Simpson is 13th a couple of trucks have dropped out Gavin Pike of course didn't take the start and we've lost Jamie Liptrot number two as well he's pulled into the pits Cooper is sliding about all over the place in the 72 as Michael Smith moves up to have a go at the number 40 of Reese Jones it's alias Smith and Jones through clearways Smith nearly lost it They're on the edge of adhesion all the time here Aaron, Aaron Thompson could be the one to watch Cooper sideways on the straight look at that three wide down to Paddock Hill Bend something's got to give here surely Smith in the middle Thompson on the outside Cooper on the inside Thompson surely not going to go around the outside of both of them at Paddock Hill Bend no he hasn't thought better of it I think cut back towards the inside who's come out of that with the lead Smith leads this terrific battle Thompson up the inside on Cooper who I think is uh, really struggling with the handling now he loses out to Thompson and this is just uh, for the uh, minor placings this is for fourth fifth and sixth Matt Simpson's got the lead ahead of Mark Willis but Aaron Thompson in 41 is just driving past everybody here are the leaders Simpson ahead of Willis where's Paul Tompkins going I thought he was going off there into Surtees he's third it's Gent fourth Jones fifth and back Michael Smith over the curb there muscles past Aaron Thompson Thompson not looking too happy there because he's going to lose out to Cooper as well no he isn't Cooper sideways again Thompson retakes the place he's up alongside Smith again already Aaron Thompson's drive here is reminding me of Charlie Cox in his Ford Mondeo back in 1995 in the British Touring Cars when he got the best ever privateer finish of the time a fifth overall and then two weeks later at Thruxton had the biggest accident in British touring car history and completely destroyed the Mondeo Charlie Cox of course went on to become a popular commentator the Australian Reese Jones back ahead of Paul Tompkins again on the tail of Dale Gent this is the battle for third place Tompkins is struggling with his handling now we're on lap nine out of 17 so we're about halfway through this first pickup race of the day Matt Simpson still leads it new fastest lap though for Mark Willis he's close to within less than two tenths of a second now of our leader Gent and Jones third and fourth so all the top for all the championship contenders in the top four places now there's Michael Smith and the leaders are nose to tail coming over the line this battle may begin to break apart here with uh, Gent ahead of Jones they're third and fourth now yes they're starting to space out just a little what about our leaders here they are it laps one of the back markers there that will be at Neil Tressler I think as Matt Simpson continues to hold off Mark Wimps new fastest lap that time through for Matt Simpson 102.616 so he's responded to the pressure from Willis both of these two vastly experienced racers I remember seeing Matt Simpson back in the 1990s in the mini stocks for junior racers at Hensford Hills Raceway among others he went on uh, to race legends cars on the ovals before moving into the pickups and euro cars on the circuits race national hot rods as well with his dad Jeff 
then progressed on to the dizzy heights of the British Touring Car Championship in a Honda Civic. Spent a couple of years there. He's under real pressure from uh, the 65 of Willis now going towards Paddock Hill Bend. Meantime, Dale Gent is in third. And further back, Smith and Tompkins are side by side and they knock one of the back markers out of the way there. That's Neil Tressler bouncing down the grass. Digs up a nice big divot there. If it was a golf course, he'd be made to go and put that back. And that slowed Tressler up. I think he's got some damage to the underside of the truck as a result of that, sadly. Aaron Thompson still throwing his 41 truck around. Aaron Thompson a challenging Paul Tompkins. Gives him a nudge there coming out of Druids. And Thompson charging back up again after he was taken wide by uh, Michael Smith earlier on. Got Smith in his sights now. Tompkins onto the grass, almost on the outside there, loses out to Cooper. Dale Gent is very sideways into Surtees. Reese Jones could make a move here for a podium. And off goes Alan Cooper. Well, he's been sliding about all race long. He finally spins coming through Surtees. That's going to drop him down the order. What about the lead gap at the line? It was up to 0.6 of a second as they completed lap 11. Here comes our third place fight. It's a real fight now between Gents and Jones. Jones has got the inside line for Paddock Ben, but I don't think he's close enough to challenge. He has a look, but Dale Gent holds him up. They're coming up to lap James Goldstraw in the 52 truck. Given the blue flag by the marshals, he moves wide to let them through. Good driving, James Goldstrup. Lap 12 out of 17. New fastest lap for Michael Smith. 102.557. Reese Jones is on the rear bumper of Dale Jent's pickup. Here are the leaders. Simpson from Willis. Simpson's increased his lead just a little now. It's looking good for Matt Simpson. What I think will be his first win of his comeback season. Mike Willis, Mark Willis is sliding about there, the veteran from uh, just west of London. One of his local circuits there, quick uh, drive around the M25 to get to Brand. Somebody into pit lane. Is that Pat Keeley that's come in, the 56? I think it is, the grey liveried uh, truck there. One driver is on the move further back, he's Danny Hunt, number 39. He's just got past Paul Tompkins up into seventh. What about our third place battle? It's four of them now because Aaron Thompson has caught this erstwhile trio. Dale Gent holding off Reese Jones. Behind them is Michael Smith and Matt Simpson has done a new fastest lap, 102.505. Jones determined to get ahead of Dale Gent. This time he's got a run on him. Coming down the Cooper straight but no, Gent gets his boot down. Holds the lead towards Surtees. This is the slippery part of the circuit Gent runs towards the curb he turns it back though Rhys Jones all over him that bright pink number 40 the DLRD run truck Dave Longhurst race developments Dave Longhurst next pickup racer ex national hot rod world champion ex British touring car team manager it's his truck challenging Dale Gents here for third place Simpson leading by over two seconds now he's pulled away from Mark Willis so looks like Matt Simpson is heading for victory Michael Smith in the offshore fuels truck, man from County Durham in fifth position. And Aaron Thompson closing up behind them in the 41. Jones to the inside into Druids. Can he get the overlap this time? Dale Gent still working to hold him off. Thompson tries to cut ahead of Smith as well. Four of them absolutely together. This is terrific stuff. Jones trying to go around the outside of Graham Hill Bend. He's never going to get that done, surely. He's kept his foot in. Again, Gent is quicker in a straight line this is brilliant stuff still side by side Jones oh he almost got a run there through Surtees but Gent holding off he's driving the widest pickup truck in the country right now and as I say that he's sideways he's lost it round goes Dale Gents the pressure got to him there I think what a shame for Dale Gents and that's going to put a big dent well not in his truck but in his championship hopes Reese Jones is now third as they go into the 15th lap of the race Jones up to third, Smith is fourth, Aaron Thompson is fifth. Matt Simpson still with the fastest lap of the race, he leads by nearly three seconds. Mark Willis in second place, the championship is going to close up. In terms of Willis closing on Gent, that is, because Reese Jones is about to establish himself in a clear lead. 
searching around there as it comes down Graham Hill towards Graham Hill Bend and into the Cooper straight couple of laps to go after this one wait to see where Dale Gents has rejoined he's down in 11th place disaster for Dale there is Matt Simpson pulling away at the front of the field there's a yellow flag in sector one so somebody's had an off somewhere it was Pat Keeley incidentally number 56 that we've lost into the pits As the third place battle comes over look at Aaron Thompson sliding around and look who's coming up behind him Danny Hunt in the 39 he's running well New fastest lap for Danny Hearn, in fact. 102.366. That's a couple of tenths, I think, quicker than any, anything anybody else has managed. A late race charge here from Danny Hearn. Could he get on the podium? I think the truck we've lost in Sector 1 is Tom Hutchins, unfortunately. The number 29, I'm afraid. The uh, pole sitter in this race. He had slipped down the order to around 13th place talking of slipping down the order there's Paul Tompkins he's now in the clutches of his son Dean's truck he's going to try and go through for seventh place Jones third Smith in fourth sliding about there fifth behind them is Thompson then it's Hun as the leaders go over the line to start their final lap the gap has come down again 1.3 seconds at the line so uh, Mark Willis trying to fight back is he going to run out of time to catch Matt Simpson they're well ahead of everybody else the tune of nearly seven seconds another fastest lap for Danny Hunt 102.366 here's his quickest time so looks like he's going to get the five bonus points unless something changes on this final lap doubt it will because there's a yellow flag showing on the timing screen in sector one I can't quite see where it is though but the leaders come into Surtees for the final time Matt Simpson in the Simpson race exhausts number 30 it's comeback season in pickup racing holding off Mark Willis pretty much all the way he's coming in for victory up to the line they come the checkered flag is in sight it's a win for Matt Simpson in the number 30 Mark Willis comes over in second place that'll help his title hopes and Reese Jones will extend his lead in the championship with a third place Michael Smith is fourth Aaron Thompson holds off Danny Hun for fifth who's going to be seventh it's going to be Dean Tompkins number 21 Paul Tompkins in his poor handling number 12 will take eighth David O'Regan a quiet race for him he'll take ninth not quite catching Paul Tompkins there on the line rounding out the top 10 Alan Cooper recovering from his spin at McLaren where is Dale Gent after he spun 11th place that's where and there is a man who'll be a very proud dad when he finds out the result of this one Jeff Simpson father of Matt driving the ex Roger Dormer truck he'll take 12th place 13th it will be James Goldstraw a lap down 14th for Neil Tressler who I think he's still running after his excursion down the home straights Sadly, we lost Tom Hutchins, the pole sitter in that race. He went off. We lost Pat Keeley, Gavin Pike at the start, and Jamie Limtrot into the pits. Where's the provisional result then? Matt Simpson, the winner by half a second, with uh, Mark Willis closing in towards the end. Rhys Jones in third, and Michael Smith fourth, and uh, Aaron Thompson. Great drive by him, holding off the hard charging Danny Hun towards the end. The Tompkins family battle won by Dean ahead of Paul. David O'Regan and Alan Cooper completing the top 10. Alan recovering from a spin, as did Dale Gent. He'll be disappointed with 11th. Jeff Simpson, 12th. Now, final finishers James Goldstraw and Neil Tressler because we lost Hutchins, Keeley, Liptrot. Gavin Pike, of course, sadly didn't make the start. Well, we'll uh, do the maths and uh, work out the points from race one. Who got the bonus, the five bonus points for fastest lap? It was Danny Hunt, 102.325 on the final lap. So Danny Hun, not a championship contender, will take five points for the fastest lap. And we will work out the rest of the points. So, so meantime, a few highlights of our pickup race. There was an early spin for Pat Keeley in the 56. 
He sadly failed to uh, make the finish of that uh, first pickup race of the day. We ended up uh, losing him into the pits. Dale Gent held the early advantage but ran wide into the gravel, allowing Matt Simpson to close up and take the lead into Druids. That was the defining moment for Matt. Very busy battling further back in the pack. I think everybody had a sideways moment during that race. Some more sideways than most. Lucky escape for Michael Smith and Aaron Thompson. They did a bit of rubbing through Surtees. Lucky not to go over the grass on the inside. Neil Tresler was uh, rather unceremoniously elbowed out of the way by Paul Tompkins and ended up digging up to the grass down the home straight. I don't think it was intentional by Paul. I think he just slid wide across the straight. That led to Neil Tresler finishing a lap down at the back of the field. But the disastrous moment for Dale Gents saw him spin coming through uh, clear ways. Likewise, Alan Cooper at Surtees. He'd been sliding about throughout the race and eventually the truck came around on him. Dale Gent while battling with Rhys Jones I don't think there was any contact there I think the pressure just got to Dale Gent as he tried to hold third place round he went ending up in 11th it was Matt Simpson who held off Mark Willis to the line now what about the points from that race we'll wait for the official results to come through because the timing screen has already gone blank unfortunately so uh, we'll give you the point standings a little uh, later on once I've uh, been able to work them out. But thanks and well done to the pickup truck racers. We're now going to uh, head into our lunch break here at uh, Brands. Actually, we're going to have a short break anyway, not the uh, official lunch break as yet, because we've got uh, a little bit of a break in the action. So, in the meantime, we will show you some of the action from uh, yesterday here at Brands Hatch and a taster of what we're going to see next. This is the Mini 7 Racing Club Winter Championship. They had two races yesterday. They've got another one coming up a little later on. Here's a taster of what you can expect in the race coming up. Subsequently, we'll see some of the action from the Mini 7 Racing Club from yesterday. Marshalls get them into line again. Now, the grid's a little bit out of line, I think, there. Yeah, Nick Paddy in the grey car should be next to Joe Ferguson. Yep, that's correct, Nick. The rest of them now move forward. Gordon Sims into line. There's an empty space next to where he is, where Conor O'Brien should be. problem was for Connor maybe some water got into the electrics or something everybody in position then ready for what will now be an 18 minute race for the mini 7 racing club winter championship supported by Dunlop tyres and mini spares we are underway and a good start by Jeff Smith he goes into the lead good start by Rupert Deeth coming up on the outside is Colin Peacock not the best of starts by Scott Kendall the first four together as they go into Paddock Bend for the first time. It is Jeff Smith who leads the way. Rupert Deeth is through into second place. Peacock staying out wide in the number 14 the red car. Joe Ferguson is there on the inside. Five Miglias together into that first corner. The sevens will be underway as well. Further back, here they are. It is Jordan Sims who leads. Michael Winkworth's come through into second place in the first of the scholarship cars. Darren Thomas in third place in the number two. Rays of headlights as they head up into Druids, there's somebody off there, oh Torben Astin's hit trouble again in the 36, he's come to a halt again, problems from earlier on recurring I think, everybody else has got round Druids, okay, Dave Rees at the back in the 777, here are the Miglia leaders, if we could attract this one with two races in one, right is on for third place, Joe Ferguson up the inside, Colin Peacock always takes the wide line there at clearways, but he could lose out to Joe Ferguson, he keeps his foot in, just about holds the place at the moment behind Scott Kendall, but it's Smith who leads, Deep in second place. Here comes Colin Peacock, going to go for the outside into Paddock. That's a brave move from the veteran. Side by side, up on the high line is Peacock. Scott Kendall defending the inside, but there's yellow flags there. Peacock will get the move done, though, brilliantly before they hit the yellow flag zone for the stranded car of Torben Astin. Comes from a mini racing family, Kane Astin has been a regular winner with the club over the years. 
So we've seen Damon Astin find success as well. Torben, the latest generation, he's a former junior saloon car racer. There's Andy Shaw in the lone Libra class car and he's being caught by the sevens. Meanwhile, here comes Michael Winkworth has a look at the inside of Jordan Sims, number 21, looking for what I think will be his first Mini 7 victory. To continue his family tradition, leads the way. And look, Fraser Hack already from the back of the grid is up into third place in the 7 division. And catching Andy Shaw, the lone Mini Libra class car. And he's, I think he pretty much lets them through there, coming through Graham Hill Bend. He's the only Libra class car out there with Phil Harvey having had problems in qualifying, I think. Michael Winkworth is surely going to attack here to try and go past Jordan Sims as they make their way through 30s. Oh, and sideways there, that was uh, Darren Thomas. And Fraser Hack goes through, so does Winkworth. It was Darren Thomas who was up there, not Jordan Sims, sorry. So it was Darren Thomas that had come through to the front. They're identical, those two cars, the uh, green cars with the white flash down the side. So it was Thomas who was up there in front, but not anymore. Here are the leaders overall in the media class. Deep chasing Jeff Smith for the overall lead. Third place is now Joe Ferguson. He's got ahead of Scott Kendall. Colin Peacock has dropped back to fifth place. Then behind them is Mark Sims in the other green car, the number 20. Ferguson goes wide. Kendall goes sideways. And Jeff Smith goes on in the lead. Can Rupert Deep catch him in the Swift Tune sponsored cars? Of course, uh, Nick Swift, one of Britain's most famous mini racers and tuners. He can drive a mini so sideways, it almost looks like it's going backwards sometimes. Nick Paddy is seventh, Darren Cox eighth. Then we've got to get back to the seventh battle. There's Gareth Baldwin, though, in ninth place, number 22. Darren Mason still going in the 47. Here are the sevens, Ryan Taylor. Now, he said he's an ex-national mini stocks racer. Chasing Darren Thomas, number two. We don't want any uh, contact in this one, though. Darren Thomas has taken some contact. Look at the passenger door. That's been pushed in. And in behind them is one of the Page family. I think that's Giles Page, number 704. They've raced classic minis for a number of years. We hope to have three of them out here this weekend, but Andy Page unable to race. Giles goes to the outside. It's the battle for 13th place overall, I think looking down the timing, 13th overall, it's Fraser Hack who leads the sevens in 11th overall. Darren Thomas still leads the regular seven category, that's the green car, the rest of the scholarship drivers. Gordon Sims in there behind, which has been taken by Matthew Ayres in the grey number 758, Jeff Williams behind them. Brilliant battling from the mini sevens here. Apologies for mixing up Jordan Sims and Darren Thomas earlier on, you can see their cars, except for the grills, are identical. and slide their way around Brands Hatch. Just over 13 minutes of this race to go. Jeff Smith continues to leave. Ryan Taylor out wide. He's on the kerb. Just about saves it. Four six. That's Ollie Handley trying to catch this group. Just keeping it nice and steady. Side by side further ahead. That's Darren Thomas making a move on uh, Matthew Ayres. He's got back ahead. Chasing now Giles Page. The leaders are coming up to lap this group. Here they come. Jeff Smith, Rupert Deep, Ferguson, Scott Kendall in fourth place. Already lapped a few runners. It was Mal Dickinson and uh, Stephen Rydown. They've just lapped there. Ollie Handley now goes a lap down. Wiper flailing away on uh, Rupert Deep's car as he tries to chase our leader. The lead gap was 0.8 of a second last time through between Jeff Smith and Rupert Deep. Joe Ferguson in that... Uh, very bright pink car is up there in third. They like Jeff Williams now in the 766 and Jordan Sims. Blue flag wave from the marshals. That's to tell the uh, cars being lapped that there are quicker cars coming up behind them. And just to be mindful of that, give them racing room. This has closed the three leaders up, you can see there. Dealing with these back markers, they've got to pick their lines. Oh, that was close. Giles Page didn't see Jeff Smith there. Jeff Smith shaking his fist at Giles Page as he goes through to lap him there. He's not happy. Back marker just didn't see him there as they came through Clark Curve, and that's allowed Rupert Deep right up onto the tail of Jeff Smith now. Jeff does not want to lose his concentration here. 
because he knows the other two are upon him. Deep and Ferguson. Scott Kendall's not far away either as they lap Ryan Taylor. Through Druids. There's another Mini 7 S-Class car ahead waiting to be lapped there. They've got to pick their moment. It's the number 704 car. That's another of the Page family. They go through. That is Giles Page. It was Jonathan Page, the other one further back. 11 minutes of the race still to go, so we're not even at halfway yet. Here comes Rupert D. He and Joe Ferguson are ready to attack. Can they put the pressure on Jeff Smith and force him into a mistake? Look at Ferguson around the outside in the 34. He's understeering wide. That's not going to work. He could fall prey to Kendall here as well. Four of them going at it for the lead of the Mila Melias, the Mini Melias. Side by side for second place. Almost there over the line. Further back still leading the sevens. Fraser Hack leads 7S. Class 7 is led by Darren Thomas. Now it's really heating up for the overall lead. They're struggling to deal with these back markers. Oh, Joe Ferguson goes too wide there, puts a wheel on the dirt. He could lose third place to Scott Kendall. Side by side, Ferguson moves to cover. Kendall says, excuse me, I'm taking this place away. They come down the hill and, oh, they've touched. The Fraser Hack was in the way there. Off goes Scott Kendall. Kendall over the grass. Well, I mentioned Rallycross and uh, Autograss in the past. <laughs> Plenty of minis found success there, but this is not Rallycross here at Brands Hatch. Scott Kendall drops down the order a little. See where he comes back in at the end of this lap. Jeff Smith under all sorts of pressure from Rupert Deep now. Ferguson still third. Well, Scott Kendall uh, was trying to defend there from Joe Ferguson to try and take third place, but they came up on the slower car of Fraser Hack and uh, he had no choice but to run wide. They just ran out of space there into Graham Hill Bend. Lead gap is 0.3 of a second over the line, nose to tail, and now Rupert Deep really on the attack. Here's a quick replay, we'll see here, there's Fraser Hack. He just had nowhere to go because Rupert Deep was already alongside him. The two cars touch as they come up behind. There's nothing they could do there too. It was either plow into the back of Fraser Hack or touch each other. And off went Scott Kendall. Here are your leaders down into Graham Hill Bend now. Ferguson's closing back up as well. Slow car there, that's Darren Mason, they've just lapped. He almost came to a dead stop on Cooper Strait. There's three of them now for the lead, this is great stuff. Proper Mini Melia racing. They've got used to the conditions now after struggling a bit this morning. As I say that, Deeth makes a mistake, he gets sideways. And Joe Ferguson goes around the outside in the second place. Fantastic bit of driving there to avoid him there by Joe Ferguson. Possibly the reason I've noticed that Jeff Smith may be coming under a bit of pressure here and may not quite be as quick as those behind him. You'll notice his windscreen wiper isn't working. You see it there. Deep back up the inside. He's going to try and retake second place. Somebody's pulled into the pits. That's Darren Mason, the 47. He's out of it. As Ferguson slides round Druids, loses second. Jeff Smith's been able to get clear as a result of those two battling. But now Rupert Deep is going to chase him down again. Jeff Smith from Northamptonshire. Number 23, Rupert Deeth from Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire. And Smith sideways there into Surtees. Just about gathers it up again, but he's losing time again. Rupert Deeth now sideways and he's lost it. Deeth spins around. Disaster for Rupert Deeth. Full 360. He rejoins. He's still in third place. But he's got it all to do again. He's got seven and a half minutes to try and catch the leader again. Joe Ferguson now into second place from Dunbo in Essex. Regular classic mini racer has come through the junior saloon car ranks. Regularly races with the likes of Tom Bell and Phil Bull and Brown. Andy Shaw being lapped there for a second time. We'll see what happened to Rupert Deep. Yep, just a little bit too quick there trying to attack Jeff Smith after he'd made his own mistake. Round went Rupert Deep. Full 360, straight back in the action, but down to third place. So, Jeff Smith, clear in the lead there, looking for win number two of the day. Leads Joe Ferguson. Here's the battle between Michael Winkworth and the recovering Fraser Hack, who is back up. This is for the lead in Class 7S. We haven't forgotten the sevens, there's just been so much going on among the Melias. So they lap Tina Cooper there. And look, Ferguson is back up with Smith again. You can't keep Joe Ferguson down. Six and a half minutes of this still to go. So in 7S, it's between Winkworth and Fraser Hack. 
recovered after nearly being poleaxed by a couple of Migliers going into Graham Hill Bend. What about Class 7? The regular 7s. They're being led by Darren Thomas ahead of Jordan Sims, and they're close on the track as well. They're only around half a second apart, I think. These two are less than that apart. With Joe Ferguson. Joe Ferguson's car seems to be slightly stronger in the turns than Jeff Smith. This is the battle for the seven class. So all the classes have got two-way battles for the lead. Darren Thomas against young Jordan Sims. Two identical green machines. Michael Winkworth and uh, Fraser Hack in the S class. And this battle in the Miglians. Somebody on the grass there. That's Ryan Taylor in the foreground, I just noticed. As Joe Ferguson tries to make it up. No, it's not Ryan Taylor. It's Gareth Baldwin, the other orange car. I keep confusing these minutes. Need some slightly different paint jobs. I jest, of course. Well, these two are exactly identical, as we mentioned earlier. Gordon Sims trying to take Darren Thomas for the lead of the seven category. Lead gaps opened out just a little in the Miglias now. They're lapping these cars for the second time. Jeff Williams there, the 766 car from Consett in County Durham. Ferguson charges past him. Trying to charge after Jeff Smith and take the lead. Through Surtees into McLaren. This is where Rupert Dietz spun earlier on. He's still in third place, but he's about uh, 1.8 seconds further back. They come up to lap the seven battle. They've got the blue flags to show toward them. But the leader is coming up on them. Over the line. Jeff Smith powers past Jordan Sims. Goes past Darren Thomas. And there's Rupert Deeth. He's closing back up again. Yep, he took just over half a second out of Joe Ferguson on that last lap. But he's not done yet. Rupert Deeth, this year's Mini Miglia champion. That's the seven battle. See how much quicker the Miglias are. What about the seven scholarship battle? Winkworth still ahead of Hack in that one, with third place Giles Page. Three and a half minutes to go in this. Uh, Second race of the day for the uh, mini winter challenge. Scott Kendall still going down in fifth place. He was uh, a bit sideways through there. This is the battle in the scholarship class. Michael Winkworth and Fraser Hack. They're coming up to lap Dave Rees in the triple seven. Three retirements so far. Corbin Astin on lap one. Connor O'Brien didn't take the start, and we've lost Darren Mason into the pits. Bears moves out the way, lets the leader lap it. Ryan Taylor will be next to be lapped. Joe Ferguson is determined to catch Jeff Smith. Can he do it? Can Fraser Hack get past Michael Winkworth? Over the line they go. That's this lap of the race recorded by Jeff Smith. One minute, one point. 0.45. One car heading back to the paddock. I notice that's Darren Mason already out of the race. Here's the battle in the sevens. They're lapping the 748 car. That's Mal Dickinson. Oh, and Jordan Sims, they're both sideways. Look at that. Synchronized sliding from the two green minis. Like Remy Julien's display team doing their Italian job stunts there. Not exactly a self-preservation society, is it? But speaking of three minis together, Rupert Dietz caught the leaders. Look at this. What a fight back. Showing why he is the champion. He's got the lights on. He's saying to Joe Ferguson and Jeff Smith, you'd forgotten about me, hadn't you? Meanwhile, Fraser Hack trying to make a move on Michael Winkworth at Clearways, but it doesn't work. Slides sideways. Winkworth sets off and continues in the lead. And here's the uh, overall lead battle into Clearways. Deeth up the inside. He's going to take Joe Ferguson for second place. There's 90 seconds on the clock. 
They should get two more laps out of this, I think. And Dietz through into second place. Is he going to win this, having spun just a few laps ago? What a recovery by Rupert, by Rupert Dietz. He's just on the fastest lap of the race. 1 minute 0 0.412. And he's going for Jeff Smith. Here comes Rupert Dietz. Up here would rise. Dave Rees sees them behind him, gets out of the way. Dietz all over Smith. Where did you come from, said Jeff Smith. I thought you'd spun off. Dietz sideways again. He's throwing that car around like he's in a rally car. That's how Paddy Hopkirk would have driven a Mini. The great uh, 60s rally driver sadly passed away earlier this year. He'd be loving this. Here comes Rupert Dietz. You can see he's quicker. He's going for Jeff Smith, who holds the line into the left at Surtees. He'll move to cover the line into clearways, the right-hander. This is fantastic stuff. What a recovery by Rupert Deep. 30 seconds on the clock. He's sideways again. So is Joe Ferguson. This is amazing. This is how likes of John Love and Sir John Whitmore would have raced their minis in the British Saloon Car Championship in the 60s. Excuse me, Tina Cooper, says Jeff Smith. Into the last lap they go. And that's uh, Joe Ferguson's dropped back a bit there. I think he just briefly got uh, caught behind the back marker. Maybe he's just taking a grandstand seat for if these two go sliding off, he can capitalise and take the win. Dietz going for the outside into Druids. He's never going to get through there. Oh, Smith sideways. Look out, Fraser Hack. They've touched him. Bodywork flies. Somehow they've all survived that. And Smith's still in the lead. I don't know how. Fraser Hack needs to move aside here and let them through. He's already nearly been taken out by the Miglias once. They lap him. What's Rupert Dietz going to do? Are we going to see a last pen lunge? What a cracking race. Through to Surtees, Smith, Deep, Ferguson, Michael Wickman's trying to get out of the way. Just enough room through there. Here they come then, through clearways for the final time. Michael Wickman didn't know where to go. There's a car in the gravel on the outside, so no overtaking there. It was Gareth Baldwin, but up towards the line. Here they come. I don't think Rupert Deep's going to do it. It's going to be a second win of the day for Jeff Smith. What a fantastic race. Second place goes to Rupert Deep. Joe Ferguson is third. Michael Winkworth wins the 7S class, a lap down in ninth. It was Gareth Baldwin who'd uh, gone into the gravel there at Clearways. That's the, the uh, yellow flags were out there, so we didn't get uh, any daring lunges into Clearways for the last time. Thumbs up between Jeff Smith and Rupert Deep. That's an amazing recovery by Rupert Deep after he spun with just a few laps to go down at Clearways. And fought back and almost caught Jeff Smith. There were less than four tenths of a second in it at the line. Meantime, the battle in the seven still going on between the two green machines. Darren Thomas and Jordan Sims. I don't think Jordan's going to get there. These two have just slid round for the whole of the race. They've been slithering sideways. And it's going to be Darren Thomas who wins the seven category. Hello and welcome back to live action here at Brandsatch. Coming up next, it is our minis uh, in the multiple class minis. It's a winter challenge trophy in the mini sevens, which means you get to see loads of them. And you know, I know there's lots of truck racing fans today and they are headlining. However, the minis are fantastic and the old ones are the best. Now I'm going to speak to yesterday's double winner, Jeff Smith, in the baby pink mini. Uh, perfect day yesterday, Jeff. Can we expect more of the same today? Uh, almost perfect. I didn't get past his lap in the oh. second race. So, but believe it or not, that could actually mean I'd lose the winter championship to oh Rupert. Wow. So one point. <laughs> and uh, reverse grid today, so you've got a bit of work to do. Yeah, and it looks like really, really greasy conditions out there at the minute. You, you've recognised it's been wet today, yeah? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was pouring down, to be honest. It's, when it goes through this transition of going towards dry, yeah. it just goes really greasy. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not, not great following the trucks either, but um, it, it's, I've got to say, it's better than it has been. What have you been doing this morning whilst it's been absolutely chucking it down? Drinking coffee, to be honest with you. <laughs> Best way forward. Chilling. Um, this is the conclusion of your championship. Of course, how good would it be to finish it with a trio of wins? It would be incredible, surely. Oh, it'd be magic, wouldn't it? In a, um, I borrowed the, the shell off um, my girlfriend, so that'd be really good if I could go and, go and have three wins, wouldn't it? Well, absolutely best of luck, mate. All righty, thank you. And uh, I'd love to speak to Rupert Deeth, but that is the whistle behind us. I'm going to close the door there. So let's have a little quick spin around. I don't want to get run over. Jesus! Right hand side, and you'll watch the order. So 
Park Ferme. On the gates behind is where they qualify for this race. So they go one, two, three, four, five, six. 34, that's Joe Ferguson, had a fifth place and a third place yesterday. A third and a second for Rupert Deeth. Two wins for the number 46, Jeff Smith, and the rest of the field behind. So great place to be in Park Ferme, but as you've just seen, uh, rather dangerous, or can be. But uh, plenty of minis to go out. Dave Collard is going to bring you through the entire lineup as we watch them leave and uh, enjoy the next 15 minutes with Dave. Yes, uh, thanks very much, Ewan. We'll let you re recover your equilibrium. I thought the fireworks had started off going off early there for a second. We're certainly going to see some fireworks here, though, from the Mini 7 Racing Club. You normally see the Miglia and the 7 categories, the uh, more powerful Miglias and the uh, slightly less powerful, but no less spectacular 7s on the same, on the separate grids, rather, but they're on the same grid this weekend for the uh, Winter Championship. This uh, grid based on the results of race two yesterday, the race we've just seen from our recording yesterday, but with the top eight finishers in each uh, division reverse. So it's Nick Paddy, number 86, who will take pole alongside 66, Darren Cox. Mark Sims and Colin Peacock, 20 and 14 on row two. The third row, 78, Scott Kendall, and number 34 of Joe Ferguson. And then Rupert Deeth and Jeff Smith. Jeff on a hat-trick, racing girlfriend Joe Polly's car. He and Rupert Deeth, the winter championship contenders, as we heard. Fifth row, Gareth Baldwin alongside Darren Mason. He's had two non-finishes so far this weekend. Likewise, Torben Astin, number 36, couldn't get the uh, 36 car to run properly yesterday. 272, Andy Shaw, meanwhile, is our lone Mini Libra category car, similar to the Miglias, but with uh, slightly different engine rules. Then there's a gap. Starting 10 seconds back, we will have the sevens. Tina Cooper is on pole position alongside Jordan Sims. I believe he's uh, son of Mark. Then we've got number two, Darren Thomas. He won the sevens division yesterday because Conor O'Brien, number 87, failed to start the second race. He won the first one. He's the mini sevens uh, summer champion this year, the main championship winner. Then we've got the uh, mini seven S class, the scholarship class. Ollie Handley starts alongside Jeff Williams. Matthew Ayres and Ryan Taylor on their second row. Then we've got the Page family, Jonathan and Giles. Fraser Hack alongside yesterday's double winner, Michael Winkworth. And Stephen Rideout and Dave Rees. Mal Dickinson will start from the back of the grid. It'll be a 20-minute race for the Mini 7 Racing Club. And whether it's uh, wet or dry, these cars incredibly spectacular. The Mini 7 Racing Club dates back to 1966, one of the UK's longest running one make racing championships, only a few years after the Mini was launched in uh, 1959. Quick look at our fun fair there, and uh, there's a few uh, exhibits for truck fans in uh, with our fun fair. You'll notice the older trucks that tow the fair, fairground rides around. They tend to use fairly classic trucks. The minis are on the grid then. We've got a gap on row two. Who's missing? It's Mark Sims, number 20, unfortunately, is not there. Also, Darren Mason, we said he'd had some uh, mechanical problems yesterday, so he's a non-starter as well. The two cars to watch then. Number 23, Rupert Deeth, the silver car with the orange wheel arches. This year's Mini Miglia main series champion. Beat Aaron Smith by just a couple of points. And Jeff Smith driving the uh, number 46, the salmon pink car two wins for him yesterday the ex-British touring car racer in the sevens class just waiting to see if Connor O'Brien is back out there yes I think he is wait and confirm that as they come through uh, Druids here it's Nick Paddy on pole alongside Darren Cox Darren a long time mini racer Scott Kendall had a couple of offs yesterday while well placed unfortunately so looking for better form here as the sevens pack comes down towards Graham Hill Bend. We'll see if uh, Connor O'Brien's there. His car got pushed off the grid before the start of the second race yesterday. Joe Ferguson, the pink number 34 car. He could be a contender here. Only one way he knows how to race, and that's sideways. Torben Astin's back out, the 36. Now the sevens. There's Tina Cooper. She's there. Connor O'Brien's there. Oh, but uh, 
It looks like Jordan Sims and Darren Thomas aren't. The two green cars. We saw them battling fiercely yesterday. That's a shame. So just Connor O'Brien and Tina Cooper from the main Mini 7 class then. And uh, then the scholarship cars behind. Michael Winkworth on a hat trick in those. There's the 728 car. 748 Mal Dickinson at the back. Not sure if Fraser Hack was there either. The yellow car. So it's a slightly depleted grid for the uh, Mini Winter Championship, sadly. Nick Paddy in the grey. Number 86 on pole. The 66 of Darren Cox alongside him. Colin Peacock on his own on the second row. Row 3, Scott Kendall and uh, Joe Ferguson. Then uh, Rupert Deeth and Jeff Smith. They'll be the cars to watch. Gareth Baldwin on his own on row 5. No Darren Mason. Torben Aston hoping to get some laps in this time. Didn't complete a lap due to mechanical problems yesterday. Last few of the sevens coming into line at the back. Ah, Fraser Hack is there. Alongside Michael Winkworth, the head of Stephen Rideout, Dave Rees, Mal Dickinson at the back of the grid. Twenty minutes of racing about to get underway then. Here we go. Mini 7 Racing Club's intrepid drivers. Look at Jeff Smith trying to get through the middle. He finds his progress checked by Joe Ferguson. Colin Peacock very slow away in the number 14 car. Now who's got the lead? Scott Kendall's got away. Well, it's Darren Cox who leads as they head through Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Very slow start by uh, Colin Peacock. He's been left behind by the rest of the field in the number 14. Waiting for the sevens to get underway. Now Cox leads from Kendall. Rupert Dietz already come through into third place in the number 23. Andy Shaw, the lone uh, mini Libra runner, as the uh, Miglia's head down the hill into Graham Hill Bend. It's Cox from Deeth, Kendall Ferguson, Nick Paddy is back to fifth from pole position, and Jeff Smith found his way uh, impeded on the run into Paddock for the first time. He's down in sixth. And, whoa, very sideways there. Look at Darren Cox. He's all over the place. Goodness me. That wasn't Darren Cox. That was Paddy Hopkirk, rally style, at the wheel of uh, the mini. Great 60s rally driver. 23, uh, Rupert Deeth takes up the lead ahead of Kendall. Joe Ferguson in third place will pick up the sevens in a moment. They're coming uh, through the end of the lap at the moment. Rupert Deeth leads it then. Joe Ferguson going for second. Aaron Cox is down to about fifth place as a result of that moment at uh, the entry to clearways. Colin Peacock up to speed. He's got ahead of Gareth Baldwin in the number 22 car. Who's leading the Mini 7 group? Ferguson having a go around the outside to try to take second from Scott Kendall and he's done it coming out of clear ways here come the seven pack who's leading the mini sevens there's Andy Shaw the lone mini lead runner looks like it is Connor O'Brien but he's sideways there into Surtees Fraser Hack side by side with one of the Page family that's the 706 of Jonathan Page Hack holding second Fraser Hack that means is leading the scholarship class for the uh, cars with the 700 series numbers where's Tina Cooper got to in the number 18 I didn't see her come through and there's Connor O'Brien missed the second race yesterday with some problems he got pushed off the grid the mini seven champion this year beat Mike Jordan no less very versatile racer to the title so Rupert Deeth your overall leader ahead of Joe Ferguson who's just done the fastest lap of the race yes Tina Cooper is in among the Scholarship class cars stumped somewhere with her white uh, Herbie the Love Boat lookalike livery machine. A couple of cars run wide in among the seven pack. Now they are in different classes these two, but there's bragging rights at stake in the sevens. And Fraser Hack takes the lead of the seven uh, split, if you like. He's a scholarship runner though. So Connor O'Brien still leading the main seven class. Your overall leader still Rupert Deeth ahead of Joe Ferguson Scott Kendall but Jeff Smith in fourth place has done the fastest lap of the race so Jonathan Page 706 is second of the scholarship runners 
He's got Matthew Ayres behind him, then Jeff Williams running well. There are the leaders. Rupert Deeth leads the way. Jeff Smith attacking for third position. He's having a good go at Scott Kendall here, the ex-Mighty Minis race winner. Series for the newer Rover Minis from the 90s. This is letting Joe Ferguson get away in second, and more importantly, letting Rupert Deeth get away in the lead. If Deeth wins this, with Smith stuck down in fourth place, I think he will win the Winter Championship. It doesn't just apply to Brand Hatch this weekend, it's a uh, applies to the last couple of rounds of the regular championship as well as Smith up the inside into Paddock he takes Scott Kendall uh, coming up to lap I think that's Tina Cooper possibly either side of the uh, mini there no it's not Tina it's Mal Dickinson sorry the 748 going a lap down Jeff Smith has gone ahead of Kendall now having a go at Joe Ferguson three of them together for third but of course the harder they fight each other the easier it is for Rupert Deeth to get away here are the sevens They've got Andy Shaw. Oh, and Jonathan Page has hit the back of Andy Shaw. Nearly lose it. Good save, Jonathan Page. See how sideways he was there. That's how you quarter a mini, some would say. That's let Fraser Hack get away at the front of the seven split in his scholarship car. Now there's Michael Winkworth coming up on uh, Page. Is that Connor O'Brien behind him? Yes, O'Brien's dropped back. I hope his problems aren't returning from yesterday. Behind them, Ryan Taylor in the orange car, then Jeff Williams. Sliding about there is Matthew Ayres. He's second behind Fraser Hack. Here's Winkworth. Going for win number three in the scholarship division this weekend. Connor O'Brien going for win number two in the sevens. Darren Thomas and um, Jordan Sims having not started. Oh. And uh, Jonathan Page losing a headlight there. Look, hanging off the side of the car. Still working. Still uh, hanging on to it. Oh, Andy Shaw stopped at the entry to Druids. Now, that will probably be a safety car because he's on the track there. Andy Shaw, the only Mini Libra class runner. There's one other car into, but Phil Harvey broke down in qualifying yesterday. Black Marcus trying to get out of the way, and Joe Ferguson's right up with Rupert Deep, and here comes Jeff Smith. So battle is going to be joined, but the safety car is coming out. So the safety car is coming out for Andy Shaw's car stranded on Halewood Hill. Yellow flags waving, the safety car boards are out, so Jeff so Rupert Deeth will slow the field down. They're already well into the seventh, they we're coming up to lap Connor O'Brien. He's in 13th overall. There is the reason for the safety car being scrambled. The lone Mini Libra class runner, Andy Shaw, has come to a halt. It is Rupert Deeth who leads the way in uh, number 23, the man from Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire. Won his second Mini Media title this year. Just beat Aaron Smith, who's not uh, in the Winter Championship. Joe Ferguson second. We've seen him race in the Masters pre-66 minis as well as historic touring cars with his mini sharing with Tom Bell among others Jonathan Page has lost that headlight well the championship is supported by mini spares so we'll contact mini spares for another one there are your leaders and there's Jeff Smith this is going to help him in the salmon pink number 46 Scott Kendall fourth Darren Cox is still fifth overall after his uh, moment earlier on. Colin Peacock, after his slow start, is back up to sixth. It's Nick Paddy, seventh. Torben Astin, the ex-junior saloon car racer, going well in eighth place. It's uh, rectified his problem from yesterday. One car in the pit lane there. That's Gareth Baldwin out of the race, sadly. The bonnet off the 22 car. Just those two cars, we've lost Baldwin and uh, Shaw. The uh, trackside recovery Ford Ranger is going to give Andy Shaw a tow. Good if he didn't go into the gravel, else Shaw would be beached, wouldn't he? Fraser Hack still leads the... Uh, 7S class Connor O'Brien the regular Mini 7 division their champion this year seen Mike Jordan 
take the fight to him but mechanical problems in the final round at Silverstone lost him the title seen Andrew Jordan his son in the Mini Miglia the ex-British touring car champion over the course of this year sadly not out this weekend I think they're racing elsewhere and Rupert Deeth and Jeff Smith's hope of a hat-trick there's Tina Cooper the number 18 in the Herbie colours she's raced with this club for many years as have many of these drivers the Mini 7 Racing Club looks like we're going to have one more lap behind the safety car Blake Edwards at the wheel Ah, looks like Gareth Baldwin's going back out. I can see his car moving down the pit lane. He's lost about four laps in the pits. Yep, safety car in this lap, that is confirmed. I was weaving to keep their Dunlop tyres warm. Dunlop, the tyre partner of the Mini 7 Racing Club. a lot of lap traffic you can see between fourth and fifth places Darren Cox in uh, I think the end gets uh, Endaf Owens car the flying Welshman very successful mini racer over the years Endaf keeps a lot of these cars running through his welding and fabrication business as well in Wales OK, about to be unleashed. There'll be about nine minutes of racing to go. Rupert Deeth in the Swift Tune prepared car. Swift Tune run by mini racing legend Nick Swift. You can throw a mini around a circuit like no other. A shame we haven't got Nick out in uh, one of the Miglias here, actually. Safety car has pulled off, and here we go with the restart. And a great restart by Joe Ferguson. Right up behind Rupert Deeth, they've dropped Jeff Smith. Smith uh, perhaps caught napping slightly on that restart as Joe Ferguson is ready to attack the lead with Smith, using the uh, space there to pull straight back up to the two leaders. Ferguson to the inside, he's got the run into Druids. Or has he? Or has he? Because Deeth moves across. Oh, they touch, and Smith's got one, gone sideways as well. Has he saved that? Yes, he has. A touch there between Deeth and Ferguson. Rupert Deeth was not going to give way there into Druids, he wants to hold the lead and uh, keep alive his chance of the Winter Championship. Eight and a half minutes to go then for Joe Ferguson to attack. Smith is third, Kendall fourth, Cox in fifth. Scott Kendall was rather left behind on that restart by the top three. He was in second place at one stage yesterday until he had an off. As here comes Ferguson flinging the 34 round the outside. Now he needs to bring in his classic mini training from the Masters pre-66s and the historic touring cars to throw this car around as much as he can on the wet surface. He's up alongside Rupert Deeth. Is he going to go round the outside into Paddock? The circuit's a little drier than it was earlier. Here comes Joe Ferguson keeping his foot in around the outside. It's uh, a bit wetter through this section. Ferguson's going for it there. Wheel to wheel. Look at this up the hill towards Druids. Deeth's got the inside. Ferguson's later on the brakes. He might get it here around the outside of Rupert Deeth. He's gone all the way around the outside of him. He's got the line for Graham Hillbend. He's done it. That's one of the overtakes of the year from Joe Ferguson. What a fantastic piece of driving. I also caught sight there on the inside of Druids. We've lost, um, I think, Michael Winkworth. Yes, I think he's pulled over at Druids. There he is. So we've lost Winkworth on the restart. So that's the end of his unbeaten run in the scholarship class now here comes Jeff Smith that move from Ferguson I think has unsettled Rupert Deeth and here comes Jeff Smith on the inside he's going to try and go through into second meanwhile Gareth Baldwin is uh, back in the pits more problems for him side by side between Smith and Deeth into Paddock, Paddock Hill Bend there's yellow flags out there though I think Jeff Smith uh, did he get the move done before he entered the yellow flag zone yes I think he did and the yellow flag will be for Michael Winkworth's car being pushed to safety by the marshals it's behind the barriers now so we're okay Michael Winkworth out of the race Ferguson now from Smith lifting a wheel there through Graham Hill Bend Rupert Deeth in third it's Kendall Peacock has gone through into fifth ahead of Cox 
Nick Paddy, seventh ahead of Torben Astin. And then we've got the sevens led by Fraser Hack, his yellow machine. Regular seven class, still led by Conor O'Brien. So here's some of the runners further back in the order. Ryan Taylor in 13th has got Giles Page behind him. And then Ollie Handley in the blue 746 car. Now here comes Jeff Smith. Now he's getting a run on Joe Ferguson, who moves to the inside to block him. If you can go round the outside, so can I, says Jess Smith, and I'm going to do it at Paddock Hill Bend. This is going to be close. Ferguson hasn't given way. They almost touch. Oh, that could have been nasty. They just avoided each other there, still allowing Deep to close back up again as well. We've still got nearly six minutes of this to go. And Ferguson lunges across to try and stop Smith from coming through on the inside. Tries to repeat his move that he made on Rupert Deep here, but I think Smith has got the overlap, and he takes the lead. Jeff Smith into the lead. Could he be heading for the Winter Championship? Rupert Dietz not finished yet though, three minis line astern for the lead, three minis line astern, where have I seen that before? Well they're not red, white and blue, back up the inside at Surtees, Joe Ferguson retakes the lead, fantastic. Smith gets ready to fight back again at Clearways as Ferguson goes out wide looking for grip, he went off here under the safety car in race one yesterday, doesn't want to repeat that here. And he holds his lead around the outside, this is brilliant racing. As always from the Mini 7 Racing Club, the three Milias battling it out. Rupert Dietz just looking on. And Jeff Smith's going for the outside into Paddock. Look at this. Can he get him on the brakes? No, he can't. Joe Ferguson holds it. Smith will be ready to attack again into Druids. There's back markers ahead. Look out, Connor O'Brien. They're closing on you. Smith to the inside at Druids. Is he going to get through? Ferguson tries to force Smith towards the curb. O'Brien doesn't know which way to go to get out of the way. Running wide out there over the curves. Ferguson nearly lost it. Smith's got the lead. Look at Deep up the outside. This is amazing. Three of them line astern through the back markers as well. Smith on the inside. Here comes Deep. Ferguson doesn't know which side to go. He's attacking and defending at the same time. He's trying to go around the outside at Surtees. Deet's there on the inside. They bang, they bang wheels once, twice, three times. They both go wide. Rupert Deet says, thank you. Oh, and it's all come to a head there. They tangle up. Into the gravel goes Smith. Into the gravel goes Ferguson. Oh, dear. What, what a shame. What a sad way for that battle to end. A cracking race between Smith, Ferguson and Deet. Rupert Deeth is in the lead and surely he's heading for the winter mini title. Well, Rupert Deeth on his own now. Or is he? Or is he? Because look at look at Scott Kendall. That tangle forced Deeth to back off to avoid them. And Kendall's catching him. They're well clear of Colin Peacock, about five and a half seconds clear in third place. The leader said, oh, we've got a red flag. The race is stopped. There's the reason. Two cars stuck right on the edge of the circuit and the officials opting to bring out the red flag instead of the safety car because we wouldn't get those two cars moved, I don't think, under the safety car in time for the race to finish. That was an amazing race there. You could tell something had to give between these three. They gave each other no room at all through Surtees. They bumped once, twice, three times. Ferguson and Smith both went wide. Rupert Deeth got ready to take the lead on the inside. And as Ferguson tried to cut back in, spun across the front of them. Smith hit him. And both of them sliding off into the gravel. And Rupert Deeth backed off and avoided them. And Jeff Smith and Joe Ferguson out of the race. Conor O'Brien nearly followed them into the gravel there. He was sideways as well. Looks like um, I can see some smoke coming from Joe Ferguson's car. The fire tender is in attendance. I hope Joe Ferguson's car's not on fire. But there was three and a half uh, minutes, 3.23 minutes, 25 seconds to be precise of the race to go. So uh, I'm fairly certain that will be a result declared. Yeah, the cars are heading back into the pits. It will be a win for Rupert Deeth. The 7S class won by Fraser Hack and the 7s by Connor O'Brien. Here's some highlights of that race. Well, Darren Cox led off until he went all over the place through Surtees and McLaren somehow avoided spinning but went back from first to fifth. Rupert Deeth led ahead of Joe Ferguson and Scott Kendall. Then Jeff Smith after a little bit of a slow start coming through. Of course we have the safety car out for Andy Shaw's stranded car. The Sevens had an enjoyable battle. Andy Shaw was clipped by Jonathan Page. I think that may be how uh, Jonathan lost his headlight. And then this amazing three-way battle between Deeth Ferguson and Jeff Smith, deep taking the lead through the right-hander at Druids, and then Ferguson 
with one of the overtakes of the year around the outside at Druids down into Graham Hillbend that all started back at Paddock Hillbend Joe Ferguson would have been deserving as a win for that move but sadly it was not to be because Jeff Smith and Joe Ferguson began to get physical while battling for the lead they uh, almost went off into the tyres at Paddock onto the grass and then coming into Surtees this was the flashpoint they bumped once once it bumped again and for a third time as, Fer as Smith cut back up the inside Ferguson turned in to tangled up and off they went Rupert Deeth doing well to avoid them as he went through to take the race win Where are the minis buried in the gravel? The drivers are okay. The telehandler being called in to recover them. So that uh, provisionally is a win for Deeth ahead of Scott Kendall and Colin Peacock. Sometimes since we've seen Colin on the podium, that's a good result for him. Fourth for Darren Cox. Nick Paddy fifth. And Torben Astin after failing to complete a lap due to problems yesterday gets a sixth place then we've got the sevens with Fraser Hack winning the 7S class after the demise of Michael Winkworth ahead of Matthew Ayres and Jonathan Page Connor O'Brien wins the sevens category in tenth place then Giles Page Ryan Taylor Ollie Handley Stephen Rideout Tina Cooper second of the regular sevens class and then the rest of them are scholarship runners Dave Rees Jeff Williams and Mal Dickinson because of course we lost Winkworth Andy Shaw and Gareth Baldwin Recovery operation in progress then, and uh, well, that victory for Rupert Deeth, I think, means he wins the uh, winter championship for the Miglias. Sevens, I'm fairly certain it is Connor O'Brien who will take the title. We'll await official confirmation on that. Seven S class, I think, was won by Michael Winkworth after his two wins yesterday. We'll await official confirmation of that as well. Fraser Hack, I don't think, has caught him, but we'll await further news. Short pause in proceedings then while the two cars are dug out of the gravel there. Trackside recovery doing the uh, pulling and the marshals doing the digging. It's a lot of gravel to be cleared out of the underside of those minis. Next race on the programme is race four of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. And we will wait to see. I'm wondering if we've got an amended grid for that one because I don't imagine we will see a full grid sadly after the uh, incidents earlier.
Well, the British Truck Racing Championship will be out as soon as the uh, track is clear. I can tell you we will not be seeing Michael Oliver out for the rest of the weekend. The number 12, that truck uh, too badly damaged, sadly, so his uh, truck has been withdrawn from the rest of the event. Michael is OK, but uh, the truck sadly too badly damaged after the incidents earlier on. Um, Ryan Smith's team were trying to repair a lot of damage to his truck. We'll wait and see uh, if he comes out for this one. The trucks are making their way out. Uh, let's have a look who we've got then. The grid should see Ricky Collett in pole, number 95. This is based on the result of the second race yesterday with the top eight in each division reversed. Ricky Collett is there. Alongside him, number 81, Mark Taylor. Yes, he's there. Second row, Stephen Powell, number three. David Jenkins, number 69. They're both there. Third row, Craig Reed, number 68, and number 18, John Newell. Yes, they're both there. John Newell dug out of the gravel from earlier on. Fourth row, Stuart Oliver, number 7, and Ryan Smith, number 1. Yes, he's made it out. What a repair job by Ryan Smith's team. Simon Cole is there, number 41, and Simon Faulkner. Bradley Smith is there, number 46. No Michael Oliver. And Tom O'Rourke's there, 86 starting at the back after he crashed out of race two yesterday so remarkably after that incident earlier on we've only lost one truck division two John Powell and John Bowler will head them up and then behind them we've got uh, Luke Garrett after his off late in the race yesterday will give him an advantage of starting position here Craig Evans alongside him Adam Bintz Brad Smith in the 16 and Jock Borthwick that's an amazing repair effort by um, Ryan Smith's team. I can't believe that truck's back out there after all the damage it got. Sadly we have lost Michael Oliver. Stuart Oliver's got some front end damage you can see there. And we can shortly uh, head down to the grid to hopefully hear from uh, one or two of the drivers. Well, believe me, this doesn't look as fun as it is. <laughs> it's cold. Well, it's yeah, it's cold. It's chilly. These are you cold? Yeah, cold. <laughs> very. Are you cold? I'm fine. Yeah, it's it's not that bad. Yeah, they're, they're cold. You and are you cold? I'm all right. I'm, I'm all right I'm too. You? Yeah. Well, as you can see, the weather is drying up nicely. Uh, we've got Griggles here, of course, supporting Stuart Powell's, uh, Steve Powell's team. Uh, so I'll be sent at the front. You know where yeah, to stand now, do you? Yeah, right. Mind. Okay. Well, yeah. don't get run over, okay, ladies. <laughs> Um, right, Ewan, I mean, let's have a quick chat about what just happened in that previous race. It was all over the shot, wasn't it? I mean, one thing happened, that connected to a second thing, then a third, fourth and a fifth thing happened. I think you've been speaking to a few of the drivers. Who is actually starting and who's not? So, I mean, we'll have to have a look because, to be honest with you, even though we have a list of results and certain disqualifications from the last race, unfortunately, Michael Oliver, a lot of questions around that going, well, if it was a reverse for one lap then surely he'd have ended up with a third place for that race however because he didn't get going on his own uh, power a lot of other drivers as well three of the drivers i believe ryan smith john newell stewart oliver also disqualified from the race although not necessarily causing the incident being penalized for it i think amazingly ryan smith is on the fourth row of the grid there were some messy trucks after that race weren't there and ryan smith he was there dave jenkins that piled into the back of him it got dragged off me by one of our safety trucks but it's literally right there it is, and they, they, again, credit to Arnie and the rest of that team. They work absolute miracles in the uh, down in the paddock. Uh, we've got Steve Powell, of course, taking a first place uh, for that previous race. So yeah, over here then, let's quickly look at Mark Taylor's truck. This is the impact we saw earlier on from Michael Oliver shunting into the side. This is the part that sent Michael Oliver's uh, cab about a foot further back on the chassis. His windscreen, in fact, staying intact, which is a miracle, really, because it was out here before, completely shunted sideways. But yes, looking back, we've still got Stuart Oliver on the grid, which is fantastic. Dave Jenkins back on the grid, which is also fantastic to see. Let's get the grid goals in one more time. No grid goals were harmed in the making of this footage. And uh, over to John Newell, he's back. Now, missing a little bit of fiberglass off the front, we can see. But still, we've got Ryan Smith, now reigning champion, seven-time reigning champion for the British Div 1. Uh, he's made it back out. Again, unbelievable efforts have been made to get that truck. We've got the whistle blowing, which means, Ewan, let's go. 
Let's get off the track. Let's send these guys out. Let's see if we can have a bit of dry racing, shall we? Back to Dave in the studio. Yeah, thanks very much to Pointy and you. And then a quick grid walk for us there. As we see, just the one uh, truck missing. No Michael Oliver towards the back. 19 trucks out there then for our fourth race of the weekend. It is a little drier out there now. The drivers will still be being very careful indeed, though. Uh, by pointies, uh, meaning they're disqualified, uh, not classified is what he meant. There were no disqualifications from race three. But the trucks that weren't uh, moving when the red flag came out uh, were not classified in the result. Those who involved in the pile-up, also John Newell, of course, down at Clearways. But they're all back out except Michael Oliver. Ricky Collett on pole, number 95, all the way from Halifax in Yorkshire. Been racing trucks for many, many years now. Mark Taylor number 81 alongside another northern based racer here they go then be a 15 minute race once again don't forget the points battle in division two by my calculation Luke Garrett leads Brad Smith by just two points With 32 still available Luke Garrett's got the advantageous starting position here because uh, he went off in the closing stage of yesterday and hit the spun truck of Bradley Smith number 46 he starts on the second row in Division 2 behind John Powell and John Bowler. Tom O'Rourke at the back of Division 1. Spun and hit the pit wall in the end of yesterday's race in the rain. This time Jock Baldwick starts at the back, but Jock, uh, by my points chart now, uh, cannot win the title, sadly. Collett and Mark Taylor lead them round Stephen Powell on the second row looking for his second win of the weekend on his home circuit Division 2 has been uh, fairly dominated so far by Jock Borthwick this weekend Adam Bint has been going well in the number 5 as well Brad Smith the other title contender with Luke Gant. Here we go then, race number four of the weekend. 15 minutes of racing for the British Truck Racing Championship here on the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. The power comes on and here we go. A great start by John Newell going for the outside. A poor start by Ricky Collett. It's Mark Taylor who will go into the lead on the first turn. The inside uh, line there was rather bottled up behind Collett. There's a bit of contact. David Jenkins gets sent wide. John Newell trying to get around the outside of Collett, but it's Mark Taylor, number 81 who has got the lead, the front of the truck rather taped together after that contact with Michael Oliver in the previous race. They all make their way through, three wide there into Druids at the back, that's a brave move, and John Bowler has got the lead in Division 2. Luke Garrett trying to get through on the inside of John Powell for second place, and he's done so. Brad Smith is stuck at the back in the number 16, that is not where he wants to be at all. Challenge on for the lead, held by Mark Taylor. John Newell has got ahead of... Oh, and Mark Taylor's gone straight on. They're all going straight on. Taylor goes off. There's no grip at all on the grass there. He just goes sliding, sliding, sliding. Where's he going to end up? In Seven Oaks, I think, if he keeps going that way. So who's got the lead now? I think it's John Newell who's got the uh, lead. Mark Taylor's trying to work out where he is. He's going to need a map and compass to find his way back on. Oh, dear. They uh, were caught out by the lap of lack of grip. They thought it was drier at Sir Surtees. It's not. And look who's come through into third, it's Ryan Smith in his new lightweight MAN is attacking David Jenkins for second place. That's completely shaken the order up because nearly everybody went straight on at Surtees. Mark Taylor's disappeared, it's Newell that leads, Smith now into second and Jock Borthwick's had a spin. No, you're meant to be going the other way, Jock. Oh, what's happened to Brad Smith? He's been involved in an incident somewhere as well. Now. 
this is again going to change the championship picture in Division 2. We didn't see what happened there. We are watching the mayhem in Division 1. As Newell leads it from what's left of uh, Ryan Smith's truck. David Jenkins is third. And behind them we've got Craig Reed, Stephen Powell, Stuart Oliver, Tom O'Rourke up in the seventh. Newell goes wide again. Ryan Smith could get into the lead for his third win of the weekend here. He's got his arch rival David Jenkins behind him, who's now back in second place in the championship after earlier on. Ricky Collett's dropped back from his pole position. There's one truck in pit lane there. That is Craig Evans. And Mark Taylor's coming as well. But Craig Evans in the pit. Has he had contact with Brad Smith? They were both at the back in Division 2, so I would imagine that could be the case. Don Newell still leads in the number 18. Ryan Smith is on his tail. He's ready for a lunge coming up into Druids. No, you don't, says John Newell. The Yorkshireman moves across, keeps the line. Bradley Smith gets past Ricky Collins. Behind them, Simon Cole. Starting to bottle up now. You can see single file behind John Newell. They can't find a way past the MAN. Division 2 is being led by John Bolder, still in the number 14. Luke Garrett is second, he's half a second behind him. So Brad Smith is only fifth in the class. Oh, somebody else off, that's Tom O'Rourke. He's taken to the escape road at uh, Surtees. David Jenkins defending from Craig Reed for third place. Craig Reed's pushing him as they come down the straight there. Get off, says David Jenkins. No, I won't get off. I'm going to go for the inside as Tom O'Rourke rejoins. Here comes Reed on the inside at Paddock Hill Bend. He's through up into third place. Stephen Powell in fifth position. He's going for Jen. I wonder if Jenkins has got a problem here. He seems to be losing speed. Stuart Oliver behind them. Then Bradley Smith. He had a fair amount of damage yesterday that the team have repaired. Then Ricky Collins. again from Stephen Powell so getting back up to speed and still they can't get past John Newell Bowler still leads Division 2 further back Simon Faulkner doing a bit of uh, dirt tracking there at Surtees and there's the Division 2 leaders behind him Bowler holding off Luke Garretts now if Garretts second in the division he'll get some um, 14 points. There's a point for fastest lap, of course, as well. Fastest lap he's currently with John Bowler. He's up the inside, Ryan Smith. This is uh, this could be the move for the lead. Yes, he's through. Ryan Smith diving through at Paddock Hill Bend. He found the gap on the inside in what's left of his MAN. Tom O'Rourke's truck looked a bit like that yesterday. Most of the panels gone off it. Great Reed running well in third. He's had a good weekend. The man from Stoke in the Iveco. David Jenkins fourth, then a small gap back to Stephen Powell and Stuart Oliver. Stuart Oliver with that front end damage, collected uh, Ryan Smith's truck in that pile up earlier on. That truck's already been re rebuilt once this year after a big crash at Donington. That convoy in the park. So wheels onto the dirt there for Ryan Smith, it is so slippery through Surtees there, they can hardly get the truck stopped saw Mark Taylor disappear off track while leading there and there are the Division 2 leaders still John Bowler in the Union flag daft I don't think he's had a class win in Division 2 yet this year they have had just the one Pembroke if I remember rightly Luke Garrett up there in second place in the Apollo tyre fix MAN all playing into his hands again for the Division 2 title but then again we said that yesterday and he crashed out on the penultimate lap as David Jenkins late on the brakes there for Druids thought he was going to slide wide chasing now Craig Reed. eight and a half minutes of this race to go the weather may be drier but it's still treacherous out there Ryan Smith 
continues to pull away from John Newell. The gap was 1.8 seconds. Craig Reed unable to get through at the moment. Then Jenkins, Powell, Oliver, Smith, Collett, and further back Simon Cole. Simon Faulkner rounds out the top 10 in his Iveco. And then we've got the Division 2 runs. Here comes Reed again. Sliding about even on the straight there, a bit like the pickup trucks were doing earlier on. I tell you, Craig Evans has got going again in the number 10. A couple of laps down, but uh, Mark Taylor has retired to the pits. A frustrating season for Mark Taylor this year. Craig Reed able to do anything about John Newell. This is allowing Ryan Smith to escape looking for win number three this weekend here's the battle in division two Luke Garrett getting closer and closer to John Bowler it's Adam Bint third in the class and Bowler a bit of a slide there into Druids it's a little late on the brakes whether there's some fluid been spilled there I'm not sure John Bowler running well in that uh, hand-painted daft truck chasing the division one truck of Simon Faulkner and off the pace this weekend sadly Garrett can't get ahead of him at the moment. Quickest slap in Division 2. Has it now been done? Yes, I think it has now been done by Luke Garrett as he closes up. No, John Borthwick has the quickest lap. Further back in the order after spinning earlier on. So Borthwick has got the fastest lap. He'll get the bonus point. It's the last thing Luke Garrett wants to see, but he's attacking John Bolt. His bowler slowing there. He was slow off clearways. He's sliding about there down the straight but he's held the lead did he miss a gear there coming out of uh, clearways John Bowl still got the lead in division two but only just third in the division is Adam Bintz behind him is Tom O'Rourke the division one runner recovering after he went off earlier on there's Bintz Volvo in the background fourth in division one is John Powell Brad Smith is only fifth starting to play into the hands of Luke Garrett once again he get past John Bowler. This is the truck length in it as they come through Graham Hill Bay. Less than six minutes of the race to go. Can Bowler hang on for the class win? Overall, it's still Ryan Smith. He's three and a half seconds clear of this battle now. John Newell still are holding off Craig Reed, then Jenkins and Stephen Powell. Smith up ahead. A change for seventh place. Ricky Collett has got ahead of Bradley Smith. Stuart Oliver still in sixth ahead of them. Drew Druids down the hill. 1,000 horsepower from these 12 and 13 litre engines submitting it down to the tarmac safely is the problem in these conditions apologies there four and a half uh, minutes of the race to go sorry a few uh, technical hitches there race continues on with Craig Reed still all over the back of John Newell division two battles now got a division one truck in the middle of it the 92 of Simon Faulkner John Pohl has gone past him Luke Garrett now trying to find his way through as well Ryan Smith continues to lead and still John Newell defending second place he's getting desperate now Craig Reed and David Jenkins are getting desperate to pass him. These three absolutely together into Druid. Jenkins going round the outside. So it looks like instead of gaining a place, Craig Reed's about to lose one. That's where David Jenkins went into the tyres in the first race yesterday. That's a restart from the pit lane. He's up the inside into Graham Hill Bend. Is he going to go through into third place? No, he's not because Craig Reed keeps his foot in. Jenkins leans on him down the straight and he's through. David Jenkins up into third place, but that's allowed John Newell to escape into second. And they've got to start from scratch to try and catch him again. Three and a half minutes remaining. Well, 
Ryan Smith's away and gone now as a result of all that in front. John Newell's on his own in second, and this battle's now for third. Craig Reed's fighting back in the red and white Iveco. Stephen Powell behind him in the white and yellow MAN. Over the line they go. There's Newell up ahead. Stuart Oliver and Ricky Collick closing up, and so is Bradley Smith as well. Six trucks it could be soon. Line astern for third. Ryan Smith leading by nearly six seconds over John Newell. Smith heading for his third win of the weekend. There was contact there. Reed and Jenkins, surely. Jenkins goes wide, drops down the order. And Craig Reed up into third place. Stephen Powell is now fourth. Stuart Oliver fifth. Six is Ricky Collett. Jenkins is down to seventh. He won't be happy there. towards the end of this fourth race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. He call it sliding to the inside there, he's attacking Stuart Oliver. I remember a few years ago, Stuart Oliver managed to get his truck hooked on the back of Ricky Collins' truck and he was towed round for a couple of laps at Brands Hatch. So he's a bit on diesel and tyre wear, I suppose. Tom O'Rourke still struggling for grip. Nearly going off again there at Surtees. Simon Faulkner ahead of him. David Jenkins, you can see he's fired up here. After that incident a lap ago, he's attacking Ricky Collins. seconds of the race to go now what's happening in division two meanwhile I think Luke Garrett has taken the lead in division two we're watching that uh, little contretemps for third place in division one but has Luke Garrett now got the lead we'll try and look further back oh Ricky Collett's gone grass tracking meanwhile you can't take your eyes off this division one battle for a second we need to find out what's happened in division two because I think Luke Garrett is now leading and that could have implications for the championship, especially with Brad Smith only fourth in the class. There is Garrett. Yes, he's taken the lead. There's Bowler second, Vint third. So Luke Garrett is out in front, but uh, still Jock Borthwick has got the fastest lap in Division 2, even though he's only sixth after he spun earlier on. John Bowler under fire now from Adam Vint. The outside comes the Volvo menacing looking machine in that black livery the Oxfordshire driver tries to get the overlap on Bowler he can't quite do it though Bowler will hold second place they've got Tom O'Rourke coming up on them but there is Luke Garrett you can see the lead he's pulled out now he's ahead of John Bowler Bint continues to attack it's going to be a win for Ryan Smith Craig Reed's done the fastest lap overall 108.007 in the Avico will be Checkered flag this time. There's Brad Smith. We haven't seen much of him in this race, but the checkered flag is at the ready. It's win number three of the weekend for the Division One champion flying. Ryan Smith takes it in his lightweight MAN. Who is going to be second? Well, Craig Reed nearly caught Sir John Newell there. Newell second, Reed third. It's Stephen Powell fourth. Fifth is Stuart Oliver. Sixth, Ricky Collett. Seventh goes to Bradley Smith. And David Jenkins back to eighth. He will not be happy there. Meanwhile, Division Two is going to be won by Luke Garrett. Ninth will go to Simon Cole overall and Garrett comes in to win Division 2. Crucial results. John Bowler will take second. Tom O'Rourke just fails to catch Adam Bintz for 12th overall. Simon Faulkner is next. Now where is Bradley, where is Brad Smith I should say, the number 16? I think he's going to come in 15th and 4th in Division 2. Yes, there he is. The cream and red coloured daft over the line, fourth in Division 2. Jock Borthwick behind him. Then it's John Powell. Craig Evans, the final finisher. A couple of laps down. He pulled into the pits halfway through. We lost Mark Taylor. Now, what's that going to do to the Division 2 points then? Who got the fastest lap in Division 2 as well? down the lap charts. Borthwick did a 
sorry, a 108487 was quickest lap for Borthwick. I'm reading the wrong column. Garrett did a 109446. Yeah, so Jock Borthwick gets the point for fastest lap. So Luke Garrett will only get 15 points for that win in Division 2. Brad Smith gets 12 points. So they're separated by five going into the last race of the season. Ryan Smith, the overall winner, though. He wins by nearly six seconds ahead of John Newell, who just held off Craig Reed to the line. An interesting battle in the minor placings in Division 1. Stephen Powell, fourth, ahead of Stuart Oliver, Ricky Collins, Bradley Smith, and a rather disgruntled, no doubt, David Jenkins, only eighth. Simon Cole, ninth, then Luke Garrett, the winner of Division 2, having passed John Bowler. Bint, O'Rourke, Faulkner, Brad Smith only fourth in Division 2, 15th overall. Borthwick, John Powell and Craig Evans completed the finishes. While I add up the points, let's head down to point eight in Park Fermi. OK, OK, so that didn't go too badly at all, did it, ladies and gentlemen? Another good result for Ryan Smith, of course, setting back to slap. We knew that already. But the bone of contention, here we are. Dave Jenkins, a very interesting drop back later in the race, saw him score the same amount of points so far this season as Stuart Oliver. The last race of today will decide second place for the Division One Championship, so it's all to play for. That could be an interesting afternoon. We've got Luke Garrett steaming ahead now, almost sealing his deal with the first place in Division Two, which is just fantastic news. And we see behind us a few more little slips and slides, but nothing too serious with regards to damage. Let's uh, see if we can get some drivers out of the cabs and head our way down the pit lane just quickly. Obviously, lots of things going on on circuit. Loads of marshals about. They don't want us to get in the way, trying to get these trucks shifted on as quickly as possible. Chaz Draycott, the uh, circuit commentator, talking to Ryan Smith there, of course. And we can see a bit further. John, how are we? Good, a lot, lot better. Yeah, so that was an interesting race though. Uh, Craig Reed, a lot of challenges coming from behind there. Yeah, I've got no turning on back at part at circuit, so I'm pulling away from him all round front end, and then I, I've got no turning at all, so I was just going straight on everywhere. So it was hard work, but the start was amazing. Incredible. Uh, Dave Jenkins, Dave, can we borrow you, can we borrow you a sec one second? So, excuse me, just the cameras this way. So. I might be with terrible with maths, but we're looking at the standings for Division 1 now. Does that result bring you now neck and neck with Stuart Oliver for second place? I have no idea. No. Going in with three points ahead of him, yeah. three places behind in that race. So, again, it's my maths, so it could be terrible. Where's John? Where's John? Uh, John, again, is behind the pair of you. So it's still, it's still uh, going to be a very tight race. It's more the fight for second than it is for third at the moment, I believe. Yeah, no, definitely. The heat's on now, isn't it? Yeah, it's all going to get very exciting. Any plans getting into uh, the last race? The, the, the grid's already been decided, I believe. So where does that put you for last race, do you know? Yeah, it'll be the finishing position from the first race this morning. Reverse, won't it? So we were P3, so P6. Right, so still a bit of uh, field to gather up. Yeah, but Stuart and John will be behind because they DNF, didn't they? Ah, yes. The problem is we've got people out there that shouldn't be racing against us, racing against us and in influencing the championship positions now. So it'd be terribly sad if it gets resolved in the clerk's office. But, you know, the organisation's been absolutely terrible this weekend, I have to say. And the uh, instilling of the rules has been terrible. And somebody needs to get a grip of British truck racing before they kill the best product we've ever had. Thank you very much. Uh, strong words from Dave Jenkins there. Perhaps uh, someone to listen to uh, when we're looking for the direction that the sports organisation needs to go in. Of course, we're at Top Sport, BTRC, can only go with what's happening on the track. We've got no sway with the rules and the regs. That's all up to somebody else, thank goodness, because I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of some of these drivers. Right, back to you in the studio. We'll have a little replay of what's been going on earlier on this weekend.
OK, thanks, Pointy. Just been busy for a moment there with the Excel spreadsheet, working out the points. Now, by my reckoning, Stuart Oliver, with one race to go, is one point ahead of David Jenkins. And John Newell is a further six points back. That's how I have it uh, here in the box anyway. So there's one point between Oliver and Jenkins for second in the championship behind Ryan Smith. In Division 2, Luke Garrett's got 15 points from that race and Brad Smith got 12 with fourth place in Division 2. I think he had a collision with Craig Evans early on. So therefore, there are five points between Garrett and Smith for the Division 2 championship. So basically, Brad Smith needs to win the last race and hope Luke Garrett's finishes out of the top five in Division 2. That's without taking the fastest lap point into account as well. We'll wait and see how things work out in the last race of the season a little later on. We've got four races, uh, sorry, three races coming up uh, remaining on our coverage. We've got the Mini Challenge Trophy Class for their season finale, the British Truck Racing Championship finale and the Pickup Truck Racing Championship finale as well. Rhys Jones looking set to take the title there. He's, uh, I believe, 175 points ahead with uh, 205 points available. Dale Gent and Mark Willis still mathematically able to catch him, but uh, Rhys Jones only needs a decent finish in the last race to take the pick-up title. Some strong words from one or two drivers after that last uh, truck race. I thought tempers might be running fairly high after that one. But let's hope for a good, clean final race of the season. Usually the last race of the season does see the drivers let their hair down a little bit, though, as they uh, celebrate their titles. But uh, no celebrating just yet in Division 2. The title is not resolved yet there, as we said. Just five points between Luke Garrett and Brad Smith. And... Uh, Brad just needs needs to win that race and hope Luke Garrett finishes sixth or lower out of the seven runners in Division 2. It's a tall order for Brad Smith. Luke Garrett looking on for his third Division 2 title. We haven't yet got the grid sheet through to us for race five. So uh, taking a look at the results of race three, which will decide the grid, it should be Bradley Smith and Simon Cole on the front row. course Ryan Smith, Stuart Oliver and uh, John Newell all failed to finish race three so they all start at the back. David Jenkins will start sixth as we've heard having finished sixth in that race so he might have the advantage there to get second in the championship behind Ryan Smith. All seven trucks finished in division two earlier. And after he went off and re... This is interesting. After he went off and rejoined, Luke Garrett finished last in Division 2. So he's got pole position for the last race. Luke Garrett's luck is in. He's got Brad Smith, though, starting directly behind him because he finished fifth in Division 2 in that race, which will decide the grid. Oh, we're in for a thrilling climax of the season for the British Truck Racing Championship. But for now... We're going to head uh, into our lunch break and we'll rejoin the action in uh, just under an hour's time with the mini challenge, the Quaife Mini Challenge trophy class for their season finale. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
One car coming into the pit lane. Ah, oh, that's, I think, is Mick Fitzgerald, who was used to start from the back anyway. I think he's going to take the option of starting from the pit lane, perhaps to avoid any mayhem around him. 15 minutes of uh, BMW Mini Racing coming up then. The Quaife Mini Challenge get underway. Good start by Nathan Edwards. Good start by Nelson King. Not the best of getaways from uh, Nicky Taylor. But it is Alex Solly who will lead the way into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. One car breezing through the middle there. I think that's Joe Wiggin. He started quite a way back on the grid. The blue and yellow machine. He's going to run wide coming through Paddock in the spray. It's Alex Solly who leads. Nathan Edwards up into second. Nelson King trying to go round the outside. He wants to wrap up the title with a victory. The car's running a little bit wide at Druid. It's so slippery up there, down towards perhaps the wettest part of the circuit at Graham Hill Bend. Nathan Edwards tried to think about a look for the lead there, but it is Alex Solly who leads, looking for his first win of the season. Had one win last year at Thruxton. Second place is Edwards in the 21. Nelson King has a look there in third place with the headlights ablaze. Not all of these cars, as you can see, have headlights, so it's going to be fairly difficult for some of these drivers. Up the inside, Nelson King going for second on the intercleanse car of Nathan Edwards. He's up the inside, out of clearways. Can he take second place into the Sir Jack Brabham straight? Yes, he can. So Nelson King up to second place. Down to fourth has gone, uh, down to third has gone Nathan Edwards. Nicky Taylor in fourth. Matt Hammond rounds out the top five as they complete the opening lap. Into Paddock Hill Bend for the second time. The lead gap point four of a second. Alex Solly trying to establish a lead here, but he's got the champion elect, Nelson King, who wants to sew up that title with a win. In second place, here comes Nicky Taylor, having a look up the inside on Nathan Edwards, side by side. They go through Druids, Hammond fifth. It's Ovenden in sixth position behind them in the 24, the local lad, down the hill. Nicky Taylor's up to third. Nathan Edwards fights back. He has to uh, lift off there, though. Bob back in behind Taylor. They were on a collision course there. Here comes the 24 of Ovenden, chasing him. It is Lee Pierce in the 23. Charlie Mann has made up a place into eighth. Joe Wiggin, it was who made that great start. He's gained five places off the line. And Nelson King up the inside. Is he going to take the lead here into Clearways? Yes, he's done it. Good switch of line there through uh, McLaren and Clearways by Nelson King, showing just why he has been so dominant this season. Looking for his tenth win of the year to seal the title. Alex Solly wants his first. Mickey Taylor has yet to win this year as well. He's been consistent on the podium in most rounds. 
trying to close back up here, the two Graves Motorsport cars, three Graves Motorsport cars running one, two and three. Nathan Edwards in fourth place in the number 21 for Accelerate Motorsport. Through the highest part of the circuit, but it's down the drop into Graham Hill Bend. Nelson King, number 95, leads Alex Solly. Any further movers and shakers in the pack that time? Charlie Mann's gone ahead of Lee Pierce up into seventh place. Charlie Wild Thing, man, as he's known. His grandfather was a member of the Trogs, who, of course, had a big hit with Wild Thing back in the day. That's him in the red car, number 20. One win this year. Oh, goes out wide. He's had, uh, I think, two wins this season. This one at uh, Thruxton, one at Snetterton. Green flag waving there. Somebody's had a problem further back round at uh, Surtees and McLaren I think there, we didn't see who it was who's dropping down the timing screen as they come over the line, doesn't look like anybody is so somebody just had a quick moment there leaders plunge through Paddock Hill Bend then up Hailwood Rise, running a bit wide there Nathan Edwards in fourth place, he's got Matt Hammond tracking in the 2017 champion of London Six there's Charlie Mann in seventh Lee Pierce, Jack Byrne and Joe Wiggin rounding out the top ten Car in the gravel at Clearways, we're told, on the uh, timing screen. So there's nobody dropped down the timing screen. Everybody completed lap three, so somebody uh, might have just run wide. Ah, there is one car showing as having only completed one lap. Lauren Taylor, number 33. So we'll see if it's her that's in the gravel there. Take a look as the leaders go through. Yes, there's the uh, car on the outside. So it looks like it's Lauren Taylor that's gone in there. I did see a, a yellow flag waving briefly, but I wondered if the car had recovered. Over the line come the leaders then. Nelson King, Alex Solly, 1.3 seconds near enough now the gap. There's another car off, that's James Parker, number 33, that, number 30 rather, that's at McLaren. James Parker, who we saw complete part of the race at uh, Donington with his boot lid open, has had problems again. John McLadrigan's been delayed somewhere as well as uh, it's getting busy between Hammond, Ovend and Nathan Edwards and Charlie Mann. This is the fight for fourth place. That's the battle of the second, but Nelson King is pulling away into Graham Hill Bend. That's Hammond, who said he wants to uh, move up to the more powerful John JCW class next season, the John Cooper Works class. Top line of the mini challenge. Facing now for fourth position on the back of Edwards. It's 11 and 6, the local man. Then we have got Charlie Mann in seventh. EPS 8, there's Lauren Taylor's car by Halfords, might need a trip to Halfords to uh, repair that and uh, the safety car is coming out to retrieve that car so the officials deciding that Lauren Taylor's car is in uh, a dangerous position race being brought to halt, number 34 John McGladrigan might have been involved there because he's coming to the pits ok so we go safety car once again, Lauren Taylor the 27 year old from uh, the northeast of England in the gravel She is. Race carts from the age of nine to get into uh, the Renault Clio Cup as she was uh, a writer for a French car magazine. French car magazine. That's uh, the end of the Clio Cup series. When she uh, diverted her attention to the Mini Challenge, she drives uh, a BMW Mini on the road as well, she tells us. Also entered Formula Woman last year, championing women in motorsports. And unfortunately, uh, Lauren Taylor is in the gravel here. That's the end of her first race of the weekend. Nelson King behind the safety car, then his progress checked. He was... Um, 1.3 seconds clear when the safety car came out of Alex Solly looking for his first win of the season as is Nicky Taylor in third and Nathan Edwards in four so it's Graves Motorsports one two and three placed in Essex Graves uh, celebrated his birthday just a 
couple of days ago. The team owner, so wins and a championship would be the ideal presence from his drivers. Looking at the class leaders, King leads the Graduates Cup. The Directors' Cup is led by Matt Hammond. The Rookies' Cup, Jack Byrne has got through into the lead. He's ninth. Where's Ollie Meadows? He's down to 11th. Some drivers, as you can see from our graphic, they're racing in two of the classes. Directors' Cup and Rookie, so a senior rookie. That's uh, the number 123 of Andy Cobb. The Directors' and Graduates' Cup for senior drivers in their second season. Number 88, Barry Holmes leads there, ahead of Mick Fitzgerald, while John McLadrigan is now in the pits. Fitzgerald, where's he made it up to? 30th place, having started from the pits in the LDR Performance Tuning Car. That's Lawrence Davies' team. Former legend champion when he before turning to minis. Marshall's gathering round to retrieve Lauren Taylor's car. I imagine the Ford Ranger pickup will be down there to pull that away. Notice Lauren's got the uh, black cross on the yellow background on her car. That means novice. You wear that for your first six motor races. Look how deep it's dug itself into the clear ways gravel. No clear way out of there. Heads through. Hopefully won't, that won't deposit too much gravel on the circuit. We'll keep her over to one side. And the marshals will sweep up the detritus. Yep, there is the trackside recovery Ford Ranger. Two former Buckmore Park juniors. Tom Ovenden is there in uh, sixth place. Alfie Glennie is 13th, the ex Ford Fiesta Junior racer. under five minutes of this race to go then the first race of the weekend for the Quaif mini challenge trophy class leads leader Nelson King less than five minutes away from the championship one two three there that is uh, Andy Cobb in the blue and orange car the golf look alike there seems to be at every uh, race meeting in the UK there seems to be at least one golf livery car doesn't there there's Joe Wiggin, where's he made it up to from uh, further down the grid? 41st. No, number 41's his number, 10th place he's in, sorry about that. Reading the wrong column on my timing screen. There's James Parker, he's got going again, we go back to green. Safety car is in pit lane, the super start by Nelson King. Charges away down into Paddock Hill Bend. Nicky Taylor and Alex Solly still together. Solly just ahead in second place, Nathan Edwards in fourth. Matt Hammond rounding out the top five towards Druid still very very slippery indeed let's take it easy the tyres will not be as warm as they were a few laps ago they've been trying to weave around keep the tyres and brakes warm under the safety car splash their way through Graham Hill Bend. King leads Solly Taylor Edwards Hammond Ovenden Charlie Mann in seventh place have we had any positions change on the restart it doesn't look like it's Hammond having a go at Tom Overton as they come through Surtees in the McLaren. Joe Wiggin, I think that is behind them. Going to Lee Pierce, sorry, number 23, the other blue car, still there in 8th place. Jack Byrne is ninth. there's Wiggin, the blue and yellow in 10th place. Three minutes to go. Nelson King is heading for the championship, and he's going to seal it in style with a race win. Looks like Alfie Glennie was making a move there in the green. Number 27 further back, attacking Luca Marinoni Osborne. They came out of clearways. First four have broken away again slightly from Matt Hammond in fifth place under intense pressure from Tom Ovenden. Trying to go around the outside is Charlie Mann, number 20. Doesn't quite get close enough through Druids down towards 
the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. London all over the back of Matt Hammond, the champion some five years ago. Many of these drivers with ambitions to get into the British Touring Car Championship, and well, Nelson King, we could be looking at a touring car star of the future here. 19-year-old, his ambition is to race in the BTCC, the former X30 karting champion, as off goes, I think that was Hammond. Hammond running wide, and Nicky Taylor's gone through into second place, coming out of clearways there. Taylor up into second, Alex Solly must have made a mistake there, he's lost some time. And round the outside comes Nathan Edwards going for third place. That's let Nelson King escape. Alex Solly, uh, has he got some damage there? He's dropped to fourth. I think Alex Solly's in trouble because Evenden's closing up on him. He's got ahead of uh, Charlie Mann. Yes, we've lost um, Matt Hammond through the gravel there. He ran wide at Clearways. Says he normally likes the wind conditions, but not this time, clearly. Evenden on the tail of Alex Solly now. Here comes Charlie Mann, the number 20. Smallest laps of concentration there. Don't know whether there was any contact. If there was, it was very slight. This is the second place fight coming through. There's uh, just over a minute on the clock. Wait to see if we get one more lap out of this. The fastest lap of the race, 101.829 by our race leader, Nelson King. Taylor second. And Edwards in third, then it's Solly. Paul Sitter down to fourth. The result of this race sets the grid for race two, which will be tomorrow morning. Less than a minute left now for Nelson King. Wait to see if the chequered flag goes out this time. If it does, he will be champion. So the pack battles their way through. Still Nathan Edwards there in third behind Nicky Taylor. Solly trying to get back onto the podium. On Cooper straight they go, there's 20 seconds left on the clock. It's going to be touch and go, I think, whether it's chequered flag this time. But surely Nelson King now is heading for the Mini Challenge trophy title. Come up towards the line, we'll wait to see if the chequered flag goes out. The clock is about to count down to zero. I think it is going to be chequered flag this time. The lights are flashing on the 95 car across the line. Nelson King takes the chequered flag and wins the Mini Challenge trophy title. Second goes to Nicky Taylor. Nathan Edwards is third. Alex Solly fourth. Ovenden fifth. Charlie Mann sixth. Then Lee Pierce, Jack Byrne, Joe Wiggin and Matt Hammond after his brief off complete the top ten. And your Quaif Mini Challenge trophy champion is number 95, Nelson King for Graves Motorsports. Taylor makes it a team at 1-2. He didn't quite uh, lock out the podium. And Accelerate Motorsports, Nathan Edwards taking third place. But Nelson King, he wanted to seal the title with a win, and that is exactly what he has achieved. Nelson King, your Mini Challenge Trophy Category Champion for 2022. Sure, we'll be down there for the celebrations in Park Ferme. The 19 year old takes the title. Nicky Taylor matches his best result of the year so far in second place. The gap was just over two seconds at the flag between the two of them. Nathan Edwards completing the podium. Bad luck to Matt Hammond, who ran wide onto the gravel through clearways a couple of laps from home, dropped down the order. He has to settle for 10th place. Top five places all filled by graduate cup drivers. King, Taylor, Edwards, Alex, Solly and Tom Ovenden. Charlie Mann in uh, six, not fitting into any of the uh, categories. Seventh place going to Lee Pierce. And he wins the Director's Cup as a result of Matt Hammond dropping back to 10th. Jack Byrne takes another win in the Rookies' Cup. Joe Wiggin coming through for ninth from the eighth row of the grid. Second place in the Rookies' Cup in 11th was um, Ollie Meadows. Then Alfie Glennie in 12th. Luca Marinoni Osborne in 13th place, 14th for Alex Keynes, and completing the top 15 was Frankie Taylor. Further down the order, 16th place went to Tyler Lidsey, Morgan Root in 17th, 18th went to Paul Manning, and Jonathan Sargent, Clark Wells, Mike Paul, and uh, the 44 car of Sam Baker next home. Behind them was number 60, Brendan Fitzgerald, 
99 of Ben Jenkins, 96 Jordan Kerridge was behind him, and Andy Cobb, James Parker, Mick Fitzgerald from the pit lane, Barry Holmes, Sophie Wright completing the 30 finishes. We lost John McLadrigan into the pits, and of course, Lauren Taylor ended up in the gravel. We can head down to Park Ferme then with Ewan Dunlop to talk to hopefully our new champion, Nelson King. Cheers, Dave. A very emotional Park Ferme down here. We've come inside actually because it is absolutely teeming day now. Nelson King, 10th win of the season, over 100 laps led, and you are the official 2022 champion. How does it feel now? Feels incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really describe it. Uh, I was up all night since like two o'clock this morning, uh, not getting any sleep over it, but oh, what a feeling. Good. It was almost nailed on, but you had to get across the line. So are you out there? It was another perfect performance. You didn't get away perfectly, but you did, you're sort of in the lead within about the fourth lap. And as you've done so many times this season, you never look like giving it up. No, no, I felt very confident out there. Uh, the weight is my favourite position and I felt, felt quite comfortable. And uh, as soon as I got in the lead, I just thought, thank God, I thought I can go, uh, hopefully I'll win this race, hopefully I'll win the season. It was amazing, honestly. I mean, it's been a great season. It was great to see you guys sort of high-fiving each other. It's such a great atmosphere down here. Um, I'm sure you've got a lot of people to thank as well for this season. Oh, of course. Um, my two big brothers, Lewis and Levi, uh, they do so much for me. Along with my dad, my mum, my nan, who's watching at home. I hope she's, uh, hope she's enjoying it. We've got a lot of people up in the Box Day sponsors who have joined this weekend. I hope they've enjoyed it. And especially my team. Uh, I know it looks like it's one driver, there's so many people, Dave, Sam, Max, Alex, Cole, everyone has done an amazing job. My mechanic Sam have been absolutely amazing this year, <laughs> same with Danico Engines, honestly the list can go on and on, I just can't honestly believe it. Amazing, uh, two more races to go this weekend, you should do you enjoy yourself now? <laughs> yeah of course, I was trying to enjoy myself with that one, I really did. Uh, yeah, I think it's finally time to let my hair down and uh, and have a good two races. Mate, massive congratulations, well done. Thank you. Cheers, buddy, well done. Uh, we've got another mini race coming up, but I'm going to try and speak to the drivers here. Um, Nicky, congratulations. I know it's not a win yet, but it's another second place. Great racing for you. It's fine. I'm just made up for Nelson at the end of the day. I literally, I saw him over the line. I was like, oh, come on, well done, mate. <laughs> but literally, it was just it was just fun just being out there. I was struggling so much in the last corner with grip, though, because I, I could see visibly throughout the, like, the first, two, first two sectors I was gaining on people. And then it would just be demoralising because the minute I got into the last <laughs> corner, it literally just I'd aquaplane or slide every single lap. So I need to I need to go over that day and see see what I'm doing there. But that's quick. You didn't start perfectly, but you you got back into it really strongly. Mm. I don't really know what happened at the start. To be fair, because I kind of I'd done like three and a half k revs and just done what I normally do in a in a wet start, and it just didn't didn't seem to go and just kept wheel spinning. So God knows what happened there, but. It is what it is, and hopefully tomorrow we can sort that out and sort whatever whatever um, speed we need. But I don't think Nelson now is just going to keep going for wins now. So, so it's gone from being quite an easy chance to get a win now to Nelson now hasn't got any care in the world, so he can just go for a win all he wants. But, but yeah, it's fun. Mate, two more races. We can't wait. Good luck. Cool. up with the uh, Quaif Mini Challenge trophy class there. That was their uh, first race from yesterday. Saw them out in the heavy rain this morning. Two wins for Nelson King so far. A little bit of an update on the uh, Mini Challenge, in fact, because we've got the grid for their third race. It's a partially reverse grid. And the top six finishers from race two, which is the race this morning, have been reversed. So it'll be Charlie Mann on pole. One driver who got a penalty in race one, Nicky Taylor, number 17. He got uh, a 10-second penalty for overtaking under a yellow flag. He got a three-place grid penalty for the race uh, coming up after lunch for that as well. Plus another two-place grid penalty for contact in that race earlier on. So Nicky Taylor's going to start all the way down in 17th for the uh, race this afternoon. That's coming up in just under half an hour's time. We're back underway at around 2.30pm. Uh, here at Grant Hatch on BARC TV.
Well, good afternoon, race fans. Welcome back after the lunch break here at Sir Brands Hatch here on BARC TV, the final day of BARC TV 2022. Dave Goddard here taking you through the uh, final three races of the afternoon as the light begins to fade on this uh, decidedly wet day here in Kent. It is the final race, round 19, for the Quaif Mini Challenge Trophy category making its way up to the grid. The question on everyone's lips, can the new champion, Nelson King, make it a hat-trick of victories. The marshal's just bringing the cars into line then. The grid is based on the results of the race we saw earlier today, but with the top six positions reversed. It was a partially reversed grid on the lines of the British Touring Car Championship with the number drawn out of a hat. So it is number 20, Charlie Mann who will stay, start from the pole position in the number 20 car with Jack Byrne alongside him. Wouldn't it be great in the final race of the season if the rookie champion Jack Byrne can score his first overall victory? As we mentioned uh, during the lunch break, Nicky Taylor has been given a total of five places of grid penalties. He got a 10-second penalty in the results of uh, race one for overtaking under a yellow flag. He also got a three-place grid penalty for that and a further two places penalised on the grid for contact in the earlier race. So he's back on row nine. So Charlie Mann and Jack Byrne on the front of the grid. Tom Ovenden, number 24. Nathan Edwards in 21 on the second row. And Lee Pierce, number 23. And Nelson King, 95, the champion, completing row three. Joe Wiggin is there, number 41 on row four, alongside the number 78 of Matt Hammond. Then the fifth row, 62, Alex Keynes. I think that's his best start of the year, alongside 27, Alfie Glenny. Row six is 86, Ollie Meadows, and number 12 of Alex Solly. Seventh row, we've got Luca Marinoni Osborne, number 81, alongside the 38 of Morgan Roots as the cars move off. Looks like they are going to start behind the safety car, as we did in the earlier race. Row eight is number 17, Nicky Taylor, after his penalty, alongside 32, Frankie Taylor, no relation. Row 9, 711 Clark Wells, number 4 Mike Paul. 10th row, 44 Sam Baker and number 60 Brendan Fitzgerald. Row 11, number 30 James Parker and 98 Jonathan Sargent. Row 12 is 99 Ben Jenkins, number 7 Mick Fitzgerald. Row 13, 96, which is Jordan Kerridge alongside 123 Andy Cobb. Row 14, 88 Barry Holmes, number 33 Lauren Taylor. 15th row, number 3 Sophie Wright and 46 Paul Manning, who ended up in the gravel in the race earlier on. And another non-finisher from uh, race two of the weekend this morning, number 10, Tyler Lidsey, starts on row 16 alongside, if he's there, number 34, John McGladrigan. He failed to start this morning, had some problems in yesterday's race. So we start behind the safety car then, with the rain having returned here on the Brands Hatch Indy Circuits. It's going to be a 15-minute race, the clock is already counting down. Is Charlie Mann, Wild Thing as he's known in his self run number 20 car, who leads the way. 486 Jack Byrne, the rookie champion in second, Tom Ovenden in third. There's Nelson King. Are we going to see a hat trick for this year's champion? He started the year at Pembrey with a hat trick in rounds one, two, and three. Charlie Mann, uh, notable that he doesn't fit into any of the classes, he's not in the Graduates Cup the uh, Rookies Cup or the Directors Cup so he must have done more than two years in the series but not be uh, of age to do the Directors Cup so he doesn't fit into any subcategory. He's had one win this year at Snetterton. He's really wet out there again now. Burns already won the, the Rookies Cup. Uh, first Graduate Cup driver on the grid is Tom Ovenden. First Directors Cup driver is Lee Pierce. He won the class with a best finish of the year overall earlier on second place in race two safety car will be coming in this lap so we'll go to green flag racing we uh, just under 12 minutes of racing in total there's Nicky Taylor the bright yellow car penalised down the grid in this one Let's see if he can come through can Nelson King do the dark blue car with the white roof sixth on the grid we see another win for him here. Jack Byrne, the Dubliner, desperate for his first overall win. Nathan Edwards 
Mike Wise has yet to win this year. His 13th last season, but only a best finish of 7th, so looking for his first win in the championship for Accelerate Motorsports. Here we go then, somewhere in the murk, they are there, we get underway. Here's Green Flag Racing, so the 12 minutes of this Quaif Mini Challenge Trophy race. Green lights shine around the circuit and we're off and away. Charlie Mannis is, who leads the way ahead of Byrne in second place. Tom Ovenden is in third, Nathan Edwards in fourth. Swing their way into Druids for the first time. Lee Pierce trying to get around the outside in the number 23. You can see not all of these cars have uh, headlights. It's going to be difficult in the middle of the pack here. Tom Ovenden in third place, but a uh, challenge on for the lead. Jack Byrne wants his first outright victory. He dominated the rookie category this year. He's going for the lead on the inside of Charlie Mann. Doesn't quite get alongside as they go into the left-hander at Surtees. It is really wet once again during the previous truck race. It cleared up a little as on the inside goes Lee Pierce past Nathan Edwards. Nelson King goes through as well. Down to sixth goes Nathan Edwards. Look, you, can, you can hardly see the cars, never mind the drivers seeing where they're going in weather like this. This is nigh on impossible. These are only young racers, many of them. Somehow keeping their cars on the road. I think everybody's got round the first green flag racing lap OK. It is Charlie Mann, number 20, who leads the trade of BMW Minis up into Druid Till then. Jack Byrne in second place. I don't think he's had an overall podium yet this year. He wants to uh, end his season in style with, a, with his first win. Along the Cooper Strait, Byrne pulls out of the slipstream, has a look. Somebody's off. That's the 98 car, I think, of um, Jonathan Sargent. We saw him on the grass earlier on today at Surtees. Well, he's gone off on Halewood Hill this time, the blue number 98 car. He'll rejoin at the back of the field. Tom Ovenden trying to catch Jack Byrne for second place. It's Rally Crosser has a look on the outside. Switching back to the inside. Fourth behind him is Lee Pierce. Then it's Nelson King. Six Nathan Edwards and a gap back to Joe Wiggin in seventh place. Here comes Ovenden having a look on the inside into Druids. Trying to take second place away from Jack Byrne. He's done it as they come out of uh, Druids into Graham Hill. Tom Oven done the local man up into second place. But Jack Byrne's fighting back. He's got the inside for Graham Hill Bend. Retakes that second place. A little kiss between the two of them as they head out of the turn. Onto the Cooper Strait. Here comes the 23 of Lee Pierce. Fighting his way up into the action. He's got past Ovenden now up into third place. So a brief loss of momentum for Ovenden there. And he's lost that third position. In behind him is Nelson King. Lee Pierce not content with third. He's going for second. And he's through on the inside at Clearways. Lee Pierce is revelling in these conditions today. Must be used to slippery surfaces from his years of oval racing. Side by side with Jack Byrne. Side by side behind between Nelson King and Tom Ovenden. Four of them together now for second place. This is allowing our leader, Charlie Mann, to get away slightly. Pierce is up into second place. Nelson King's got ahead of Tom Ovenden. He's down to fifth, but well, he was going for second a lap ago. Now he's down to fifth position. He could be sixth because Nathan Edwards isn't far away either. Down into the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. Wide onto the kerb there. Lee Pierce. Will he take his first win of the season? Jack Byrne on his tail, staying ahead of the champion. Nelson King, Byrne gets crossed up. He's going to go over the grass through the water splash on the inside. Well, not about water splash, more like a mud bath on the inside of uh, Surtees there. But somehow they've held all that together. Lee Pierce is closing on our leader. Lee Pierce had two wins last year, driving for the Graves Motorsport team in a self-run car this year. The short oval start. Burn under fire from Nelson King for third place. Charlie Mann, who leads, is under fire. Going for the inside is Pierce. He's going through for the first time this year. Lee Pierce leads in the Mini Challenge Trophy. Nelson King looking to go through for third, attacking Jack Byrne. 
Side by side, Byrne will have the inside line for Graham Hillbend. He holds the place. But Lee Pierce into the lead. They've had a couple of wins last year. Charlie Mann had one win, was fifth in the points last year, was a championship favourite coming into this season. The championship has been dominated by Nelson King. There's contact there between King and Byrne. Mann goes rally crossing. The car goes through that mud bath on the inside on just about every lap in every race here today at Brands Hatch. It's so difficult out there. EPS continues to lead the way in the 23. There's Nicky Taylor got up to after his uh, grid penalty. He's up to 11th, so he's gained six places so far. In fact, he's gained another two on that lap. He's up into ninth. We're driving by Nicky Taylor in the Dayglow yellow car. You can just glimpse him there in the background. EPS continues to lead Nelson King. Now up into third position, he's going for the outside on Charlie Mann. Side by side for second place, and King up on the kerb. Doesn't want to put a wheel onto the grass there, he'll go spinning out. Lunges up the inside through through Graham Hill Bend, and he's through into second place. Now down to trying to catch Lee Pierce for the lead. The gap was 0.7 of a second at the end of that last lap. More than that now for Lee Pierce, but he's understeering wide. It is so, so slippery through there. Here comes Nathan Edwards having a go at Jack Byrne in the 486. If he stays with this championship, I reckon he'll be a favourite for the overall title next year. He's completely dominated the rookie class this year and beaten only once or twice by Ollie Meadows. Here comes Nathan Edwards now in the 21. He's been racing BMW Minis for a few years. Still on the inside. Up into fourth position. It's Pierre Suling. It's King second, man third. And Edwards under fire again from Jack Byrne. Tom Ovenden's not finished yet either in sixth place. He's in behind them. Nicky Taylor's made up another place. He's now behind, um, I think that's Joe Wiggin in seventh place. Winner at Donington a few weeks ago. Joe Wiggin, a former winner of uh, a number of saloon car races in different disciplines, including the Citroen C1 24 hours a few years ago at Silverstone. Nathan Edwards bounces off the kerb. It's Nicky Taylor's there in eighth. It's Matt Hammond in ninth. The quiet race for him so far. And Alfie Glenny rounds out the top ten. Four and a half minutes to go. How these drivers can see where they're going, even with the headlights on, I do not know. There is Nicky Taylor. Putting Joe Wiggin under pressure. What might have been, but for his grid penalty... I think that might have been Matt Hammond through Paddock Bend. Just losing a bit of time as he put a wheel onto the gravel. The fastest lap for Nelson King, 102.944. Gap is less than a second now as here comes Nicky Taylor. Diving past Joe Wiggin. Up into seventh place. Wiggin fights back. Taylor just turns it back there, avoids going over the mud. The car being lapped there, I think that was Sophie Wright in the number three. First season uh, newcomer to racing, there she is, the white car. Leaders over the line and Nelson King has caught Lee Pierce. Looking to tell who the next few are visually. It's Charlie Mann in third place, then Edwards, Byrne, Ovenden and Taylor. I can only really tell that from the timing screen because it's virtually impossible to see the cars through the spray. Three minutes to go, there is Lee Pierce, there is Nelson King, he wants to finish the year as he started with a hat-trick. His hat-trick at Pembrey was in markedly better conditions than this. Jack Byrne under fire, that's Tom Ovenden on his tail. There's another Ovenden on the way up as well, Will Ovenden in the world of junior rallycross. He races a Suzuki Swift, maybe we'll see him in the mini-challenge someday. Pierce. What will be his first and only win of the season if he can hang on in front ahead of the King himself, Nelson King. Joe Wiggin runs wide. Matt Hammond has a look. It's for eighth place. Joe Wiggin's dropping back here in the number 41. Burns still leading the rookies. Pierce leading overall in the Directors' Cup. King the Graduate Cup. 
two minutes to go. Can Nelson King snatch the win? There's Nathan Edwards putting Charlie Mann under pressure for third place. Burns still up there in fifth, he wants a podium. I think the gap is a little too sizeable now. King's done another fastest lap, 102.861. We're coming up to lap Lauren Taylor. She went off at Clearways in yesterday's race. Moves aside to let Lee Pierce through. Flag like being shown, shown to her by the marshals, but uh, no problem at all. She's let the leaders go by. Now, is this the last lap, or will there be two to go? the line they go I couldn't see if the last lap board was out or not and the drivers probably couldn't either two tenths of a second in it as they came through and uh, Lee Pierce goes a bit wide through Paddock there got slightly out of shape Nelson King is on the attack to the outside as they come through Druids down the hill King in the trail of spray from Lee Pierce's car is throwing up such a great rooster tail. Looks more, they look more like power boats than BMW minis. Two flags waving to the slower markers as they lap them. It's just between these two now. They're well clear. Paul Pierce a little bit wide there at Surtees. 20 seconds left on the clock. Will it be chequered flag this time? We're about to see. I think they might put the chequered flag out this time. Nelson King has a look on the inside. He moves across. Back to the outside, Lee Pierce defending on the run-up. Is it going to be chequered flag this time? If so, Lee Pierce is going to win it. Across the line they go. No, they're going to do one more lap. They were a couple of seconds too early. Lee Pierce, Nelson King. Down the hill they come. Charlie Mann still holding off Nathan Edwards for third place. Then Byrne and Ovenden behind them. Can Lee Pierce hang on? The multiple world stock car champion his first win of the season. Nelson King wants to finish the year with a hat-trick to celebrate his title win. Along the Cooper Strait for the last time. The last lap of the season for the Quaif Mini Challenge trophy category. Again, Pierce a little wide at Surtees, turns it back again. He's going to have to rely on getting a slipstream out of uh, Clark Curve here, Nelson King. He gets the slightly tighter line. This is going to be close, but I think Lee Pierce has done enough is liking for the wet conditions here today well Nelson King is not quite going to get the hat trick he's going to have to settle the second place because up over the line the win goes to Lee Pierce second goes to Nelson King photo finish over the line there for third Charlie Mann I think just got it ahead of Nathan Edwards and beyond we'll have to go to the timing screen because I can barely see them yes Charlie Mann got third by 22 thousandths of a second over Nathan Edwards Jack Byrne was fifth, and well done, Nicky Taylor. Despite that grid penalty, he gained 11 places to take sixth position. What might have been if he hadn't been penalised? Half a second, the winning margin, so Nelson King just misses out on a 12th win of the season. He's already confirmed as the Quaif Mini Challenge Trophy Category Champion. 22. But it is Lee Pierce who takes the win in the Pierce Property Solutions car, a self run car. Brilliant drive by Lee. And a couple of wins in the uh, series last season, his first win this year. He takes the Director's Cup as well. New highlights from that race Charlie Mann did a bit of mud plugging down at uh, Surtees, and they have to get the track sweeper out there. Provisional result then, Lee Pierce the winner by half a second ahead of Nelson King, Charlie Mann in third in a photo finish with Nathan Edwards. Jack Byrne once again wins the uh, rookies division, he's completed almost a clean sweep in that division this year. Nicky Taylor in sixth, good run through the field by him, Tom Ovenden seventh ahead of Matt Hammond, then Wiggin and Glenny 
Joe Wiggin and Alfie Glenny round out the top ten. Alex Keane's 11th, the head of Alex Solly. He had a quiet weekend after setting pole position yesterday. Luca Marinoni, Osborne, Clark Wells and Morgan Root completing the top 15. Beyond that, we had Ollie Meadows, Frankie Taylor in 17th, and it was the uh, number 44 car of Sam Baker. Ben Jenkins and James Parker completed the top 20. We had just a couple of retirements in that one as well. They're excellent disciplined racing there. I only saw a couple of cars run off track briefly. I didn't see any spinners. Uh, we lost Barry Holmes into the pits. The other retirement was Brendan Fitzgerald. So well done to the uh, Quaif Mini Challenge. Let's head down to Ewan in Park Fern. Thank you, Dave. Here we are, Dave, for the final time in the Quaif Mini Challenge this season in Park Fern. Eh? Let's speak to our... Um, race winner first of all Lee congratulations got there in the end yes yeah like I said in the last race hopefully we can go one better and yeah we've done it the Evans opened just before the race um, so yeah yes yeah, that's what we was hoping for Brilliant. and it played into our hands and uh, we know everybody in this championship you've got a massive team behind you as well yeah yeah I've got pl plenty of support over here today we're in a good team we've got a good team of mechanics and stuff and yeah the car set out was just spot on today for the rain so I couldn't ask for anything more really um, got to talk about rain it just gets worse and worse doesn't it it does, yeah, and it looks like it's here for a little bit longer. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody at Mini Challenge for having us for how long we've been in the championship and, and Chris and Motorwise Motorsports, everybody like uh, who's helped me out for the year and, yeah, without them I couldn't have done it. So It is, it is the perfect end of the season for you. Looking ahead, what does the next season look like? Um, well, hopefully it rains all year. So <laughs> other than that, uh, yeah, no, hopefully we'll be back in the mini challenge. We're just trying to pull in some sponsorship or because at the moment we're funding it ourselves. So it's been a pretty challenging year. So hopefully we can keep the car on track for next year. Mate, well done. Thank you very much. Cheers, buddy. Uh, let's speak once again to the final time this year to uh, Nelson. Um, not the way you wanted to end it. I'm sure you wanted to end it with a win, but it's another podium, 11 wins, 100 plus sort of laps led this year, champion by an absolute mile, seven of eight wins of the first eight races of the season. You smashed it, mate. Thanks. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was enjoyable. Um, me and Lee are old teammates as well. Was that really enjoyable? Yeah, it was enjoyable, to be fair. <laughs> um, yeah, me and Lee have been racing each other for the last two years, and he was teammates with me last year. So it was quite nice to go out fighting him, yeah. uh, and he's hard to fight against. He's, uh, he's a good defender and a good racer, and it was a really fun race. Um, I'll ask you the same question I asked Lee. What's about next season? What's happening? Uh... We can't disclose anything yet. Come on, everybody says that. Yeah. Come on. Um, Give us an exclusive. What are you doing next year? An exclusive is it will be on Toka Package. It's Fantastic. just what it will be on Toka Package. Amazing. It is, is, is a change. That is so exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great to be, be more crowds, more TV coverage and uh, see more fans. Mate, you've been absolutely dominant this year. Well done. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Good luck next year. Uh, I really want to speak to Charlie. Let's have Charlie in. Congratulations on this season with the podium, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it was a really tough race. Conditions were pretty pretty bad out there, but yeah, we kept on the road and held third to the end. I mean, as we've seen all weekend, really, these conditions, they haven't let up whatsoever. It's about who can keep it the cleanest. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely. It's, yeah, it's really tough out there just to, just to keep it on the track. There's a few puddles and awkward places that are making the cars out complain a little bit. But yeah, yeah, we made big progress in the previous race and big progress with the setup of the car Brilliant. and went a lot better in that one. Fantastic. Uh, I've got to ask you the same question to everybody else. What are you doing next year? Not sure yet. There's a lot of options. Um, hopefully a step up, but not sure quite where to yet. But oh, yeah. I'm sure we'll announce something soon. Got the sponsors on board for next year? Uh, should have, yeah. yeah <laughs> should have, yeah. Mate, great. Go and celebrate. Well done. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Uh, I really want to speak to Nathan Edwards. I've been trying to speak to Nathan all weekend. Let's do it. Um, mixed emotions this weekend. Yesterday. Let's talk about yesterday first of all. Ecstasy in there, wasn't it, with your first, uh, first podium. Um, out of everybody in there, you were jumping around the most. It meant a lot to you, didn't it? Yeah, it meant uh, more than it probably does to a podium. I've had a pretty, pretty torrid season, and also my mum passed away in December. Um, so it meant a lot to just the family, just my brother and my dad have done an awesome job. And uh, it was also really good because my main sponsors, Interclens, were there and Singleton Dental Implants. And a big shout out as well to Bright Thinking Online and Sean Vehicle Auctions. Because uh, without them, I wouldn't have happened. And also Accelerate because they've given me like an unbelievable car. Yeah. Um, that proved today one more lap and we'd have probably had third. But, and that would have been a triple podium. So um, really I happy. understand from the second race where you officially finished fourth at the time, that has been upgraded to third as well? Yeah, so Nicky unfortunately got a penalty um, for passing on the yellow flags. Um, that, so that promoted us the third, although we didn't get to stand on the podium. Um, and I was gutted that we didn't get there because I thought we were on for a triple <laughs> podium. But it is what it is. It's still my best weekend in minis and it puts us in good stead next year. And we really want to come back with Accelerate because they've done an awesome job since I've been Like you say, you've got a great team here, great sponsor in our Crawley-based Intercleanse. What have you got planned for next year? 
hopefully this again as I, as I said I really want to come back with the, um, Accelerate because they've done an awesome job and uh, hopefully with Tom Robinson as well and we can go and try and win the championship and um, you've kind of thrived in the rain this weekend haven't you yeah we were really quick at Donington like really quick but just had a problem in qualifying and just mm -hmm. couldn't get through um, so I was a bit gutted that we didn't get to show it there but at least we got to show it here um, and I'm really happy we didn't quite have Lee and uh, Nicky's pace uh, sorry um Nelson. Nelson, that's the one. I forgot. <laughs> he's, he's, he's been too far out the road for everyone. I've forgotten who he is. Uh, no, so well done to him for the championship as well. But um, no, awesome job. Mate, why don't you hope you can bring it to next season too? Yeah, hopefully we'll Look see you forward soon. To seeing you. Cheers, Thank buddy. You. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Nathan. Uh, there we go. That is the end of the Quay Foot Mini Challenge Trophy category for this season. Coming up next, we've got a bit of a break because we've got the Legends on track next. But we still have truck racing to come. And we also have final race of the day. It's going to be the pickup. So do stay with us. We'll see you soon. For the time being, back to Dave. <laughs> Yes, thanks very much indeed, uh, Ewan. The track sweeper just out on track at Surtees to clear up the mud for a moment there. So, ex short oval star and current short oval star as well. He still does his uh, stock cars. Lee Pierce taking uh, his first win of the year there. Another ex short ovaler will be celebrating that win. Quick hello to Danny Kassar, who's uh, watching on, the former Bangor racer. Just to race for a team called uh, the Dirty Half Dozen. I remember his family does a bit of saloon car racing on the circuit, Danny, these days. Last saw him out in a Honda Integra a couple of years ago. So we're going to have a short break now before our final truck race of the season, and then we close out with the pickups. Well, for those of you who uh, weren't tuned in yesterday, we have told you that uh, Ryan Smith secured his seventh consecutive Division One championship, and uh, now we can see how he did it. We're going to show you a replay of race two for the trucks this weekend from yesterday here at Brands Hatch. Is this the race where Ryan Smith makes it seven years in a row as champion? He just needs a few points from this race to secure it. He'll want to seal it with a win. Simon Faulkner at the back of Division 1. Luke Garrett seven points up in Division 2, so he won't secure the title here. Here they come then, Ryan Smith and Stuart Oliver, MAN and Volvo, side by side on the grid. Up towards the red lights, 15 minutes of racing, about to get underway. Is this the race where Ryan Smith becomes champion for another year? We'll find out, we get underway. Down towards that first corner, good start by Ryan Smith, he holds the inside line, decent start by John Newell as well, coming through from row three on the inside of Bradley Smith. They're all bunched up there behind the leaders in Division 1. They plunge down the drop, then up Halewood Rice. Smith has got the lead. Stuart Oliver moves across to defend second place. Bradley Smith trying to go around the outside in the 46. Division 2 getting underway. It's Jock Borthwick has got a good start there, but Sir Luke Garrett trying to lean on him round the first corner. But it's Borthwick who powers into the lead from the outside. Jock Borthwick has got the lead in the early stages in Division 2. Adam Bint in third place, then uh, Brad Smith round the outside of John Bowler to take fourth place. Craig Evans tucked in behind them. Division one, all OK so far. Ryan Smith leads down the Cooper straight. Oliver second. Bradley Smith's up into third place. Craig Reed's dropped back, and Ryan Smith's gone wide, coming into Surtees. Onto the curb there, but he holds it together. Michael Oliver likes going over that bit of track as well. He nearly did again there in the number 12. John Newell's up into fourth. Craig Reed down to fifth, and Stephen Powell's made a good start into sixth in the number three. Running wide there, Tom O'Rourke, he's dropped uh, a few places back off the grid. But Ryan Smith, look at the power of that MAN as he charges away. Look at Bradley Smith round the outside in the 46. This is the best we've seen him run so far. The repairs have certainly worked on his MAN. He's having a go at the 10 times champion Stuart Oliver for second. Through Paddock Ben for the second time. John Newell in fourth place, then Craig Reed. Bradley Smith trying again. Stuart Oliver defending the line. But with Ryan Smith disappearing ahead of him, he can see his championship hopes disappearing. If Ryan Smith wins this, he is confirmed as the champion. A bit of a slide there for Bradley Smith. He drops back coming out of Druids. He's had one podium this year. Then we've got John Newell in fourth position, the Yorkshireman. Craig Evans running wide there at Druids, nearly into the gravel. He's staying ahead of John Powell, who's had a troubled weekend so far in the DAF. Division two is still led by Jock Borthwick. Tom O'Rourke and Mark Taylor leaning on each other there further back. There's nearly some contact there. Craig Reed under fire from Stephen Powell. David Jenkins in seven. They're still leaning on each other, the two white MANs there. 
Mark Taylor comes out ahead. It's getting wetter again out there here at Brands Hatch. The wipers going. Behind these two, it is Michael Oliver. And we've got Ricky Collett in the 95. Down towards Paddock Hill Bend once again. Ryan Smith is clearing off. He leads by over three seconds. He's got the fastest lap as well. He is about to wrap up the championship, surely, unless something uh, goes very wrong indeed for him. Mark Taylor with some battle scars after that uh, bit of a collision with Tom O'Rook. It's been a fairly quiet season for Mark Taylor. Started off as Ryan Smith's sponsor. He's under fire from Tom O'Rook. They make uh, a bit of contact there into Graham Hillbend. They survived that. I thought Mark Taylor was going to be spun out. Trying again as they come down the straight. Michael Oliver wants in on this as well. Ricky Collett behind them and then uh, Simon Cole in the 41. Then we've got the Division 2 leader. Luke Garrett's taken the lead in Division 2. He's caught a glimpse of the orange truck there in the background. So Luke Garrett has retaken Jock Borthwick. We concentrate on this busy battle in Division 1. The main fight at the moment is for eighth place between Taylor and O'Rourke and O'Rourke lost it, he hits the pit ball. Round he goes, spreads mud and dirt all over the main straights. Round he goes and his MAN now looks even more second hand. Division two leaders, hopefully they will see it move out wide. This is going to be Dicey, he's trying to move out of the way. Hopefully he can get going again or the race will have to be stopped again. Yes, everybody's seen him, they've avoided him. He's hit the pit wall, spun around, there's mud all over the circuit. And if, Mark Tate, if um, Tom O'Rourke rather can't get that MAN fired up, it's going to be another red flag. You can't continue racing with a truck stranded in the middle of the Brabham Straits. Yes, I think we may be going red flags again. I can see the truck slowing down. Yes, we have a red flag. Can't continue racing with Tom O'Rourke stranded there. I don't think it was contact with Mark Taylor that spun him round. I think he spun all on his own. We'll see again in a moment. I think we may have to get the track sweeper out to clear up after that one because, yep, he just got sideways all on his own. The MV Commercials boss in the MAN and wallop into the pit wall. Round he goes. Throws muck all over the circuit. Ricky Collett taking to the grass in avoidance. And luckily, everyone was able to see the stranded truck and go wide to miss it, else that could have been a major disaster. Seven and a half minutes of racing to come then. Our final race of the day here at Brands Hatch on day one for BARC TV. They struck into pit lane. Can fly in Ryan, seal title number seven with a win. We're about to find out. Stuart Oliver alongside him. Up towards the lights, a blaze of headlights from the trucks. Waiting for the red lights to go out, waiting for the power to come on. The power comes on, they leap away and here we go. Decent start by Stuart Oliver, good start by John Newell trying to move across on Bradley Smith. And look at Stephen Powell up the outside in the number three, that's brave. Almost three wide into Paddock Bend. I think John Newell's got round the outside of Bradley Smith in the third place. It's side by side for the lead between Smith and Oliver, but Smith's got the advantage into Druids for the first time. Bradley Smith trying to hang on around the outside and he's done so. He stayed alongside John Newell. Can he hold the place? That dive up the outside by Stephen Powell didn't work. Here's Division 2. This time Luke Garrett's got it right. He has pulled away from Jock Borthwick at the start. Third place is Adam Bins ahead of Brad Smith, John Bowler, Craig Evans and John Powell. As they sort themselves out around the first lap and round the outside, Craig Reed on the grass there has pulled ahead of Bradley Smith. Well, unorthodox from Craig Reed, but it seems to have worked as Ryan Smith leads the way from Stuart Oliver. John Newell has held third place. Bradley Smith has dropped back to fifth behind Craig Reed. Then Stephen Powell and David Jenkins. A tough weekend for him so far. Crash into the tyres. That's a restart from the pit lane in race one. Only able to pick up a small number of points. That has uh, effectively written off his championship chances. It's just between Stuart Oliver and Ryan Smith now. And Stuart Oliver has to win. He has to win and get the fastest lap and hope Ryan Smith doesn't score. Ryan is out in front. Surely heading for the title. He leads by one and a half seconds. Mark Taylor on the tail of David Jenkins. Behind him, Ricky Collitz. Leader goes a little bit wide there through Paddock onto the curbing. I said earlier, you don't want to get a rear wheel onto that green painted tarmac because that will uh, lose your grip completely and he might spin around. David Jenkins dives up the inside into Druids, passes Stephen Powell up into sixth position. 
looking to secure third in the championship. Craig Reed a little bit sideways there as he battles with Bradley Smith. Is John Newell still there in third place? Now he could, I think, snatch third in the championship from David Jenkins. He's only uh, a point behind him, yes. So he could snatch third in the championship here from David Jenkins. It'll all be settled uh, once and for all tomorrow, of course, with three more races. Jenkins wants to make a move on Bradley Smith, trying to move up on the 46. Behind him, Mark Taylor under fire from the number 95, which is Ricky Collett. Ryan Smith leads by nearly three seconds. Now he took uh, a second and a half away from uh, Stuart Oliver there. Opened out the lead to 2.9 seconds. Fastest lap of the race, 1 minute 8.7. Only one of the drivers dipped below 1 minute 10 so far in Division 1. That's David Jenkins. And Adam Bintz moves past John Bowler, no, John Brad Smith rather, excuse me. Tries to at least. They're side by side. It's getting darker out there. John Bowler, meanwhile, side by side with Craig Evans as Brad Smith holds the place around the outside. John Powell in behind them. The two uh, more modern MANs, though, of Luke Garrett and uh, Jock Borthwick are well clear. They're two seconds apart, but they're a long way clear of this group. You can see them ahead. John Bowler under fire from Craig Evans. Almost literally there. And Evans goes through. MAN man getting more competitive, gets ahead of the DAF, the other Dutch-built machine of John Powell behind them. Four minutes of the race to go, and Ryan Smith is four minutes away from a seventh consecutive title. As the rain comes down here at Brands Hatch, it's a battle for second in this race. There is Ryan Smith. He's increased his lead by another one and a half seconds on that last lap, near enough. 4.6 seconds clear now of Stuart Oliver, John Newell, Craig Reed still ahead of Bradley Smith, who's under fire from uh, David Jenkins. He wants to catch John Newell, else John will be into third in the championship. There is John sideways out of Druids, and David Jenkins has run wide onto the kerb as well. Bradley Smith sporting the battle scars of race one when he tangled with Tom O'Rourke and Mark Taylor. Taylor in eighth place behind Stephen Powell. There they are. Ninth is Ricky Collins. Got a gap back to tenth, which is Simon Cole, and then the Division Two boys. The gap is closing. 0.7 of a second in it in Division Two. Jock Borthwick's not finished yet. With less than three minutes to go. Ryan Smith. Well out in front. The party will begin down in the pit lane, I'm sure. He's heading for his seventh consecutive championship. There he is. Well out in front. 5.3 seconds now the gap back to Stuart Oliver. Oliver had to win this race and hope that Ryan Smith didn't score. John Newell up there in third. Looks like he could steal third in the championship. From David Jenkins. Well, if things go his way, you never know. There's only eight points covering the next three, so if uh, things go his way tomorrow, he could get second, John Newell. We'll have to wait and see. There's Oliver in second, Newell behind him. Craig Reed still going well in fourth, last year's Division Two champion. We'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out who's going to be the Division Two champion. For 2022. There are the Division Two leaders. They've caught Simon Cole. It's Luke Garrett ahead of Jock Borthwick. And they're well ahead of the rest. That's Simon Faulkner, the last of the Division 1 runners. Third in Division 2 is now Brad Smith. He's got ahead of Adam Bintz. Here's the battle in Division 2. 90 seconds on the clock there. That's the slipperiest part of the circuit now, coming out of Clearways. It's where Tom O'Rourke spun earlier on. Borthwick is not finished yet, nor is David Jenkins. Look at this up on the outside of Craig Reed. Brad Smith, Bradley Smith's already gone through. He's got fourth place away from Craig Reed's Iveco. And now David Jenkins having a go at the Stoke on Trent Driver. Through Druids come the Division 2 leaders. Still Luke Garrett hanging on, looking for win number two. Now, who's got the fastest lap in Division 2? Because every point is vital. 
at this stage. I think it is Borthwick. He's got the quickest lap by four tenths of a second at the moment. It could all change though. Less than a minute on the clock. Ryan Smith is coming round to start his final lap. Oh, Bradley Smith spun. Oh, what a shame. Such a good run he was having. He spun it coming through clear ways. Now, can he get going? Yes, he can. Be careful, Bradley. Don't bog it down in the gravel. Oh, could have Garrett hit him? Oh, my goodness. What happened there? Luke Garrett went wide at clearways. He smashed into Bradley Smith's truck. Now, that could change things in Division 2. Certainly in this race, but for the championship, we'll have to wait and see. There's Brad Smith. He can't believe it. He could get ahead here. Meanwhile, the clock is about to count down to zero. But are we going to finish under the red flag? Well, the clock's just gone down to zero, so it will be check and flag this time anyway. Ryan Smith, he's already celebrating. There's nobody anywhere near him. He's nearly seven seconds clear at the line. And here comes the man from Nottinghamshire. He used to be number 88, but we haven't seen that for a few years. Stuart Oliver defending from John Newell for second. They're going to come through. They're going to let them come through to the chequered flag, I think. Round clear ways for the last time. Well, he had to cope with a change of truck in mid-season when he sold his bonneted Daimler for this MAN. But coming in across the line here at Brands Hatch to confirm himself as champion. It's seventh heaven for flying Ryan Smith. Seven championships in a row. Well clear of Stuart Oliver in second. John Newell is third. Then Craig Reed fourth. David Jenkins is fifth. Stephen Powell will come over in sixth. Then it's Mark Taylor and Ricky Collett. What about Division 2? It's going to be Jock Borthwick, I think. Simon Cole is there. Yes, Jock Borthwick all on his own. Wins Division 2. And I think he'll get, and he'll get fastest lap as well. But Ryan Smith cuts loose in celebration. Seven titles in a row. And another step towards matching the 10 of Stuart Oliver. Borthwick's won Division 2, second for Brad Smith and third for Adam Bintz. We'll have to see how that's affected the championship. Luke Garrett only finishing fifth in Division 2 after... Well, I don't know if there was some contact there with Jock Borthwick. We'll try and see that again if we can. But um, Garrett went wide and Brad Smith was already in the gravel and he cannoned into the side of him. An extraordinary incident there. That could have a bearing on the Division 2 championship. We'll have to uh, do the mathematics in a moment, but first of all, we will uh, give Ryan Smith his moment. We'll see it again here. Brad Smith just trying a little bit too hard to catch John Newell, went spinning around. Almost a full 360. I thought he was going to bog down in the gravel and we'd have uh, the race stopped, but he tried to get going again. But then uh, a little further round clearways came Luke Garrett's. No, I don't, there was no contact there, and then smash. Jock Borthwick and Brad Smith couldn't believe it. For oh, his championship, absolute top mechanic, Arnie, was ready with the stickers. Don't forget, this time last year, they had hats at the ready. They were waiting. They knew that this was going to happen. Pan round, we see the team gathering for handshakes and hugs. Top sponsor as well, Keith Sins from Northside Truck and Van. Uh, quick word, you've got to be happy with that result. Absolutely over the moon. It seems Absolutely. emotional, I can, now, I can now relax. Relax. I don't know about relax. You watch your one another truck next year, mate. You've got to you yeah. got to the head of you. No. Here we go. He's getting out the truck now. Everybody congratulating him. So we can shut this door. Watch your back. Circuit photographs. Ryan Smith, congratulations. Be pushing in front of all your teammates. Billy, Arnie, brother Rich, Ned, Pablo. The team, the whole team, come on in guys, come on, let's bring you forward a bit, let's fit you all in the shot. Ryan, congratulations, you, you were very modest before saying, correcting me, no, no, I've still got two points to get, you, you've, you've got a lot more than two points there, didn't you? Yeah, look, I said it before, we can only drive the equipment that the mechanics give you and, you know, the past months that the main mechanics had with his father, you know, we dedicate that seventh title to Mick Parkin and Janet Parkin, his dad, who who created, you know, a phenomenon who, with no qualifications from from a truck or seven years ago, never even took touched a truck, and without him, you know, none of this would have been possible. So that's for Mick Parkin, 
the sponsors here, Keith Sims, yeah. if you'd like we to have in. a quick word. We've been kicked off. We have spoken to Keith. He's very happy. Well, it's all very full throttle here. As you can see, the schedule's a little bit behind. But Ryan Smith, Division One champion of 2022, drivers coming over. <laughs> Stefan from Team Newell. It really is a fantastic atmosphere. So you've done your dedications. You've done your thank yous. Tell us, you know, the thought process you went through this year. It's been up and down, but you've still managed to smash the championship. You know, I think that's what the amazing thing is about this championship. I think, you know, we're at war one minute and then we'll get each other the next. And it's, it's, it's a weird relationship, but I think it's everybody's desire to win. And I think, you know, I'm the same. I don't want to lose. I don't want to finish second. And nor does the other competitors. And there can only be one winner. And luckily, luckily enough, it's, it's me. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Keith Sims, um, MD of Northside Truck and Van. You know, without him, he, he's, he's changed my approach off track as well as on track and he's helped me learn to be a better person. And, you know, we'll carry on building and we'll carry on. We'll come back next year with a, a, a new Daimler, I believe. Um, you know, it's time. It's time we had a new truck. We're going to do a few events in Europe. We're going to spread his wings a little bit. But for now, I want to enjoy it with my team. I want to, I want to soak it in because it's surreal. Because it feels like yesterday when I started racing, I've been in it eight years. I'm seven years A-class champion, which is some feat I don't think it's ever been done before. And you know what? I still get up in the morning with that fire in my belly to do it. And this chap here, ten times champion. Ten times. He's Stuart, he's, he's catching up with you now. Have you got any words of wisdom? Well, I'm just concerned that he peaked, but he obviously can still do it. So, we'll see. <laughs> me, and, me and Stuart have dominated the sport over the last many years. He's ten times champion. He's got the one European champion that I ultimately won. You know, it's... it's Always remember that one, Stuart. But this is, a, this, this, this is the calibre of person you're racing against, somebody yeah. with that same desire as you, and there can only be one winner, and he's a worthy second place if he gets it. Definitely. Well, fingers crossed. And yeah, yeah, you take another fantastic result there. Ryan Smith, another round of applause for Ryan Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Two races to go here at Brands Hatch. And uh, as you can see, well, I won't say it because I'll put the uh, curse of the commentator on things. We are almost ready for our last truck race of the season, the British Truck Racing Championship, ready to reach its climax. As we've just seen, uh, Division 1 is all wrapped up, except for the runner-up place in the championship. That's still being contested, but Division 2 is still to be decided. Race 3 this morning, uh, results decide the grid for this one, with the top 8, so once again each division flipped around. So it's Bradley Smith, number 46, who will be on pole alongside 41, Simon Cole. Second row, 95, Ricky Collins, and 68 of Craig Reed. Row three, Tom O'Rourke, 86, and number 69, David Jenkins. Mark Taylor will start on row four alongside Stephen Powell, the winner of race three. Didn't really get to uh, see him celebrating after that one because of the red flag. Then on row five, Simon Faulkner, number 92. Uh, Michael Olive will not be starting due to damage sustained in that pileup. A tail would rise earlier on today. And some big names from the back of the grid that didn't finish the race this morning. Ryan Smith and Stuart Oliver together on row six. And John Newell starts from the back. Then there's a gap and we've got Division 2. And look who's back, Pole. The man who uh, is going for the championship. Luke Garrett alongside John Bowler. And his rival Brad Smith starting right behind him. Brad Smith needs to win. And hope that Luke Garrett finishes lower than fifth to take the title. Smith starts alongside Craig Evans, then John Powell and Adam Bint, Jock Borthwick starts from the back. As for second place in Division 1, there's only one point between Stuart Oliver and David Jenkins. And John Newell is six points further back, so we'll wait and see how that plays out in the results. I won't go through all the permutations, I don't want to bore everyone. Many would say I do that enough anyway. But anyway, we are ready for our final... Uh, I jest, of course. Our final truck race uh, of the season. It certainly has been a lively weekend despite the weather. There are a chance now perhaps for our truckers to let their hair down a little. Just as soon as the circuit is ready, we will see them uh, 
out onto track. One race to go after that, which will be the finale for the pickup truck racing championship before we will bring you the firework display as well. At the end of the uh, program, we'll have a short highlight reel from this weekend before uh, I sign off for the weekend and we leave you with the firework display to round out what's been a wonderful 2022 season here on BARC TV. Thank you to everyone who has made the BARC season possible, all the volunteer marshals and other circuit staff. Circuit staff have been kept busy this weekend, a few repairs to tyre walls and so on. And trackside recovery have been busy as well. They had a lot of clearing up to do after the truck race this morning, which has set the grid for this finale to the season. In the pickup truck championship, meanwhile, I can tell you... Uh, Reese Jones has a lead of 175 points over Dale Gents. Mark Willis a further six points behind him. And then a further 13 points back is George Tariki, but he's not racing. So it's just between those three at the top for the title. I can see some movement in the outer paddock, so I think we're getting trucks out onto track in just a moment. You can just see them above the bridge on the right of your screen there. And young Bradley Smith, the youngest man in the championship, will line up on pole, having been eighth in this morning's race. It's wonderful to see him take his maiden win to sign off the season. Simon Cole alongside, only his second appearance this year. Of course, most of the rounds giving a maximum of 20 trucks on the grid at a time. So the only time that uh, maximum was uh, relaxed was a convoy in the park at Donington Park in August, and uh, Simon and Paul Rivette were able to join the grid. Simon, no longer Mercedes-powered, now in the MAN and now in Division 1. Came in as a reserve this weekend to replace Simon Reid. And Simon Cole will start on the second position on the grid here, ahead of Ricky Collett in the 95. Started on pole earlier on, but dropped back. And alongside him will be Craig Reed, both of their haulage company bosses. Rick Collett's uh, a heavy haulage specialist. Some of the biggest loads on Britain's roads hauled by Collett's heavy haulage. I remember in my local area a couple of years ago, some gigantic oxygen tanks transported uh, at low speed through the area by Collins and their uh, ultra heavy haulage trailers with pusher trucks as well it certainly was a very impressive sight to see of course they couldn't go down the motorways because they wouldn't fit under the bridges so a route had to be carefully planned through more rural areas and uh, the logistics of planning such a journey takes some time to set up and a lot of planning you have to plan where there are obstacles on route such as bridges, trees, phone wires, and so on. Cooperation of the uh, police and everybody else as well. The Collett family have been doing so for many, many years. There is Ricky Collett, third on the grid in the yellow MAN. Craig Reed, also a haulage company owner from Stoke on Trent, fourth on the grid in his Ivico, the uh, reigning Division 2 champion. There's Tom O'Rourke from Southern Scotland. David Jenkins from Staffordshire. Mark Taylor back out. Based in Nottinghamshire. Then we've got Stephen Powell based literally in exhaust roar from Brands Hatch. Simon Faulkner's there as well. And then some big names from the back. Smith, Oliver and Newell. Well, let's head down to Ewan and Pointy. They're down on the grid. Well, hello there. And I did tell you, first of all, that it was going to be sunny today, you and, and as promised, delivered. I'd like you to borrow this cup, actually. Oh, no, no, my hair. It's, it's all, it's a mess. It's glorious. <laughs> it's incredible. It's glorious. It is good, isn't it? It's beautiful. I do want to speak even better. Go on. Craig, behind us. Look at this. Give us a shout, Craig. Come on. Yeah. Oh, they, they are. They, <laughs> bear in mind, it's been a very, very, very wet day here. And I mean, the fact we've got any sunshine a break in the clouds is an absolute miracle another miracle is that considering what's been going on today we've got any trucks left on track it's been incredible it's been a great end to the season 
thankfully right now we've had four very wet races. Mm. The ground is going to be damp, but if we turn around in a second, it is glorious this afternoon. The trucks are just coming around here. Everything to play for in Div 2. Just look at this angle, Dan, if you can. I know it's directly into the sunlight, but the, the, the angle of these trucks coming over the horizon, lining up for their last race of the season. Now, we need to talk about Division 1 just quickly. Obviously, first place already decided earlier on yesterday, Ryan Smith taking first. However, after the results we saw in the previous race, Dave Jenkins, Stuart Oliver, both on 355 points, which means this race will decide the second place position. And they're not far off each other here. It's going to be an incredible end to the season. It's very rare, although we knew Ryan was always going to win this within one race earlier on, we knew that coming into Brands Hatch, but second and third was everything to play for. But it to be level on points with 15 minutes left of racing this season on a greasy track at Brands Hatch <laughs> with an absolutely sold out crowd yeah. doesn't get much better. Indeed it doesn't. I mean, we have seen some serious racing here, especially the last weekend. The season's looking back in the past. We've had some serious incidents on the last race as well. We've had all sorts of controversy over the years so let's see if this is a nice calm good result or whether it could turn to absolute carnage no one really knows moving back to division two then of Ooh. course yes that really is so too tight to call jock borthwick looking like uh, third is going to be difficult we've got the one minute warning coming out for clearing of the grid uh, <laughs> one of our sponsors from vision track over there taking a quick picture stood behind another sponsor's truck the trp uh, pace truck so we are being told to clear now one last shot of young Bradley Smith in pole position for the start of this race. And of course, Simon Carl, we spoke to his uh, team manager yesterday. It's going to be an interesting start to the race. But hey, what a hell of a way to finish the season. It's been an exciting weekend. It could still be getting more exciting. Only time will tell. But I think it's time I hand back today, probably for the last time before a race, Put your money on, Division 2, who's taking it? Oh, Brad Smith. There we go, I agree with you. Brad Smith, watch this space. I made it sunny, right. Dave, let's run them through the standing orders and see where they're going to start this race. Back to you in the studio. Cheers, Point C, just call in the Martin Brundle of truck racing. Martin Brundle has raced trucks on a couple of occasions in the early days of the sport, back in the 80s. We've already given you the grid and uh, everybody except Michael Oliver is uh, present and correct as far as I could see. We know he's withdrawn. Now, uh, I've got um, Stuart Oliver a point ahead of David Jenkins, but uh, as Pointy said, Pointy says they're both level, so I may have miscalculated somewhere. But we'll wait and see how it plays out, who's going to take second in the championship. John Newell a few, a few points further back, as the pace truck leads them away. Bradley Smith looking for his first ever outright win in pole position. Simon Cole looking for his first Division 1 win alongside Ricky Collett and Craig Reed on the second row. Craig's had a couple of wins this year. Toro Rourke I think has had one win this year. Then David Jenkins, Taylor, Powell, Faulkner. So Michael Oliver, there's Ryan Smith, there's Stuart Oliver a little further forward than where he should be. John Newell at the back and then we've got our seven Division 2 contenders Luke Garrett having struck lucky because he's at the front that's where he needs to be don't forget Brad Smith has to win and Luke Garrett finish outside the top five for Brad to take the title by my calculations well we saw Luke Garrett hit problems in race two yesterday that sun might cause some visibility issues coming down the Cooper Strait and again, uh, the drivers have spent most of this weekend hardly able to see anything for spray. It is time then for the season finale for the 2022 British Truck Racing Championship. What an incredible season we have had all over the UK. It is time for race 35, the last race of the year. Bradley Smith and Simon Cole on the front row. Luke Garrett and John Bowler head up Division 2. The red lights are on, on the gantry. The pack about to be unleashed. The drivers to let their hair down for one last time. 15 minutes of racing. The revs are up and here we go. 
Great start by David Jenkins up the outside. He'll be fired up going into this one in truck number 69. But it is Bradley Smith who takes off into the lead and by quite a clear margin around uh, Paddock Ben for the first time. Ricky Collett up into second place. Third place, Simon Cole alongside Craig Reed. A bit of spray still about, as you can see. They need to be careful around this opening lap, just finding where the uh, more wet patches are on the circuits. Made it through Ryan Smith towards the back in the number one. Simon Cole has dropped back a little. It's Collett second, Reed third. Here come Division Two, and it's three wide. Look at Brad Smith on the attack already. He's gone straight up the inside of everybody into Druids. And Luke Garrett can't believe it. He's relegated to third. Brad Smith's taken the lead of the class. What a brilliant start by the man who needs to win here to take the championship. And look at Jock Baldwin coming through as well. Garrett's going backwards. Well, we said that. Uh, Garrett needed to finish outside the top five and Brad Smith win for Brad to snatch the title and Luke Garrett's in trouble, he's dropped back to fourth. Brad Smith's leading the class. Now, could the uh, seemingly unthinkable happen here? There's a big uh, chunk of bodywork flapping from John Bowler's daft. There's been some contact there at Paddock, I think, the wheel arch flapping off. Oh, John Newell spun and he's if he's stuck in the grass, that could be a red flag if John can't get going again from there. John Powell and Adam Bint go through. Hill come Division 1, it is uh, Bradley Smith leading from Craig Reed in second, here comes Tom O'Rourke, he's got quicker as the weekend went on, he leans Ricky Collett out wide, and O'Rourke goes through past Collett, David Jenkins in behind them, a frustrating weekend for him so far, strong words from him when he was interviewed earlier on, There's Stephen Powell dropping back into the clutches of Ryan Smith who's not made the quickest of starts this one, Mark Taylor's dropped back, his truck battered and bruised after incidents earlier in the weekend when he collided with Michael Oliver and here come Division 2 with Brad Smith in the lead. Garrett is fourth. Now what would that mean for the points? Just put it into working out. If it stays this way Luke Garrett will be championed by two points. Depends who gets fastest lap as well goes to a tie break and I'm not sure what will happen because if Garrett finishes sixth and Brad Smith wins the class they're going to be level on points. Imagine Luke Garrett would take it on uh, race wins. That's the uh, tie break criteria. We will double check if that happens. As Bradley Smith meanwhile continues to lead from Craig Reed. It's Tom O'Rourke up in the third then Jenkins, Collins, Stuart Oliver. Ryan Smith is up to seven. Stephen Powell's dropped back, so has Simon Cole. Stuart Oliver is catching Collins. Here come Division Two, and now Jock Borthwick's got ahead of John Bowler. It's a wheel onto the curb there, gets a bit sideways, the Scotsman. Garrett knows he can't afford to uh, lose any more places. Stays like this at the moment. He'll take the title by two points ahead of Brad Smith. That was a great start by Brad in the number 16 Unity Recovery DAF. Leeds Division 2 looking for his first win of the weekend. And Garrett did not make the most of his pole position the line they go. Jock Borthwick could be about to put a spanner in the works here for Brad Smith because he wants to sign off his first full season in the sport with a class win. He's going for Brad Smith. This is the last thing Brad needs. Jock Borthwick uh, can't win the championship now. He's uh, some 45 points down on the two leaders. With only 16 maximum available from this race. Mark Taylor in pit lane. Not further problems with him from the damage earlier on, I would wager. He's getting going again, though. John Newell's got going again. He's got out of the grass. He's at least a lap down. Must be a couple of laps down. Still your leader is Bradley Smith, but uh, Craig Reed has done the fastest lap of the race in second place. As Borthwick starts to put Brad Smith under pressure. There's John Newell behind them. John Bowler still third in the class, then we've got Luke Garrett. There's John Powell. It's been a quiet weekend for John. 
Likewise, Craig Evans. Ryan Smith, meanwhile, all over the back of Ricky Collins, ahead of them, Stuart Oliver. Trucks all, all sporting various battle scars. Bradley Smith continues to lead. Ryan Smith just on the fastest lap, 109.092. Half a second in it for the lead. Craig Reed looking to finish off his season with a win. Where's Where's Luke Garrett? Luke Garrett's not there. He what? There, there he is. I thought he'd uh, gone wide at Paddock. I thought he'd gone into the gravel. He's still there behind uh, John Bowler. He must have run wide there. Momentary scare there. We thought we'd lost the uh, 42. There's Simon Falk with the number 92 just ahead of the Division 2 battlers. John Borthwick gets sideways. John Newell on his tail. And an attack on from Garrett now on the back of John Bowler. Howell behind. Bradley Smith still your leader, but Craig Reed is getting the gap down in Division 1. He's done the fastest lap, 108.830. We're concentrating uh, more on the Division 2 battle in this one, or their championship. Because if Jock Borthwick should get past Brad Smith, that could end his hopes. He's got to stay in the lead of the class. Fourth in classes, Garrett. Oh, Brad, Bradley Smith's off. Oh, what a shame. He could have been on for his first Division One victory. He's down to uh, at least eighth or ninth place now. He's gone straight on at Surtees over the mud. So that gives Craig Reed the lead in truck number 68. It'll be Tom O'Rourke up into second place, having his best. No, it's David Jenkins that's come over the line in second. We'll see what happened. Is there any contact there? No, Bradley Smith just slid sideways. He spun it. What a disappointment. Best we've seen Bradley Smith run this year. He missed the last three rounds with uh, damage to his engine. Came back this weekend. He took a lot of damage yesterday, which his crew have repaired. David Jenkins has got ahead of Tom O'Rourke up into second place. And uh, that's Mark Taylor. Now, he's a lap down because we saw him come into the pits earlier on. But look at the way Stuart Oliver's going. In fourth place now, Ryan Smith behind him in fifth. So the big names from the back of the grid now starting to make their way through. There's the leader, Craig Reed, in the 68. Bradley Smith has got going again. He's now in eighth position. Stuart Oliver. Excuse me, Mark Taylor, he says. I want to come through and lap you. Well, I want to pass you, Stuart Oliver, says Ryan Smith. tries again. Mark Taylor is lap traffic the number 81 so he should really let the quicker runners by here. Out of the sun they come. They've got past Mark Taylor now. Oliver and Smith fourth and fifth. There's David Jenkins giving chase to Craig Reed. Is he lapping any quicker? No he's not. Craig Reed's well out in front by four and a half seconds. It looks like the Evico man He's going to take what I think will be his third win of the season. Ryan Smith nearly loses it. Almost off into the gravel there at Druids. Stays ahead of Ricky Collins. And now he's got to pass Mark Taylor again. Make swift work of that into Graham Hill Bend. Six minutes of the season to go. Reed leads it from Jenkins, O'Rourke, Oliver. Stuart Oliver cuts the corner a bit there at Surtees. What about Division 2? Is it still Brad Smith with the lead? Yes, it is. He's got ahead of Simon Faulkner now. He's put Simon Faulkner as a buffer between himself and the opposition. Now, Luke Garrett has got ahead of John Bowler. He's up to third in the division because it's Jock Borthwick in second. Garrett is third in the division, and that would be enough to secure him the title. Check that on my spreadsheet. That's Smith to get 15 for the win. Garrett third would get 13. He'd win the title by three points. 
There is Brad Smith. He's got John Newell and Simon Cole behind him now. There's Jock Borthwick, second in the division. So he's got Division 1 trucks as a buffer. Simon Cole seems to be struggling a bit. This is impressive from uh, Brad Smith. John Newell, of course, is uh, a couple of laps down because he went off earlier on and had to rejoin on the inside of Clearways. Four and a half minutes to go. I imagine Brad Smith uh, will be being told where Luke Garrett is. His crew will be trying to signal it to him. He knows he's got to win the class. Northwick in second. Should be Garrett who comes through in third place. The orange MAN. Yes, there he is. Not clear of John Bowler. John Borthwick has now got ahead of Simon Cole. I think Simon might have a problem with his MAN. Ryan Smith has done the fastest lap, 1 minute 8036. Craig Reed leads by over six seconds ahead of David Jenkins. Yaviko has been very rapid this week, and there's Jenkins. He still can't shake off Tom O'Rourke, who in turn is under a lot of pressure from Stuart Oliver. Ryan Smith is fifth. Ricky Collett rounding out the top six. Ahead of Stephen Powell. There he is. Mark Taylor a couple of laps behind after his pit stop. And there's Bradley Smith. He'll be frustrated. Down to eight, having led the way for the first few laps. Still the battle for second rages. We'll uh, work out who's going to finish second in the championship as well. It's not going to be John Newell after he spun earlier on. Looks as though it could well be David Jenkins. So he'll get 14 points for second. Stuart Oliver will get 12 as he comes John Bowler. He's got a problem. That's a shame. Now if Jenkins finishes second and Oliver fourth, David Jenkins will get second in the championship by one point. Now if Stuart Oliver gets past Tom O'Rourke into third and they finish second and third that'll put uh, the cat among the pigeons because they'll be joint second by my reckoning anyway pointy reckon they were joint second before this race in which case uh, Jenkins would take second in the championship with this result meanwhile Ryan Smith could be about to put an end to that theory because he's catching Stuart Oliver here he comes Oliver was briefly held up there by Tom O'Rourke trying to get through into third his bits of wheel arch littering the gravel traps if Ryan Smith gets ahead of Stuart Oliver that will uh, secure second in the championship for David Jenkins but here comes the uh, lightweight MAM most of its bodywork missing somebody going through the gravel there in the background who was that? it was Stephen Powell he's recovered and kept going Jenkins, O'Rourke, Oliver and Smith for second place Craig Reed's away and gone. He's got this race in the bag, barring any major disaster. There's John Newell. Where is he placed in Division 1 now? 12th, so uh, he won't get many points from this race. I think he'll pick up four. Ryan Smith on to get 12 points, because he's uh, currently got the fastest lap, so he'll get an extra point. Here's our leader in Division 2, it is still Brad Smith. Northwick second, Garrett is further back in third in the division. A long way behind though. Jock Borthwick is catching Brad Smith. Look at this, Jock Borthwick's caught him again. Scotsman trying for the class lead. If Borthwick gets through, then it will definitely be all over because Brad Smith needs to win the class to keep his hopes alive and hope that Sir Garrett finishes further back. Adam Bint, where's he going? Across the grass at Surtees, Craig Evans sideways as well. Bint saved it, I hope Craig Evans does as well. There's uh, Garrett still running third in the division. John Powell fourth, Adam Bint is fifth. We haven't seen too much of Adam this weekend as here comes Borthwick. Brad Smith has got to keep him behind for just under a lap because the clock is about to count down to zero. Craig Reed's going to win the last race of the season in Division 1. But who's going to be the winner in Division 2? 
Craig Reed seven seconds ahead. He's going to take the Division 1 win. Checkered flag is out. We'll stick with Division 2 because the title is about to be decided. Brad Smith holding the lead ahead of Borthwick. Where is Luke Garrett is the only question now. And through the final corner, Brad Smith, is he going to hang on? He's done all he can. He's held off Jock Borthwick. He made a super start to take the lead down the inside. Reed's won it ahead of Jenkins and O'Rourke in Division 1. We'll pick that up in a moment as Brad Smith comes in to win Division 2. Second for Jock Borthwick but providing Luke Garrett appears in the next few seconds to take third in the class he will be the Division 2 champion for the third time in his career Simon Faulkner is flagged in in 11th overall there's Simon Cole over the line and we await the orange MAN there's John Bowler a lap down and there is Luke Garrett he wins the Division 2 title Craig Reed Reed wins the race overall Brad Smith did uh, all he could there. But Luke Garrett is Division 2 champion by three points. Wait confirmation of who's got the fastest lap point there as well. It's uh, not really relevant now. I imagine it's Jock Borthwick. We'll just uh, have a double check of that. It's Jock Borthwick gets the uh, consolation point for fastest lap, so he gets 15 points from that race. Original result then, Craig Reed won it overall by seven seconds ahead of David Jenkins. That will secure David uh, provisionally the runner-up place in the championship as well. Tom O'Rourke, an excellent third ahead of Stuart Oliver and Ryan Smith and towards the back of the Division 1 grid. Ricky Collett, sixth ahead of Stephen Powell and the unlucky Bradley Smith who spun out of the lead. Brad Smith wins Division 2 in ninth overall, just ahead of John Borthwick. Simon Faulkner and uh, Simon Cole next home. Luke Garrett has the biggest smile on his face right now. 13th place, third in Division 2 and he wins the title by the scant margin of three points. John Powell, 14th. Adam Bint, despite some grass tracking, takes 15th place. The other finishers, Craig Evans, John Bowler and Mark Taylor, who both made pit stops. And John Newell had to recover out of the grass after a spin, bringing up the rear. Just uh, put the points into the spreadsheet then and uh, confirm who has finished where in the championship I think John Newell only picks up uh, four points for that race so he'll take fourth in the standings fastest lap of that race in division one went to Ryan Smith he picks up 12 wins the title by a margin of 66 points by my reckoning David Jenkins takes second in the standings by one point ahead of Stuart Oliver we'll have that confirmed officially and in uh, Division 2, it is the championship for Luke Garrett. Final celebrations will take place then. As the curtain comes down. The British truck racing season 2022. For the final word, we hand over to Pointing. Fantastic finish to the 2022 season. I'm here with Division 2 first place champion Luke Garrett. Luke, how are you doing, mate? A few points clear there. You must be happy with that. Um, yeah, uh, this is a special win for us, mate. I've been in for a tough year this year, so um, with my mum dying and stuff. So, yeah, um, I don't even know what to say, but thank you to my team and, and Apollo, and yeah, just couldn't have done it without them. And what was your mum's name, Luke? Susan, the same as my truck. Susan, well, I think we're going to dedicate that race to Susan and the championship as a whole. What a fantastic result for you, the family, everybody. Yeah, it's been a great, it's been brilliant. It's been obviously Brad, give it to Brad Smith, obviously finishing most races through the season. Um, yeah, it's been a tough one and it's certainly been challenging. But yeah, it's it's probably that we won it in 2018 and 29, but this is the most special one. Well, let me shake your hand officially, sir. Congratulations to Luke Garrett. Absolutely incredible effort. They stuck with it the entire year. And to think just a couple of years ago, we thought we weren't going to see you back 
in the championship and, and yet here you are and you've taken the Division 2 champion for you. Oh, I couldn't be happy for you, sir. The amount of team respects as well. Huge orange army that he's got. I'm going to hand over to Chaz Draycott now. Chaz, that was a hell of a race to commentate on, wasn't it, buddy? It was, yeah. Fantastic fun. Absolutely <laughs> excellent. I mean, I'm down here doing the pit lane interviews and I'm loving life. It's mega to be here at Brands Hatch. It's incredible. Oh, it's thanks for fun. being here, buddy. Nice I'll speak to you soon, but take it easy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we see now, the trucks will shortly be making their way back to Park Ferme. And that, of course, concludes our 2022 season here at Brands Hatch and, of course, everywhere around the UK. On behalf of Truck Sport UK, BTRC and, of course, our sponsors, very important sponsors, I might add, thank you so much for joining us along this journey, following us through the different uh, parts of the season and just having a great time along with us. We hope to see you again in 2023, but definitely for the last time in 22. Dave, it's back to you in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for everything this season uh, from Pointy. What a guy said the Martin Brundle of truck racing it's been great entertainment to uh, have Pointy on board as our uh, paddock reporter and uh, part Ferme interviewer for the British Truck Racing Championship this season we'll see you next season Pointy one race to go here on BARC TV 2022 it is the second race the championship decider for the pickup truck racing championship this race will take place over 18 laps the uh, race earlier on was short by a lap due to a being a little bit short of time this morning. The grid will line up uh, according to time set in the second part of the qualifying session yesterday. And again with the top six flipped around. So the fastest uh, qualifying driver starts sixth. Six fastest starts on pole. The championship is led by Rhys Jones, number 40. And he will be starting third on the grid. He leads by 175 points by my calculation over Dale Gent in second place. Mark Willis, a further six points further back. Those are the three title contenders. It's David O'Regan, the Irishman who starts on pole in number eight, alongside number 93, Michael Smith. Second row, Reese Jones, the champion elect going into this one, alongside number 72, Alan Cooper. And Aaron Thompson, watch out for him. We saw what he can do charging through the field in race one. Lines up in number 41 alongside the race one winner, 30, Matt Simpson. Row four is Dale Gent, alongside fellow title contender, Mark Willis. Fifth row, Tom Hutchins, started on pole in race one, fell back and uh, eventually retired. Starts alongside the 21 of Dean Tompkins. Row six is number 39 of Danny Hun, alongside the two of Jamie Liptrot. He retired from race one. Danny Hun came on strong for sixth place in the first race in the closing stages. Seventh row, 51 Gavin Pike, hoping to get a race this time. Suddenly failed to start the first race. Alongside number three, Jeff Simpson, Simpson Senior. Row 8 is number 12, Paul Tompkins, quite a way down the grid for him, alongside Pat Keeley in number 56. Row 9, 37 of Neil Tressler and 52, James Goldstraw. And we should hopefully see number 13, Richard Ayling, start at the back. He failed to start race 1. Says to me he may have had problems in qualifying. Hopefully we'll see his green truck at the back of the grid. If not, it's uh, certainly unlucky 13 for him. Ready to race into the sunset here at Brands Hatch. We'll be uh, hanging around with our live stream cameras for the firework display, don't worry. I will fall silent at that point because I'm sure you don't want me uh, talking over the fireworks. It's been a wonderful season this year, sir. Following BARC Motorsport around the UK. Venues such as uh, Silverstone, Brands Hatch, Donington, Pembrey, Thruxton, Snetterton. All comes to a climax, our last race of the season. Pickup Truck Racing Championship will be decided. Uh, Rhys Jones just needs uh, a decent finish here to take the title. He'll want to sign off with a win, though, on his local circuit, the man from Hearn Bay here in Kent. Take 
take uh, the opportunity to say thanks to all of you for watching, those who have supported VARC TV across the course of the season. Let's finish with a crack. David O'Regan on pole. Michael Smith, Reese Jones and, my, and uh, Alan Cooper behind him. See if everybody's there towards the uh, back of the grid. Looks like we are missing Richard Ayling, unfortunately, just 18 trucks out there. So Richard Ayling goes down as DNR, did not race. That's a great shame. Let me assume he had a problem in qualifying. towards the rolling start for this 18 lap race then David O'Regan on pole looking for his uh, what I think will be his first win of the season in the pickup truck racing championship there's Neil Tressler with James Goldstraw at the back of the field the revs are up and away we go so causing a few problems for our cameras as well as for the drivers so our apologies there and it is David O'Regan who will take the lead from pole position on the inside somebody going around the outside that's Alan Cooper in the 72 it is still very slippery out there as you can see Reese Jones has made a bad start he's dropped back into the pack look at Matt Simpson up the inside in the number 30 truck he's up to second he could take the lead as they go into Graham Hill there that's a fantastic start from Simpson side by side with Michael Smith Cooper's dropped back to third place and Rhys Jones has really been shuffled out. He's down to eighth as they head into the Cooper straight for the first time. Well, let's we'll have to see if he can fight his way back up there. Not the start Rhys wanted at all. Mark Willis going wide. He can't go three wide through there. Alan Cooper's fishtailing already. Matt Simpson's through into second. But it is Michael Smith, number 93, former champion who leads the way. One of the more experienced pickup truck racers. He and Mark Willis, the most experienced men in this class of racing on the grid see Gavin Pikes out there this time so he's at least going to get some racing laps in here they come over the line it is Smith from Simpson Willis Cooper O'Regan the pole sitters down to fifth Dean Tompkins has had a good run in the early stages up into sixth position Reese Jones only seventh oh, and uh, Alan Cooper there again we see get, you get a rear wheel out onto that curb it's a uh, the exit of Paddock, it will nearly spin you round. He nearly did that a couple of times in race one. He did spin, but at the other end of the circuit eventually. It's Michael Smith, number 93, leads the way. The man from Hartlepool. Matt Simpson chasing in second place. The Berkshire driver looking for a double win today. Now here comes Rhys Jones. He's on the fight back after a bad start. There's a bit of debris there in the middle of the road. They're all trying to miss it. Alan Cooper side by side with Mark Willis. They bounce off each other. Mark Willis threw in the third place in the 65. Alan Cooper, it's like watching James Ibbotson in his Hillman Imp. Classic touring car fans will know what I'm on about. So as Reese Jones is now on the charge, he's already got ahead of Dean Tompkins. He's now going for David O'Regan up the uh, pit straight there. Has he got through on the outside? We'll see as they go into Paddock Hill Ben. Is it the pink truck into fifth? Yes, it is. So Reese Jones going very nicely now as he fights back after that slow start. Danny Hunt cuts his way ahead of Aaron Thompson. Paddock Hill Bend. Cooper from one side to the other attacks. Mark Willis, meanwhile, Matt Simpson had uh, drawn into the lead there just before the start finish line ahead of Michael Smith. We're watching Reese Jones further back because he is the man favourite to win the championship. Mark Willis going for the outside on Michael Smith. No, you don't, says Michael. The pickup veterans battling it out. Here comes Alan Cooper, one of the relative newcomers. He's had a couple of wins this year on the inside and takes fourth position Jones trying to follow Cooper's so sideways nobody knows which side to pass him on look he's all over the place he's dancing that truck around career as an ice racer coming up here for Alan Cooper I think over the winter to take part in the Andros Trophy in France over the line goes Matt Simpson then Smith Willis Cooper Jones is fifth I think that will be enough to win in the title third contender Dale Gents has dropped right back he's down in 17th place as they cross the line so Gents I'm wondering if he's had a spin somewhere 
further back in the pack. His championship chances are surely over. It's going to take something special for Mark Willis to overhaul Jones. Jones just needs to stay where he is and he will take the title. Dean Tompkins on his tail. Really, it's going to take a no score for Reese Jones here to uh, deny him the championship. Matt Simpson leads. He's done the fastest lap, 102.487. Mark Willis going wide again. Cooper sideways. Jones this time is going for it. Again, Cooper making his truck as wide as possible by, by hanging the tail out. Dean Tompkins is fighting back in the 21. His dad's rising through the order as well. He's up to ninth. Started quite a way down the grid. New fastest lap of the race by Michael Smith, 102.354. Close the gap a little, there's just over a second in it for the lead. Into lap five out of 18. Mark Willis in the red and blue uh, 65, still there in third. It's Cooper, Jones, Tompkins Jr., Thompson, Hun, and the rest of them. Paul Tompkins and David O'Regan rounding up the top ten. Jones very tight through Druids there. He's determined to get past Alan Cooper who is just sideways all the way around. He's loving this. Tried a little bit too exuberantly in the uh, first race and spun. They're all sliding here at uh, Surtees. What size Jones going to go this time? He's going to try the outside. Is that going to work for him? Yes, it is. Look at this from Reese Jones. Cooper sideways. Jones says, well, I'll try I'll try the inside a couple of times. That's worked. So I'll go around the outside of you instead, Alan Cooper. And that's worked. Jones up to fourth. There goes Matt Simpson over the line. Second place is the 93 of Smith. Willis in third. Dale Jens is further down the order. He's down in 14th. He must, he must have had a spin early on out of our sight. Trying to fight his way back up the order, the 83. Reese Jones, as long as he gets ahead of Mark Willis, I think he'll be happy here because he knows Willis, the only other driver who might be able to catch him in the championship. It is looking unlikely. It will take uh, a disaster for Jones, I think, to lose the title at this point. Matt Simpson out in front. Hasn't contested the full season this year, so not a factor in the championship. And look at Michael Smith and Willis. They both slide wide. Going into Surtees there on that outside line. It's like driving on ice. Alan Cooper looks like he's driving on ice. He certainly gets the awards for flamboyance. All 18 starters are still running. Your last runner at the moment is Jamie Lipton. Number two. Great shot there from the pit wall here at Brands Hatch. Getting a sensation of the speed of these trucks. New fastest lap for Matt Simpson. He leads now by nearly two and a half seconds. Up into Druids. Hand at Graham Hill Ben. Reese Jones has caught Mark Willis. Dean Tompkins has caught Alan Cooper. There's Danny Hun. Paul Tompkins has risen up to eighth now. David O'Regan, the pole sitter, is down to ninth. There's Aaron Thompson in tenth, the head of Tom Hutchins. Started from pole in race one. Pole position seems a bit of a curse this weekend at Brands Hatch in the pickup truck championship because we saw Hutchins drop out in race one and now David O'Regan has gone from pole to ninth. He's a previous race winner in the championship, David O'Regan, the ex national hot rod racer from near Cork in Ireland. One time he was uh, sponsored by Parcel Force. I'm sure you'd want your parcel delivered by one of these pickup trucks. Be in pieces by the time it's uh, reached the destination. Meantime, Reese Jones has got his man. He's got ahead of Mark Willis. Just needs to stay where he is now and he is champion. But he wants to seal it with a win on his local circuits. I'm sure his family will be here. Dean Tompkins has got ahead of Alan Cooper. His wayward handling seems to be uh, dropping him down the order now. Danny Hun going for the outside. Oh, and he goes off. Danny Hun goes straight on at Graham Hill Bend in the Scrapco truck. He comes from a hot rodding family based in Canvey Island in Essex. All raced under those familiar red and yellow colours as uh, Paul Tompkins nearly goes onto the dirt there. There's David O'Regan. There's Danny Hun recovering behind him, so he's down to about 10th place. Thompson behind him, then Tom Hutchins. Simpson continues to lead. 3.4 seconds up on Michael Smith. 
for being reeled in by Paul Tompkins. This is for sixth position. Dean Tompkins now up into fifth. Oh, Reese Jones sideways, he's lost it. The championship leader goes off. Now, can he get going? He's hit the uh, tyre wall on the inside of Halewood Rise. Can he get going? Has he damaged the steering? Now, this is going to change things. He's kept it going. Did he get a wheel onto that painted uh, kerb, as I said earlier? I think he's wounded. The truck is crabbing slightly. Now, how many laps to go? There's another nine. We're on lap nine out of 18, so there's half the race to go for Rhys Jones. What happened? Yep, just got a wheel onto the kerb. The truck got away from him. Disaster for Rhys Jones. He hits the tyres. And that's going to change everything. I think the steering's bent on the number 40. He's going to try to keep it going. Where has he rejoined? Is the next question. Has he kept going? There, there he is. He's behind Aaron Thompson. So he's down to 10th. How many points do you get for 10th place? 110. Let's see if we can work out what the prospective scores are going to be. Rhys Jones finishes 10th. See the truck is slightly damaged. It uh, seems to be handling not too badly though. He may have got away there without too much major damage. He finishes 10th. He scores 110. Willis, currently in third place, will score 180. Crucially, still ahead of Dale Gent, who's in 12th place. There's Matt Simpson, the race leader. So Dale Gent is in 12th place, he'd received 90 points. So as it stands at the moment, Reese Jones would still be the champion. At the moment, it's okay mistakes like that if he doesn't finish the race that's when things get interesting Mark Willis in behind Michael Smith they're second and third lap 11 of 18 seven more to go after this pickup truck season, indeed the BARC TV season. Look at Reese Jones's uh, lap times. He is lapping on the pace, so I think he's got away with just bodywork damage there. He was able to slow the truck before he clipped the tyre. Neil Gent only in 12th place, uh, the nearest rival to Reese Jones. Mark Willis is in third. There goes Danny Hunt. Progress up the order checked at seventh, it would seem. Simpson, Smith, Willis, Tom the Tompkins family fourth and fifth now. Alan Cooper's down to six. There's Paul Tompkins got ahead of Alan Cooper. And promptly runs wide at Druids. Cooper back up with him. He doesn't seem to be sliding as much now. Yeah, Jones's last lap was only just over a second off his personal best, so I think he's got away with it without any uh, substantial damage. As long as he keeps going here, he will be the champion. He's in 10th place. Matt Simpson is heading for victory. He's now over three seconds clear. Still a few laps to go yet in this uh, pickup truck racing championship finale. Matt Simpson coming up to lap. The number two of... Uh, Jamie Liptrot. We've lost Gavin Pike. Unfortunately, his problems have returned. He's in the pits. And Jeff Simpson is off. At number three. Now, where's that happened? Oh, that's coming out of Surtees. He was on the Grand Prix loop there. You don't want to go up to Pilgrim's Drop, Jeff. See what happened. I think I know what may have happened. He, no, he hasn't run wide onto the curve. That's exactly the same as Alan Cooper did in the first race. There he goes. It's the name of Dale Atkins Transport and Grab Hire on the back of uh, the truck there. The ex-Roger Dorma truck. Dale Atkins, a uh, long-time banger and lightning rod racer on the short ovals. It'd be nice to get him out in the pickup someday. 
There's Jones in the background, still going in 10th place. This is the battle for 8th, David O'Regan against Aaron Thompson. Five laps to go now for our leader, including the one he's on. Matt Simpson leads by over three and a half seconds. Mark Willis still third. Rhys Jones still there in 10th. That won't be enough. Rhys Jones is going to take the title as Thompson makes a move on David O'Regan. And goes through a paddock hill bend. Good move by Aaron Thompson, the relative newcomer to the pickups. There is Jones behind them, still going despite that uh, damaged front end. Won't be handling as sweetly as it was earlier. There's the fight for second. It looks as though Mark Willis has got through. Yes, he has. Ahead of Michael Smith. So Willis up to second. Again, that probably won't change the championship. Mark Willis will get 190 points as he got in the first race. Still be 100 points down on Reese Jones, though, if things stay as they are. Light fades here at Brands Hatch. The laps countdown. Matt Simpson is heading for victory. Mark Willis has done all he can to try and fight for the title. He fought back after a fire on his truck at Thruxton earlier this season. Dean Tompkins is now in uh, fourth place. Paul Tompkins, his father, fifth. Alan Cooper down to sixth. Danny Hun recovering from his off earlier on in seventh place. I think Brands Hatch are going to need to lay some new turf on the inside of Surtees. Looking at the landscaping department in. Three laps to go now for Matt Simpson. He's well out in front. Four seconds clear of this pairing of Willis and Smith. Just the one retirement from this race. We lost uh, Gavin Pike earlier on. Neil Tressler running down the tail of the field at the moment behind Jamie Liptrot, but uh, he's hoping for a pair of finishes. Not been the uh, happiest season for Neil Tressler. And his all -fem famous all-female pick group. They play to all the pickup teams. They're always hugely entertaining. Danny Hun has taken Alan Cooper for sixth place. Michael Smith all over the place there through Surtees. Dean Tompkins could catch these two and get on the podium. He's lapping slightly quicker though, just a couple of tenths quicker. Michael Smith's all over the place. James Goldstraw, number 52, is being lapped. He's in 15th. still with the fastest lap of 1 minute 1.537 he has lapped his dad Jeff Simpson there in 14th place one day in a few years time we might even have three generations of Simpsons racing in the pickups together because uh, Matt's son is making his way up through the world of karting start the final lap of this time Matt Simpson from Berkshire he began his career on the short ovals in mini stocks while his father was racing in the national hot rods he moved on from there to race legends cars he raced national hot rods before moving onto the circuits he raced in the intermark uh, super silhouettes Dad went on to race uh, in the pickups along with the Euro cars. Now Matt making a return in uh, 2022 following his uh, foray into the British Touring Car Championship for a couple of years. He has reached the very top in British motorsport racing alongside the likes of Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden in the Hondas. He is well and truly back in 2022. He has dominated the pickup truck championship this weekend. He thrust his way into the lead on the opening lap of this race too. And he is going to be our last winner of the season here on BARC TV. Into clearways for the final time. As 
the sun sets on the BARC TV 2022 season and the pickup truck racing championship our final race winner of the season is Matt Simpson at the double here at Brands Hatch two out of two for Matt Simpson Mark Willis comes over in second Michael Smith will take third it's Dean Tompkins Fifth across the line will be Paul Tompkins, a little further back, I think, waiting for Paul to come through. He's dropped back quite a long way. No, we may have lost Paul because he hasn't come through. Danny Hun is fifth ahead of Aaron Thompson. We wait for Reese Jones to come across the line. There's Paul Tompkins. Reese Jones, we just wait for him to come across the line in tenth place as Matt Simpson celebrates his victory. Jones has crossed the line in tenth, and provisionally, he is the champion. Survived that scare when he spun into the tyre wall coming out of Paddock Hill Bend, but 10th place will be enough to give him the title. Looks like uh, just about everybody is in now, so we'll confirm the provisional result in a moment. Well earned round of applause from the big crowd here at Brands Hatch today. waiting to confirm the uh, results then of our final race of the season here at Brands Hatch here on Bonfire Weekend Matt Simpson takes his second win of the day four and a half seconds clear of Mark Willis with Michael Smith taking third Dean Tompkins fourth Paul Tompkins dropping back as he uh, hit some problems late on it was Danny Hearn in fifth ahead of Aaron Thompson Alan Cooper, rather wayward handling, number 72 taking 7th. Pole sitter David O'Regan and in a bait there to Paul Tompkins. Rhys Jones taking 10th place despite that spin into the tyre wall. Provisionally takes the championship. Tom Hutchins 11th ahead of Dale Gent. He must have hit bombs early on. We never really saw Dale Gent during that race. Pat Kiley is 13th ahead of James Goldstraw. And Jeff Simpson after that late spin comes in 15th a lap down. The other finishers, Jamie Liptrot and Neil Tressler. Gavin Pike pulled off into the pits. Well, shortly we will head down to you and Dunlop for the final time this season in uh, Park Fermi to hear from some of the drivers before we sign off for the season. But uh, don't go anywhere just yet. We will be hanging around for the firework display. It will soon be time for myself to fall silent on the 2022 uh, British club racing season. Before we do that, though, we'll head down to you and Dunlop for our final Park Fermi of the season. Cheers, Dave. Here we are down, down in the pit lane, and uh, Matt, an unbelievably successful weekend for you. Yeah, it's been mega. I mean, I've only been back sort of a couple of meetings, and I said earlier, you know, it's the first time I drove the truck in the wet yesterday. Um, and now, just just getting used to driving it, you know, compared to the touring car, it's just totally different, you know, being rear wheel drive to the front wheel drive of the touring car. Um, but no, you know, to the pace we had, and just really, really enjoyed myself. You know, a lot less pressure, um, and just really enjoyed it. And it's clearly a track you know very well. How do you find the conditions? You, they suited you quite clearly. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, quite, I'm, a, I'm a big believer of, you know, it's the same for everyone. We're all on the same track as each other. Mm -hmm. So it's who copes and who sort of deals with it the best they, they can. Um, obviously, from my short oval background, the hot rod background, yeah. used to racing in slippery grime, yeah. wet, grease and dry. So, yeah, I don't, I don't mind the conditions. Yeah. Um, more pickup truck racing next year? Yeah, we're back for the full season. We're going we're oh, to we're, we're have a full go at it, so see if we can try and get in the top three of the championship. Fantastic. So, so we will be back. <laughs> same car? Yes, same car. Fantastic. Obviously, just strip down, just go through it. Just want to understand the track more, um, and hopefully we can try and make it a bit faster for next year. Right. Perfect season, well done. No worries. Cheers, Cheers mate. Thanks, Thank you. Mate. Right, let's speak to our second place finisher, Mark Willis, wherever he has gone. Here he is, bringing it in. Mark, um, you knew what you had to do this weekend. Nearly got there, a couple of second places. Are you happy with that? I think so. I mean, Matt was on his own today, really. So could two second places for us today was good. Um, over the moon with that. Uh, Reese deserves the championship. I mean, you know, George had a bit of 
trouble in throughout the season, so Lee said about that the better, but <laughs> might be right, might be wrong, I don't know. But look, we're pleased with today, two second places, second in the championship, that'll do me. Um, Reese, do you think it was the pressure you put on him? Uh, I don't know, I don't <laughs> think so. He didn't, need to, he didn't need to finish in front of me, did he? He could have stayed behind me, I think he just lost it. That's treacherous out there. To keep that car on the track for all of us, we've, it's been an amazing day. I mean, especially for pickups, that was really difficult. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I don't know, the Mini's front-wheel drive might benefit from it a little bit, but when you've got the rear-wheel drive, we haven't got a lot of weight, rear weight in the cars, and they're lively. But then that's why the crowd come and watch us. They love Absolutely, it. Yeah. Uh, going again next year? I think so, yeah. We'll have a little think over the winter. I was thinking about jacking it all in, but <laughs> I don't know. I love it. The team love it. Carry on. Racing drivers always say that. You always come back, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I think so. We get bored of sitting at home, don't we? Mate, great weekend. Well, go and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers buddy. And I'd like to be here we are. Um, third place got the podium to end the weekend, to end the season. Happy with that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been waiting for that for quite a while this season. <laughs> we've had a rough all year, so to finish on the podium on the last one uh, makes it a little bit more worthwhile. But... And to do it at the end of the season, uh, Brand Search, full crowd, extra special. Yeah, yeah, great meeting. Uh, it's always good to be here. Crowd draw was fantastic here, so weather played a good part today, made it a bit more exciting, I think. But um, yeah, good weekend, really. And uh, same question we asked everybody on the last day: What are you do next year? Probably trucks. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Right, look forward to it, Wada. Well right, thank you. Cheers, buddy. Thank you so much. Um, it would be great if we can speak. We can indeed. Fantastic. We usually just get the top three for this, but we've got our championship winner, Reese. Um, Reese, come on in. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you, yeah. I mean, you did it the hard way. <laughs> I made it very hard <laughs> for some reason. Uh, the car the truck had good pace at the beginning, and we was able to get on with the big boy, the top boys, so it was nice to get there with them, and uh, we had good pace, and I just dropped the one wheel on the paddock, uh, and uh, oh, put me, lit me up and put me in the barrier. I mean, I had to ask, coming down Paddock Old Bend, when you went, oh, I had that off, what was going through your mind heading towards the wall? Just it was all over. Um, no, nah, just quick reactions, just to get back down the box, get around and get back on the track. How satisfying was it to know that you could keep it going? It we weren't sure. We thought you might have damaged some steering, but it all seemed okay. You were you were lapping really well. Yeah, it was just a case of we'd done a cut the slow lap straight after, just to make sure everything was still there. I just cruised around, and uh, I think lucky enough we had quite a big gap in the pack when I went in, so we didn't lose too much ground. I don't know where I came, but yeah, just... I remember. think it was 10th, I think you still won by about 90 points or so. Uh, first ever championship, how do you celebrate? Yeah, just... <laughs> words can't explain. You look, very re you look yeah. relieved. Yeah, very, yeah. Now after this, a lot of pressure, everyone's here. All the friends and family, they've all come to see, so pressure was on. Brilliant. Go and pop some champagne well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank Excellent you. Excellent stuff. And uh, that is us, not just for the pickups, not just for Brands Hatch, not just for the day, but that is our season completed on BRC TV. I very much hope you've enjoyed it. We've loved bringing you the action. If you have enjoyed yourself, please leave a comment, please hit the like button. Uh, give a mention for Dave Goddard, your commentator, throughout this season. He is absolutely phenomenal. We all know that. But uh, the sun is setting at Brands Hatch. The fireworks are about to go up to end the season in style to say one final goodbye from myself goodbye i'm ewan i've enjoyed bringing you from the paddock the pitlin and park Ferme. but for the final time the final word it is of course over to dave goddard thank you very much indeed for your kind words there first of all uh, ewan dunlop down in uh, park Ferme. first of all we must say a big thank you to ewan and to pointy for their input today and over the course of the whole season thanks a lot for their hard work down on the ground but that does conclude BARC TV for the 2022 motorsport season. Not quite the end of the action. We do have the fireworks coming up in a few minutes, so stick around if you want to see the uh, gigantic Brands Hatch firework display as a fitting farewell to the 2022 uh, season here on BARC TV. But uh, a few thank yous before we uh, go off air, before I fall silent anyway. I won't be uh, talking over the fireworks, don't worry. Volunteers are what makes British motorsport, of course, so we must first of all thank all our volunteer marshalling team, the Orange family as I call them. We could not go racing without all of their efforts, standing out there in all weathers, getting up close and personal to the action and uh, looking after our drivers, making it safe for them to race. So thank you, marshals. Thank you also to uh, the trackside recovery crew. Special thanks to uh, Steve and his current trackside recovery this weekend and to everyone else here at Brands Hatch, the medical staff, the race control staff and everyone else. Well, to uh, round off, we're going to show you a short highlights package from this weekend here at Brands Hatch. It was certainly all happening indeed. 
The Mini Challenge Trophy class got some of the worst of the weather this weekend. Alex Solly going sideways there. Tyler Lindsay going off in the background. Paul Manning doing a bit of grass tracking there as well. And he ended up in the gravel on the exit of Clearways. Difficult end to his season in the Quaif Mini Challenge. As Nelson King, of course, raced to the title. This was the incident between Nicky Taylor and Nathan Edwards that saw Nicky pick up uh, a grid penalty for the final race of the season. They managed to continue, though. In the trucks, well, there was mayhem this morning. John Newell, lucky man not to be collected as he spun across the track. And, of course, there was the big incident coming up. Halewood Rise, contact between O'Rourke and Taylor. Michael Oliver cannoned into them. Ryan Smith becoming involved, David Jenkins and Stuart Oliver crashing in as well. Thankfully, no injuries and only one truck was a casualty. Michael Oliver out for the weekend. In the pickup trucks, there's a bit of rubbing is racing between Michael Smith and Aaron Thompson. In their substantially more wet first race. Alan Cooper, points for style. But not so many points in the race because of this spin. Dale Gent tried his hardest in the first race, but eventually the pressure got to him. Round he went, and away went his championship chances right there. The Mini 7 Racing Club always massively entertaining. Darren Cox all over the place as he lost the lead of their second race, their third race of the weekend, I should say. But my nomination for overtake of the year, Joe Ferguson, round the outside of Druids for the lead. Sadly, it wouldn't end well for Joe Ferguson, or indeed for his rival, Jeff Smith. Contacts coming through Surtees and McLaren. Ended with both of them in the gravel trap. Rupert Deeth sped to the Mini Winter Championship. More mayhem in the truck racing later on in the day. Mark Taylor headed off across the Kent countryside and out of the lead. Indeed, out of the race. Brad Smith was trying a little too hard at times to try and uh, pick up that Division 2 title. He would eventually come up just three points short. In our final race of the season, Bradley Smith suffered heartbreak, spinning out of the lead. Throwing away what could have been a first Division 1 win. In our last race of the year, Reese Jones came oh so close to disaster. A heavier impact than that could have cost him the pickup truck title. But he recovered. Tenth place was enough to win him the championship. Well, to continue our thank yous from this year, we mentioned our Orange family, the volunteer marshals. We mentioned trackside recovery and all the recovery crews around the UK. To all the staff at the British Automobile Racing Club, the uh, medical staff, race control staff, the timekeepers, stewards, clerks of the course, everybody else who makes motorsports possible in the UK. Thank you to the UK's motorsport officials, the British Automobile Racing Club's motorsport officials. We must say a big thank you to all our camera crews as well. Weather conditions have not been very favourable over our last few events. They've been out there in all weathers bringing us the action. Apologies for one or two technical glitches at times today. It's, uh, it's probably weather related. But uh, thank you very much indeed to all our crews and to our directors, uh, Dan and Elliot, across the season as well for bringing us the action from in the studio. Thanks again to uh, Ewan and Pointy, we've already mentioned. And uh, on a personal note as well, thank you to uh, everyone for your kind comments uh, on my own uh, commentaries across the season it's been a difficult season at times but um, we got there in the end and I do take note of all your comments thanks to some very kind words this year and uh, all comments positive or negative I take them as constructive so uh, do uh, let me know if you've enjoyed your commentary or if you haven't enjoyed it this year I take everything as constructive and use it to improve my commentary standards uh, over the course of uh, the season well, it's fireworks time in uh, a few minutes' time when the sun has gone down a bit more then, so uh, that is it for BARC TV from my point of view and in the commentary box for the 2022 season. Winter well, everyone. Enjoy the firework display and we'll hopefully see you back in 2023. Thanks to all of you for watching the live streams across the course of the season, but from myself, Dave Goddard, on behalf of everyone else here 
at BARC TV. From me, it's over and out for 2022. We'll see you next year from all at BARC TV. Thank you very much indeed once again for watching. It's goodbye from me.
drive in this stage, so we're still waiting for the from the professionals who are in charge of this break down there on the south bank to see how far we are exactly away from getting the fireworks play of the day. So bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the build up to the fireworks play when we get there. The truck parade is all about the back of the ship, still in the making, including the fairgrounds and the entertainment and the pool. You can see the table as far as the truck parade as well. So bear with us, good luck with you.
Lord's crew over on the opposite side. We are about 10 feet away from the Lord's crew. Looking at the lights, 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 looking at